the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show do? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Overreaction Monday, January 3rd, 2022. Happy New Year. It's the last week of the NFL season. Uh, Tonight, week 17, we'll wrap up with a division rivalry that will see a reminiscent tale before our eyes. Tonight will be a celebration of Big Ben Roethlisberger's last game in Heinz Field. He has been there for 18 seasons. Long time. This will be his last home game at Heinz Field against the Cleveland Browns rival division rival. Big Ben's done well on Monday Night Football, and he's done great against the Cleveland Browns. It should be an exciting way to wrap up Week 17. But now, as we look ahead at Week 18, there's still a lot on the line. A lot of teams did a lot of great for themselves yesterday. A lot of teams did a lot of bad for themselves yesterday. One player said, I don't want to play in this fucking league anymore. <laughs> There's a lot to chit-chat about, and we can't wait to do that with you here at YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. We got a lot of guests today, okay? We got Ian Rappaport joining us Mm -hmm. in about 30 minutes or so to talk about everything that happened yesterday. Right, a lot. Probably a pretty pivotal focus on one particular event and anything else that could be happening that could lead into us changing the way we feel about Monday Night Football's outcomes with Ian Rappaport. That should be great. Darius Butler will be joining us because Darius joins us every single Monday to break down the ins and outs of the NFL Sunday that was in his fashion as a nine-year NFL vet. A.J. Hawk will be here, Super Bowl champion, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to hear from the people as well. Whenever we look around and we do the hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact, but But. that trended like number three today, five minutes after doing the bird call for those tweets. I can't wait to hear what people are thinking because a lot has happened since the last time we chatted. Brock Lesnar's WWE champion. Unbelievable. No, no, that is out of, I mean, that is wild. That is wild. A lot of bowl games happened, but also, Congratulations to Aaron Rodgers for winning the MVP. Back to back. Okay. Since Aaron Rodgers Tuesday's inception, Mm. he's only won MVPs. I'm not saying it's because of us, but I'm saying we've gotten a chance to ride alongside two seasons straight. One with no fans, the most crazy season in the history of the NFL. One season that'll be chatted about 20, 30 years from now whenever they talk about no fans in the stands. Uh, Cardboard cutouts being counted as actual audience members Mm -hmm. in the stands for the Super Bowl. There will be 20,000 first responders and humans, and there will be 45,000 cardboard cutout of people that have paid a ridiculous amount of money to have their face on a thing that would not be seen by any literally anybody (laughs) he won the mvp of that season got a 35 second speech at the end of that now we're getting a chance to ride alongside a performance unlike anything the nfl has ever seen before he has four interceptions or something like that dudes are throwing picks four of them in one game now (laughs) at this point Matthew Stafford, who the Rams have gotten another win somehow. That's a big-time win against the Ravens. They are finding a way to win. I have no idea how they're doing it. It doesn't make sense that they're doing it. Matthew Stafford, who is going to have to be a pivotal part of their team if they want to go and win the whole damn thing, had like five picks in his last 51 attempts or something like that. Aaron has four picks on the entire year. (laughs) Think about on the whole fucking year. And now we find out after a Green Bay Packer ass-beating of Sean Mannion, Mm -hmm. who's a good guy. Yeah. Good guy. He's like, Good 90 guy. mile an hour guy. fastball. Hey, yeah. guy's big boy. Big yes, boy. Right. He's athlete, too. He can lumber uh-huh. around. Mm-hmm. He's been, been around the NFL a long time. Knows a lot of offense. Can do his thing. He kind of stunk, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure that that Vikings team, even if Kirk Cousins is there, stood a chance against a Packers team that we talked to Aaron last week, said, we got to get better at stepping on throats. Mm-hmm. You asked him. I think you asked him somewhere. or maybe I asked him because the Super Boost was getting a little close on Christmas Day. It was like, hey, that game got... 
a bit close there, didn't it? And this seems to happen now on a regular basis. And he said that they actually addressed it. So I thought Sunday Night Football Week 17 MVP on the line going against Sean fucking Mannion. No offense, Sean. You're probably the man, Mannion. Mm -hmm. Good guy. Probably good guy. Going against Sean fucking Mannion in Lambeau when he was going to have to wear the turtleneck. Yeah. I think we all kind of thought, oh, this could be a route. And it was. One of the only things we expected to happen did happen, I think, in the NFL this entire season. Now, the NFC runs through Lambeau, through Green Bay, Wisconsin, through Title Town up there, through oh, yeah. a place that is going to put on a show in of itself with the snow and the wind. And then there's this little hippie guy. Mm -hmm. Wearing number 12, playing offense, looking as if he's putting on a goddamn show, throwing balls better than anybody, dropping bu balls into buckets like he does in those drills in the middle of, what, nine degree weather or mm -hmm. something like that. It's unbelievable what the Packers have been able to do this season, especially with all the drama in the offseason. Now at Ty Schmidt, congratulations on being the one. Thank you, Thank you, very, much. Thank you very much. I mean, what. Well, you just expect Rodgers to play like that in those kind of games. Like, we did say that, and they started very slow last, last night. You know, there, there was a drop touchdown early, and then I, I, you just thought, like, well, who knows? It's cold. It could be one of those games against the Vikings. They still didn't play their best game, but they just beat the piss out of them. And like we said, like, the table was set going into that game. Like, the Cardinals beat the Cowboys, so they just needed to win. They'd get the one seed. They can rest guys next week, and you don't have to worry about the, you know, will they, won't they, when are these guys coming back? Now these guys got two more weeks to – get ready before you know they actually have that first home playoff game and we've said it all along like it, it just this team feels a little bit different than last year's team does I still don't think they've played their best on offense like special teams again last night you know I mean they fielded punts fine David Moore looks like he's he's gonna be a good fill-in you know but two awkward late hits on that guy yeah like, first uh -huh. game in mm-hmm but you know that bullshit call he didn't block him into him either yeah, yeah. And, and maybe they just knew like hey listen the, the Packers are going to beat the fucking shit out of these guys we don't need to be you know <laughs> expediting the process but it I mean it just everything that's kind of what they've what they need to do they're doing it currently and you just hope like it just it's very tough for me with the way they're playing right now and the way Rodgers is playing to see someone going to Lambeau and beat them well the NFC now you have to look around the landscape and I guess the Dallas Cowboys for sure could be in the conversation because they have been a team that has won games very well they've lost games you go what? And then yesterday they lose to the Cardinals. Who are they back on track? Mm -hmm. Are they a little bit back now that they've been able to withstand the, you know, loss of D Hop? Have they Zach Ertz? It seems like Tyler and Zach have a good relationship. Oh, yeah. Chase Edmonds, he somehow didn't touch the ground in that tackle with what six hundred pounds worth of mm -hmm. human. His knee never touched. Nope. He was still up. He fumbled. Obviously, if there's more timeouts left in the chamber for old Dallas Cowboys, they can challenge that. Much different outcome. Right. I, I, oh, much yeah. different outcome if that is the case. But tis the game of football that we play. You have to have timeouts. A lot of people were pointing at, and I think it's because the TV pointed out, uh, whenever Prater came on the field and Kyler was still on the field, and the field goal block team called a timeout mm. because they're like, whoa, 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 hold on. I don't think that is necessarily the most wasted time out. There was others that happened before then. I think those should maybe be pointed out. But anytime somebody runs the kicker onto the field while Kyler Murray's still on the field, that is an attempt to deceive. They are trying to take advantage of the fact that the field goal block team's on the field, not the normal defense is on the field. So as soon as old buddy saw Kyler, was like, oh, shit, hold on. We are not supposed to be here. That's a probable touchdown, no matter what. Now... Was there other time mismanagements throughout the year that made us think, hey, Mike McCarthy, what the fuck is going on over there? Sure. Yes. So when that situation happens right before the two minute, you, it does lend for like, a, oh, you have a timeout here. You can challenge. You probably win this game. Instead, first down with two minutes left with the other team having no timeouts. That's ball game. Yeah. Right? Are the Cardinals all the way back? Maybe. How about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Oh, because these teams, if they're going to want to go on a run, are going to have to go through Lambo. Yeah. The Niners still have a chance. They're still hunting. Oh, yeah. yep. Hey, they're still hunting. Charger, uh, the Char that's AFC. But the Niners still hunting in this mm -hmm. entire thing. Eagles. The Eagles still hunting oh, in this oh, entire yeah. thing. I mean, uh, Jalen Hurts is eating stadiums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's even getting in there. And that poop pipe busting stadium that Jesus. Washington has over there. You guys need to tighten that shit up. <laughs> Figure it out. A lot of exposés about what was going on behind the scenes at the Washington football team for the last 10 years. Now, there's a lot of exposés happening about what's going on in front of the scenes. And Jason Wright has had to turn around that entire uh, franchise. That's right. In mm -hmm. that program. And Ron Rivera's been a part of it. And they've been able to do some stuff, I think, while reading through. It absolutely 
you know, incredible that they were able to win football games with everything that is yeah. potentially going on there for however long, whatever the case. Two poop pipes bursting. Yep. Right on. One on the uh, down there, like in the lower bowl level. Mm -hmm. One in a suite That's dumping, right. yeah. just poop dumping on him. Mm -hmm. And then now the entire thing crashing down on Jalen. Jalen almost getting hit. Instead, being one of the coolest dudes I've ever yeah. seen in my time. Hey, everybody okay? All right, how you doing? Let's take some photos. And then look, hey, I got to get the fuck out of here, too. Mm -hmm. This seems to be a... And shout out to the Johns that fell yep. and just kind of keeping it cool. Yeah, yeah, actually, let's take... I We deserve a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Popped up. I mean, yeah. we, we just fell down from a... <laughs> we deserve at least a photo. I love the way that whole thing goes. So I guess the Eagles could get going. Mm -hmm. And that's a team that everybody is saying you don't want to see. But let's talk about the other... The reigning Super Bowl champ, shall mm -hmm. we? Yeah. And this was a good transition into this because, you know, at Boston Connor, the New England Patriots is dog walk a non playoff squad. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, took care of business. Mac Jones and Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when it's fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. On the sidelines. Feels like you guys are all the way back. Congrats. Congrats yeah. to the Patriots. Well We're back. Well done. Uh, everybody's staring down a potential Patriots Bills uh, oh, playoff whoa. match. Uh, wild we card weekend. That would be awesome to oh, yeah. see. Feels like that is a collision course. But Tom Brady is now dealing with something, I think, in week 17 uh, of an 18-week season, first ever of its kind, that he has never had to deal with before. I know there has been situations that have happened off the field in teams that, on teams that Tom Brady has been a part of before. Okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. Big things. Oh, yeah. Big time. Mm-hmm. Very big things. A lot things. of gigs. Mm -hmm. a, lot, there, a lot of things. Like, And I understand the drama comes with the NFL. It's hard to win in the NFL. But for that Buccaneers team now to have to be answering questions about what they have to be answering questions about going into the playoffs right now, you would hope and think that this type of shit would not be happening at this time. This is the most important time. Now they got one of their best football players, okay, that is – that cannot be lost no. in this. Yeah. I was about to say that is getting lost in this thing. It can't be. That has to stop getting lost. The only reason why anything like this could happen is because of how fucking good at football this guy is. Right. Mm -hmm. Antonio Brown, he ran a route yesterday. He ended up seven yards open or something, <laughs> and the guy was right on top of him. Fake to go, stopped on a dime, wide open, completion. How you doing? Keep it moving. Does that against everybody yeah. all the time. He had 11 receptions just a week ago, yeah. fresh out of a three-week suspension, and let alone on top of that, in a foot injury or a heel injury two weeks before. They hadn't played for like five, six weeks or whatever. 11 receptions, 100 yards, how you doing, keep it moving. I'm Antonio Brown. By the way, all the way back, dropping balls mm -hmm. fresh back in there. That is why a situation could lead to a situation that happened just yesterday in front of the entire world's oh, eyes. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're not a football fan, you see a guy take his pads off on the sideline, throw them down. Okay, even if it's a high school, if it's a high school football <laughs> yeah. game, you would see something like this. You go, oh, shit. Let alone the Super Bowl champions <laughs> in MetLife Stadium mm -hmm. in New York, New Jersey, where all eyes are on everything that's happening there. Takes his pads off. Fuck you. Okay. Then I'll, I, don't, I don't want the shirt. Nope. I don't want the shirt even touching me, was it? Sure. Off. Boom. See you later. Gloves. Ah, fuck these two. See ya. Then where are you headed? Oh, I need to get to that tunnel. What's quick way to get there? I'm going right across the fucking field. <laughs> mm -hmm. The offense that he was a member of yeah. was on the field mm -hmm. for a third down. If you listen to that video, the, the uh, MC or PA is like, we're about to maybe beat the, the Bucs. This is the Jets. Holy shit. It's third down. You hear like, <laughs> yeah. this is a big fucking down. And Antonio Brown, who was a member of that team, a, me a member of that <laughs> Offense that is out there, they are in a huddle. They are in a huddle. <laughs> Shirtless, yeah. okay? And obviously, your immediate thoughts are, there has to be something up here. Okay? Yeah. There has uh -huh. to be something up. I have never seen anything like that in my entire life. Then runs and actually says, peace. All right, I'm fucking out of here, dude. I'm out. High five is a, a Buck fan. By yep. the way, oh, uh -huh. shout out. thanks for the nice uh, applause. Mm -hmm. Goes out, goes into the tunnel. Fucking hops in Danny Boy Hustlehard's car. Yeah. Damn right. And then goes around the town. Goes straight to the studio. Goes, right to, goes around town, releases an out, uh, song. I mean, if this was to happen at some, you know, small school, this would get, garner all attention. The fact that it is the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers 
with one of the best players on earth, mm -hmm. a guy who caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl, a man who lived in Tom Brady's house. The fact that he was brought back to the team was a massive conversation, and Bruce Arians, you know, didn't really necessarily want it at the beginning. And Tom Brady was the reason, like, hey, come on, this guy lived in my house. I'm a big fan. He's turned his life around. We all saw everything kind of crash down. That is happening in week 17 is incredibly sad, yeah. obviously, but so fucking insane that there is no way anybody could have ever dreamt up a scenario like this. You put it in a football movie, the people go, that would never happen in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Too ridiculous. Not at the highest level. This is the biggest league mm -hmm. on earth. $110 billion media rights. Everything is so dialed in. Nutritionists, everything. Let's be the best football team we could possibly be. In the middle of a drive, two minute type operation, the, one of your star players mm -hmm. just, walks it off. See ya. <laughs> it is absurd to think about. It's insane. And obviously it captivated the world's attention. I have some sources uh, and reports mm -hmm. that might point to why this all potentially happened. Okay. Okay. okay? I did some <laughs> snooping around. Okay. Oh. You know? Because when you see something that's so absurd, you have to think to yourself, naturally, if you're a you know, obviously you have a good laugh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of the memes. Dude, I mean, the internet is going to do their thing, yeah. and you have uh -huh. to, okay? Unless he's, like, close family, close friend. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have to at least have a moment where you're like, this is hilarious. Um, yeah. Are you kidding me? What a move. And then to look so content, by the way, while doing, you know what? Yeah. yeah. I made my decision. I made up my mind. <laughs> This is this is best for me. Just <laughs> happy. Just so pumped about it. It's yeah. like, holy shit, that man seems content. And then when I hear him and Danny Boy hustle hard's back, he's talking about his Netflix series, okay. I think. If I heard him right, even though it might have said nephew, but it sort of sounds like Netflix series. You have to have a good chuck, chuckle. Oh, yeah. You have to. Hey, Bizzle. But then as a member of the sports media, okay. one that has been called into question every single time I have spoke words into microphones. <laughs> sure. I had to do a little snooping around because everybody was obviously not only going to expect us to talk about it because it's the NFL yeah. and not only talk about it because it's a Super Bowl champion, but because it's Tampa Bay Buccaneers in which, you know, we have talked about and know some people in the building. Okay. So here I am having to come into a microphone and I just, I start snooping around. Okay. They give me nothing. Oh. They give me nothing. But a source did present me some information okay. because it was in the, in their eyes, best wishes of the story or something like that. Best of the whole thing. Mm. So there was a lot of people that immediately just thought that Antonio Brown was benched because he had incentives for like a million bucks or something like that. That was automatically the spin. Well, that, that would make a lot of sense, by the way, so I understand why that would be the spin. It would, uh, it, money, it would involve cash. Uh, it, would, it makes sense on the internet because it's somebody that is an entity fucking over, somebody that is a worker, so it's a good, it that would be a very good internet thing. And by the way, one that I would, if it was real, also be like, hey, fuck this team, okay? Mm -hmm. That is something that has happened to players in the past. I don't believe it has ever happened. No, I have seen it happen one time to a guy. It was fascinating how it all ended up happening. He wasn't happy. I think he ended up getting a bonus anyways because of a conversation that happened. But whatever the case, I don't think that type of strategery happens in a lot of places, is what I'm saying. I, I've heard it happens at other places where they do try to fuck you out of incentives at the end of the year if they could potentially bench you for a half and you don't play 75% of the snaps because if you play 75% of the snaps, you will then get $500,000 bonus and you're not Antonio Brown or you're not Tom Brady. You're a uh, D lineman or an offensive lineman that is just kind of trying to make your way. That is a massive bonus. $500,000 might be double your fucking salary. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it would be double your salary is because you played a lot more mm -hmm. than they expected you to play. So they bench you for a half or a quarter and it's 74.5% of the snaps. And now it saves the team $500,000. There are stories of that type of shit happening in the NFL, and I believe it has happened in the NFL, but I don't think with a whole nother week in play, with another half or whatever, I don't think this would be the case oh, at all. No also, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are Super Bowl champions, a uh, team that people want to go to, you wouldn't want it to get out that you're trying to fuck people over, especially when they were all designing their contracts incentive-based. Yeah. Basically, their contracts are you play, you win, we pay you. And they do that so they can keep the salary cap lower so that they can continue to acquire and accrue talent. So I don't think that is something the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to be known for around the player community. 
Now, until Greenberg and Light come out and say, hey, that we in BA says that is not the case, we will never 100% be sure. But I don't think week 17, with another week to play football, it is because of $1 million that they would have to pay that could potentially fuck their rep with every player. For, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. So that was a big time mm -hmm. push on the internet. So I'm not 100% sure if that's the case at all. I think what this all revolves around is the same thing that has kind of happened the entire time AB has existed. I think Antonio Brown, if he feels as if you have wronged him or disrespected him or have not done something for him in a way in which or he deems um, enough, which, by the way, I have respect for that type of mindset, I think it's over between you, it, between A.B. and that person. It, 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 we saw it happen in Pittsburgh. Yep. In Pittsburgh, yep. it was good, it was good, it was good. We're actually watching videos of Big Ben Roethlisberger from back in the day with Antonio Brown, and they're actually dapping each other up. We're the best in the world. I love you. No, no, no. And then something happened, and boom, it was over. Week now, 17, he quit. Boom, didn't show up to work. Bang, it's over, and then he's out. Then Oakland, something happened. Boom, he's out. Then he goes to New England. Something happens. He gets in trouble off the field, whatever. He, he was in a bad, he was doing yeah. some bad shit, yeah. by mm -hmm. the way, then off the field. So there's still, something happens, boom, he's out. And then he had this friendship and loyalty with Tom, and Tom's always treated him right. And he goes down there, and he, he and B.A. said he was a whole new citizen. He was like a whole new person. It seemed as if he had changed. That's why whenever he did the, uh, he got the fake vax suspension, he didn't get suspended. But I think what happened during the entire fake uh, vaccination situation is Antonio Brown, and this was somebody not directly related to the situation, but feels as if they were in a position to speak. So I just have to respect their thing. Antonio Brown felt as if he did not get as much respect or backing from the Bucks during the suspension era. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that pissed him off. And they said as soon as he came back after that, it was a completely different relationship between the team and AB. And then you also account for the fact that he was injured. The person didn't know how injured or if he was injured or what the injury was. He had 11 for 100 and some mm -hmm. uh, last week. So you would think his injury was okay, mm -hmm. but even though maybe I didn't know that. But they think that's where it all kind of maybe went sideways. And then whenever he takes himself out of a game and says he's not going into a game, which is by all reports now at this point, he, it was not that they held him out of the game. It was that he did not want to go back in the game. And then conversations happen between whoever, I don't know who it was, the person didn't tell me exactly who it was. And then there was a boom, a full blow up. And then we saw the tail end of it from at M M M M Illa, Milla, his viewpoint. Uh, pretty good tickets to the game, by the yeah. way, on the Buccaneer sideline. We saw Mike Evans going up to him to try to like calm him down, it appears. By the way, Mike Evans, great fucking teammate, because nobody else was even looking at him, which was interesting to me. That was also interesting to me. Punter brand new. It's not his job, I guess, to get in there. But, I mean, there was a lot of shit that was happening there. And then we saw, boom, he's out. He's gone. See you later. He's done. And he says, peace out. B.A. comes out and says he's no longer a buck. He, I mean, it's just he quit on his team in the middle of the game in a public fashion is how I would probably view it if I was a Tampa Bay Buccaneer player. But if I was a Tampa Bay Buccaneer player, I'd be in there a lot closer to the situation and know if this was maybe something that a lot of people saw brewing, yep. mm -hmm. maybe, or if it was something that was like, holy shit, this came out of nowhere. Well, last week after that Panthers game, you referenced it when the reporter asked him, like, hey, wasn't it cool that Bruce Arians kind of came out and defended you and was on your side in this whole thing? And then he kind of shut that down no and only wanted to talk about the game. Yeah, the media's all drama. You guys spin everything. So I f it feels like that was kind of a sign, like, oh, AB is either not happy with BA. Yeah, or this was a different AB. And we yeah. even talked about it on the show. He was telling people he was going to fight him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was doing something that AB had not done in a long time, since he had gone to the Bucks, since he'd become this citizen that was being described by B.A. as like a model. It felt like that was the case. We actually were so pumped for him. I was like yeah. so happy. I was like, man, this dude, because of how good he is at football, was afforded another opportunity mm -hmm. after publicly going through some shit. Publicly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bad shit, not good stuff. We're talking court dates. We're talking uh, very serious allegations. Yep. We're talking... Penis um, gummies, gummies being yeah. thrown. Right. Right. I mean, there was just a litany of things happening publicly that were like, "Oh, this guy 
is a fucking bad person. And then all of a sudden, he gets another opportunity because, by the way, because of how good he is at football, he gets another opportunity. Football has saved a lot of people's lives. It seemed like it was going to be saving ABs yet again. Give him purpose, give him team, give him mentors, give him people to surround himself with that maybe want look out for his best interests as opposed to that. And then something happened where it all fucking went sideways. Not going to the building, reports are saying. He wasn't going to work. And then it's just all kind of building up on top of each other. Well, and then especially when Brady says, you know, like, I mean, if if Brady really saw this happening and they're like, they were still, I mean, like the best buds or whatever, like he would have been going over there and probably talking to him. I think at this point, you know, you hate to say it and everyone wants to speculate and everything like AB's an asshole. He is. He only, he only cares about himself. And there might be some stuff that like he obviously might need some help off the field or whatever. But, like, but it feels like we saw him get that help so many times. Exactly. Now. And I think that's why these People guys are like, hey, f- fuck it. Like, you because you were so good at football, you got four, five, six chances. This kind of stuff has happened everywhere you've gone, and people have put up with it because you're unbelievable. But it's at a certain point when everyone's trying to, you know, do their best to make sure the best is happening for you, and you don't give a shit in return. It's like, all right, well, fuck this guy. Then he's a he, he's a cancer. We need to get him out of here. And it's it's one of those things where I it, I feel terrible about it. I genuinely do. I was a guy that got in trouble and suspended and probably wouldn't have lasted in the NFL if I would have been able to continue to live the way I was living. I mean, it was, I mean, it was great time. Hey, we had great times, mm. Frank. Hey, Frank. We had great times. Great times. Great too many times. of them, some would say. Bad influence. Probably too many great times. <laughs> well, that was kind of. Never have too many. No, you weren't bad because there were good times. So, yeah, it, you, go. it, you know. But I was having too many great times. Too many, too many, too many. And then I almost, I mean, so many great times all over the place. A lot, so of, great many, a lot of great times. <laughs> I was, uh, I mean, just care, not giving a damn about anything, basically. And then I get in trouble, and you have to have, like, this deep thought with yourself. It's like, am I going to, like, do this, or am I just going to be another person that just kind of goes in there? And you got to have, like, a real commitment, I think, to it. And, and this sounds, like, preachy, but it's real. Like, I... I tried to commit as much. I was like, I would like to be a better person. And by better person, I mean, I don't want to have to be hung over every morning. Everybody sees me. I don't want to have to be, you know, I would like to spend my time doing stuff that's, you know, maybe benefiting other people other than just me in whatever particular club we're in or bar we're in. Like it's, that's just a thing you got to kind of commit to, I think. So whenever you see something happen like this to somebody who has been given an opportunity that is so unbelievable, the NFL provides, even if you, even if you hate the game, which some people do, and listen, I'm not diving into the whole. Yeah, no, I can't. Who loves the game? Who hates? But even Long if you game. hate the game, you have to be very thankful and appreciative for what the money afforded you and allowed you to do. For instance, the NFL allowed me to give a reset, basically, to my family who was potentially in debt, my friends who were potentially in debt. Even though I no longer wanted to kick when the offense failed, I was still very thankful for what the NFL provided, and I was still going to be a fan. Now, even if you're not going to be a fan, you have to at least recognize the opportunity is such a big one. And it was a big one. And for him to potentially squander it here publicly. No, not potentially. Definitely squander it here publicly. It's just you have to feel bad. But at the same time, it's like, man, this is on you. This is fucking on you, dude. Like, what? at what point are you going to finally do the change? Yeah. And speaking of bad influences, I don't think I don't I don't see this around the Internet enough today. Is there a chance that old friend Lev Bell came up to him on the sideline and whispered in his ear, hey, you know what would be fucking hilarious if you took off all your pads and shirt and fucking Ooh. just walked off the field. Yeah, maybe. That mm. might have been what it, that might have been. Possible. That yeah. might have been the case. It's just, it's sad because other people are going to think that's anywhere near acceptable like to do to your team. Oh, yeah. You know? And I don't know all the backstory because he might have been feeling as if, and we only have one source that isn't even directly in there that is just kind of reading the the ebbs and flows of this entire thing but publicly on a sunday december 17th or 17th week close game playoff push you're the super bowl you can't fucking do that to your team you can't do that to the guys that you're friends with you can't do that to i mean and he even if he hates the coach like you just you're fucking pissing on everybody when you do something like that it's like are you not proud of the work you guys have put together yes you can still work very hard but there's others fucking working hard as well alongside can you not just have any of that i guess it got to the point where he didn't think so well and that's the problem right like yeah maybe that is how he feels but like it it doesn't matter like you got to grow up like you're 
doing the wrong here. You can't. You're playing Adult, in the NFL. You're playing yeah. in the NFL. You're getting paid to do this. Like you can't just fucking take your pads off and walk through the field. Like you just and. I mean, at this point, you know, it is. It's like, hey, you've gotten so many chances. Like, we, we know who you are. So, and Brady stuck his neck out for him. And I just, you know, I, if it's not Brady, like, I don't think any other team is ever going to bring him in again. Joining us now is a man who is an NFL. No, no teams. Yeah, he's no, done. He's no, done. No, no. He, from the pit to the palace, though, I yeah. guess he's dropping an album or whatever. Hope yeah. he does well. Antonio Brown has made enough money to succeed, by by the way. Antonio Brown will probably be able to succeed in numerous different things going forward if he wants to. But it is a bummer that we will, impro- we will never see him again in the NFL. Joining us now, he a man who works for the NFL, senior insider for the NFL and NFL.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yeah. Rap sheet, what's going on, man? We were just going through the entire situation. It's sad because we're seeing somebody who's incredibly talented just kind of squander an entire opportunity for the rest of his life. But also, we understand he'll probably have success. It's just, how the fuck does this happen? How does this happen in Week 17 on the Super Bowl champion team? So many different things. Uh, and you're right. Like, I heard you guys right before I came on talk about, you know, is he going to get another shot? I mean, it's, I guess anything's possible. I didn't foresee this shot happening, um, but it is really, really hard to imagine that he plays again in the NFL. Again, I would never rule anything out because the world is crazy, but it is hard to imagine because every, I I was thinking about this today, every place he's gone has basically ended in some form of this, right? I mean, it was the Steelers ended like this. Um, It was the Raiders. It was... Patriots ended in a little bit of a different way, but it will them telling him, you know, we're cutting you, go away. And then this one in very, very public fashion. I mean, this probably was more similar to his Raiders and Steelers exit than it was to his Patriots exit, because I know he wanted to stay there. But this was as dramatic a, you know, screw it, I'm out of here as I can remember. Um, but there's a lot of different layers to it. I, I know Bruce Arians just talked to reporters and, um, kind of addressed it and really says, I hope, you know, from Arians, I hope he gets the help he needs. Um, You know, if he does need help in a mental situation, I hope he gets it as well. But there's so much here. Yeah, and from what I heard from my sources, um, it's all kind of stemmed from when the suspension happened afterwards, very different relationship between A.B. and the Buccaneers. Is that what your uh, sources are telling you, Ian Rappaport? Yes. Uh, I started to hear probably two weeks ago that things were not right, which, I mean, the guy suspended and he lied to his team. So, like, it's not a total surprise that the relationship is not in a good place. But I started to hear about two weeks ago that something was wrong. And I know there was frustration with how long he was taking to get back, how focused he was on his rehab. Because, remember, he was dealing with the whole, am I going to be suspended? He had talked to the NFL. That took a lot of attention away from the field. And so while he was rehabbing, it took way longer than they anticipated. And I know there was some questions about like how hard he actually rehabbed and how focused, just focused on football he was, which you watch what happened on the field Sunday. Like, I think that's pretty fair. Um, And then he eventually gets back, but then he has a setback and doesn't practice Thursday and Friday. And there was, as Arians alluded to, a conversation. What was the setback? What was the setback? The setback was from the injury or from the relationship? Setback was from the injury, so he didn't practice Thursday, Friday, mm. and he didn't think his ankle was good enough to play. And then he ends up, you know, looked great on the field pregame, looked like it was good, but he didn't feel like it was good. And so they forced him to was, play. What's that? So they forced him to play. I, see, I don't, I don't think an NFL team forces anyone to. Yeah, play. you can't. Is what I'm trying to lead you to, Ian. Like I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, no, yeah, I don't know how that would happen. You know that, that any any I mean, as you know, any return to play situation is basically an agreement between the player slash player agent, the coach, and the medical people. It's all three of them. So nobody the forced agent. him to do anything. But from what I understand, talking to people close to him, he had some doubts during the game that his ankle was good enough to go. Uh, Bruce Arians says he didn't say that to anyone. Bruce Arians is an honorable man. Uh, I've known him for a long time. I'll take him at his word there. But I know that Antonio Brown did not believe his ankle was good enough. And when he said, I'm not going in, that was that. 
And that is why Bruce Arians ejected him from the sideline. So then from AB's side, you could see why he would get so furious. Now, you have to do it in a much different fashion. We are adults. But you could see Yeah, why, I mean, yeah. no excuse to do any of that. No, right? yeah, yeah. We are, yeah, that is not, you can't do that. I mean, you can, you can tell them to go fuck themselves. You can do that entire thing. But I, I mean, if you're in the moment, I could see how you could just lose. Like you're an adult, though. Hey, you're a fucking adult. You're in the NFL. Figure it out. But you could see if they were trying to force him back in, which Arian said didn't happen. And I mean, if, if, ah, that's interesting. This is all very, very interesting. A situation that I assume we won't talk about ever again, right? After today? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what follows this. If Antonio Brown really does believe that his ankle was so bad that he couldn't play, wonder if something is coming, perhaps a grievance, if he's going to take this to the next level. He was going to get, people talk about his incentives as if the team was trying to prevent, like the team wanted him to play. Like he was getting his incentives. I don't think that was, he was getting them. It was, yeah. he was close. That well, was, and the it, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yeah, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't want to be known as a team that's fucking over their players either. For instance, like, And they also weren't. Yeah. Like they, they knew he was going to get his incentives and he was about to. Okay, so let's move on then. Let's talk about uh, yesterday. Any big time uh, injuries or any updates to the COVID protocols that we need to know because of a Sunday night football game that saw Sean Mannion? Sean Mannion. Jesus. No offense, Sean Mannion. Hey, good no guy. Best. Great guy. Sean Mannion's a good guy. 90 mile on our fast, bro. Mm-hmm. Threw his first career touchdown last night. Congrats, Sean. It was nice late. Job, too, man. It was great job, Sean. We're happy for Sean. I cannot it. believe they took time in the broadcast to be like, this guy's like an eight-year pro. Like, congratulations, Sean. You threw your first touchdown. <laughs> yeah, was awesome. I was like, oh, no. Like, don't bring that up. You think that's a little so – uh, you think they uh, that was a little bit of a dunk on him? I think it was a big deal. A moment I'll never forget. In Lambo, I mean, In Lambo, I, I, mean, I think they meant it. I, I, the time, I think they no. meant it very nicely. But as soon as they started saying it, I was cringing like I was watching an episode of uh, Succession or something. Terrible. So is there anything that's going to change? No, just protocol is going to remain the way they are. If uh, people are reporting their symptoms on Thursday, they're obviously going to miss games on Sunday and Saturday. That's just how the NFL is kind of feeling about it. I, I, I think that's I think that's the way it's going to be. I mean, the, you know, one more week of the regular season, so it's not going to be a ton of it. And you know, we'll be interested to see like if you're on a playoff team, you know, you hope for the self for the safety of everyone. You hope that everybody reports symptoms. But I, you know, it would be. Be interested to see if that is the case as teams gear up for the playoffs. And then, you know, for players on bad teams, how many symptoms do they report during mm. this week? I mean, so many so many people seem to have it. It's just interesting to follow. Um, but, yeah, no changes to the protocol, and I think we're probably going to be good for the rest of the season, but I've thought that before. There's 50 th- – how many did you just say? We have 50,000. Hey. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how's your family? Hey, 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 hey. That's a lot of people, Ian. That's a lot of fucking people. I mean, the NFL Network, where Ian resides, gets 12.6 million people to watch a football game. Holy shit. That is insane. The ratings are absurd. And that's because of you, Ian. Hey. Hey, we're at you. We're at you. I am on some of the pregame shows, and maybe that helps. Well, Yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows who. You're a needle mover. Yeah. You can't spell. Comedian without E. Boom. Uh, why didn't we see you report this? I appreciate the shout-out for the Bohorquez coming back and the punter tweet. Uh, there is a man fresh off the COVID list, a man I haven't introduced yes, uh, yet, but I think it does deserve at least a tweet from you. This man beat COVID, ladies and gentlemen, Boston called him. Yeah! I was Woo! waiting to introduce you, but we only have a two shot, so everybody saw you. I was waiting for the end because I was going to question why he didn't tweet about you yeah. Yeah. beating COVID. But then you there's kind of yeah. messed up. It's What's two of you. Yeah. Huh? All right, fuck no, that's that. off, dude. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, right, dude. Can yeah. I say, can I say and, and I know we like joke around a lot. Um, huh? What? Congratulations. <laughs> it, is, it is quite. That's an accomplishment. Thank, thank, thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. It's about yeah. time. Jesus. All right, you. Go ahead. Yeah, Rap Sheet. Uh, Derek Henry, is he coming back <laughs> next week? Possibly the week after. But if they also have the bye, he might not be back to the divisional round. What's his status looking like? I mean, the Titans being in position to have a bye was, I would say, not something I was expecting. It's, they have done an unbelievable job. I mean, lo- losing one of the best players in football and still beating down the Dolphins. I mean, that is, you know, they, they've done a really nice job. Um, I, I would expect Derrick Henry back for the playoffs. Uh, what's going to be interesting is when does he practice? Like, theoretically, what they could do is 
uh, activate him this week, go out to practice. You know, you have three weeks. So if you activate him this week, you have the next week, then you could just officially do it uh, for the following week and, and take him off IR and good to go. So, you know, does he practice this week is a question. I think there's a possibility because there's really not a lot of downside. But as you know, like a guy who's coming off an injury has to rehab very hard. A lot of times those guys are in really, really good hard. shape. No wear and tear from the season. So we may get Derrick Henry at like his absolute best yeah. for maybe the number one team in the AFC. That's pretty legit. Yeah, remember those absurd workouts he was doing? Uh, the uh-huh. Tannehill yeah. Yeah. rubber band <laughs> yep. push-up shit. Yep. He's an absolute stud. If he is in the best shape, and you're 100% right, I've had to do numerous knee surgery rehabs, and I feel like it was the best thing for me because I was on such a protocol for both of my legs, basically, during the offseason. You come back all the way better than ever. Hopefully that happens for Derrick Henry. What do you uh, – I'm going to let Tone ask this question. Hey, it's a big night tonight, Ian. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Tone, please. My question's actually not about that. Oh, well, then <laughs> let me get to this. What are you hearing about tonight? This is Big Ben's last ride at Heinz, Ian. Is he going to be all the way? How are the boys feeling? There ain't no way the Pittsburgh Steelers lose tonight with Ben, Brett Michaels, what? and what? all the boys back in town, right? Ben's coming out. With his bad hip, I love yous, I love yous, I love yous, I love yous. Dude, there's no it's gonna way. Be, it's going to be emotional. Just, I mean, did, did you see the, the tweet where someone posted a picture of that and there was the sticker in front of the T-H-A-N? Didn't like that did one. That? that was a shitty tweet. It's pretty good. I, I was about to go on air man. Sunday morning and I was. was almost uncontrollable okay. laughing. Um what was so I it? Appreciate it. I what was it? it? There was like an hey, inside jokes are fun. There yeah. was like a an ad for fucking uh, Ross Park Mall or something like that over the T H A N N in the thank you Ben on the uh, so it looked like it said fuck you Ben. Oh <laughs> no! Oh, oh, no. Oh, so it's really it's really my kind of humor. Um, Great. No, but well, this show is, looks for other styles. Let's go, please. <laughs> no, Come on. One thing, one. I will say this: like, yeah. one thing that I have learned in my illustrious time doing this is all of these factors are like very real. Yes. Right. Like, home crowd emotion. You know, are they going to do something on the jumbotron? A retrospective, like a thank you. You know, thank you, Ben. Like, thank everyone you, ben. is going to be Love feeling you, I can't pretend that it doesn't affect all of the other people on the team. So, like, I would expect a really good performance. And the Steelers aren't out of it. They it's a long shot, but flat. they're not out of it. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would, I would think tonight is going to be – I think tonight's going to be pretty good for Pittsburgh. I think so. Too. Brett's in the house. Yeah, Brett Michael's singing the national anthem. Go ahead, Tom. Uh Ian <laughs> – Pretty big game this weekend, Niners, Rams. Uh, is there any chance Jimmy G's back for that one? So this is an interesting one because I reported pregame on Sunday that he is expected to need surgery after the season. He's got a torn ligament in his thumb. It's really not a surprise. The ligament ripped a piece of the bone off, uh-huh. uh, which I think is called an avulsion, but uh, it could be something else. Good word. Um, and it's a pretty serious injury, and he's having trouble gripping the football either through very, very little last week or not at all. Um so, for me, judging by the injury, the same injury that Drew Brees had when he needed surgery and had needed six weeks of recovery, um, you know, at some point he needs surgery. Now, some some reporters uh, believe, based on their sources, that he has a chance to be back this week. The people I've spoken with paint a different picture and believe it is a long shot. Oh, um, oh, oh. I would say, for me, yeah. like I will trust the people I've spoken with, but... Jimmy G wants to play very, very, very badly. And I think he is pissed off that people don't think – that people think he gets injured and think he doesn't play through injury. And he wants to play through this. So if he can somehow go, I think he'll try to go. But the other part of me is like, you have a young rookie, look pretty good. If Jimmy G is at 75%, like, is that kind of what you want anyway, you know? I don't know. Oh. So it's a source off in that entire thing. I can't wait to see if you're right. Yeah, source off. Yeah, we'll Last see. question here, because uh, we know you got to go get on TV and probably break some news. Literally immediately following here, should I ask about Russell Wilson and the Seahawks? Do you know anything there? Sure. No. You do, you, do you know anything, or should I ask you about something ask. else that you know stuff about? Okay. Uh, I know about everything. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I would say uh, Russell well, Seattle. Russell Seattle. Russell Seattle. Russell Seattle. Russell Seattle. How's that going to end? You, not good, right? He's gone. I don't know if he's gone, but it feels like, judging the landscape of things, talking to the people, like last year, 
it was like, you remember, the Bears came to him. They made a big offer. Yeah, North Dakota. Ones, right North and then Dakota. at the end, okay. Pete Carroll goes, yeah, no. Like, just, okay. he's got final say. Did not want to rebuild. Russell's my guy. No. No. It doesn't quite feel like that. Just feel to me this year. It feels like something has to happen. Pete Carroll says, and hey, Russ, good I to see you. So That's he, it. So he did? Yeah. Right there. So this is all because Pete Carroll says he's done with Russ? <laughs> no. Um, That's wow. what sounded like. I mean, wow. we just did a demonstration. Yeah. Right, what are we supposed I think, to do? I think Pete Carroll would like to re-up again because he's, you know, he's 71 years old. He doesn't want to rebuild. I just wonder, like, <laughs> Russell Wilson bringing up himself. Remember last week he said, well, you know, who knows? This We talked about Ben's last home game. This yeah. could be my home game. That was the first time I was kind of like – Okay, like clearly he's thinking that it actually may be. And then it's like, does Pete leave to, and retire? I don't think he gets fired, but I guess you never know. Does Russ say, all right, now it's been my time, you know, look at a trade? Like, I feel like something has to happen there to break it. I just don't know how it's actually going to end. All right, well, we appreciate you, Ian. Uh, Sirianni and the boys in the playoffs. Yeah. The Eagles yeah. obviously win the AFC North. Congrats Woo! to them. We'll get to that with you hopefully later in the week. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Good luck on NFL Network, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. Always just so much fun. I think it's breaking news, though. You said Pete Carroll said, Russ, it's different this year. Get the fuck yeah, out of there. Yeah, All later. right. Thank you, ladies. Uh, nobody said. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 that gets Ian in like actual shit because yeah, yeah. he's you know actually supposed yeah, to be. The boys league. Yeah, he is coming from the NFL with inside information. He can't be just dicking around. But whenever he says something like, oh, it feels much different this year than last year. Last year, remember Pete said, we ain't doing that. This year feels much different. So he's saying that Pete's potentially leaning on the side of, I'm about fucking limited on my more interactions yeah. I can have with Mr. <laughs> Un. Limited. So that's what's happening. That's crazy over there. There's a lot of other stuff, uh, other stuff to chat about. Uh, around the NFL, and we just kind of threw them away there at the end, but they don't deserve that. No. Who day deserves a, a proper celebration? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, what's going on with the team in this city? You know? Well, the Colts? Well, okay. Carl yeah, Wentz. See, I wanted to talk. <laughs> huh? I wanted point. to talk celebration. For you know, sure. Because we're going into the last week, and you're back. You beat COVID. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's you're right. back. I got, one, I got my COVID ring, baby. Yeah, I got, hey, you, you, I got one of these. I got one of these. Yeah, right I got here. one of these. Ty don't got one. Ty, you don't know what it takes. You don't know what it takes, Ty. Ty, you loser. You ain't never beat COVID before. You uh -huh. would never know what one of these looks nah, like. Uh-uh. Grit right here. Anyways, great social distancing. You have right. displayed yeah, yeah, throughout this Good entire boy, thing. Yeah. But I want to have a celebration for the Bengals and Huda, you know? Those people in Cincinnati have, you know, cheered for a team and an organization that is not given the maximum amount of effort into succeeding, but the players, the coaches, and everybody in that program have done nothing but fight, 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 fight for them. That's right. That's right. Andy Dalton and them went on a run where they won like 11 games, four or five straight years, yeah. got into the playoffs. And immediately upon the playoffs ending, all of those coaches had to get in their cars and instead of watch the NFL playoffs, the rest of it, they had to go drive around college to co college scouting players for the next year's team because they didn't have a fucking scouting department. Uh -huh. wow. Every other NFL team has at least 30 to 50 people in the scouting department looking at film, breaking things down. The Bengals didn't even have... That. They had cafeteria food that was coming from their stadium. Nachos and cheese is what they were eating. There is full-blown chefs at other places. They have no indoor practice facility. They practice underneath a highway in Cincinnati, Ohio. Every other team has an indoor practice facility, and they do not practice under highways as if they're homeless. But the players, the coaches, and the fans have done nothing but perform at their highest for so damn long. Congrats. To the Cincinnati Bengals on winning the AFC yeah. North. All right. Because it's hot in the kitchen in the AFC yep. North. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the chefs of that kitchen are now in Cincinnati. And they're a young group that are electrifying to watch play. Jamar Chase might be the fastest human in all of Ohio. Oh my God. In the history of Ohio. Uh -huh. <laughs> he got a ball with six people around him and literally just outran them as if he was on the varsity team and they were on the JV. It was outstanding. Seeing Joe Burrow come out and do his thing at a high level against a team that they, you know, probably view 
as their future for the next 10 years yeah. is what they're going to have to go into it with, who they're going to have to battle. The defense made stops when they had to. Joey Burrow made plays when he had to, and we're in the middle of Burrow season. The last two weeks, he's had like 1,000 mm -hmm. passing yards, <laughs> yeah. eight touchdowns, no interceptions. Yeah. Now the Bengals host a playoff game. They're the champions of the AFC North, and they're young and only getting better. So although ownership has not been trying their absolute best to try and win like everybody else, that team is filled with a bunch of fucking studs, and their fan base is ready to get very boozed up on the river across from Kentucky and go in there and scream, Who the? Who the? Who the? They will be the Bengals! Congrats, Cincinnati. Congrats, Congrats Cincinnati. The only thing that can stop him is Zach Taylor not kicking a field goal. No, I worked out. Hour two is in 10. We just had this here. So uh -huh. Hard out, right into it. Mm -hmm. but what an award is a radio show. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Missed, missed the heart out yet again on Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah, There's nothing I could do. We had a good conversation with the Monday, yeah. By the way, his reports of AB's injury there are interesting. Yeah, very. You know? Cause Cause, they, so that would be that the Bucks forced him. Thank you, Ty. Yeah. So they forced him to play. And you talked about that route he ran right before he yeah. left the field. He absolutely diced some guy. Yeah. But then they're saying he missed practice Thursday, Friday. It's a, it's a very – because he's definitely going to uh, file a grievance. Knowing the way we know A.B., though, like doesn't it seem very plausible to just be like, no, nah, I don't feel good. I don't want to play against the Jets. These guys stink. I don't want to play today. Well, and that would go directly against the he had incentives narrative that yeah. was being pushed everywhere. Right, mm -hmm. which I think at this point is pretty evident that's not the case because they were right. trying to get him to go back in, and he probably would have. I saw Doofus24 tweet me. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. He told me, I, no, 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 it was because the Buccaneers were trying to screw him out of his money or whatever. It's like, well – Quitting from the NFL is going to screw you out of money, too. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, that's going to screw you out of some money as well. Wild scene. We still have some things to hit here before A.J. Hawk joins us. The Rams stay winning somehow. We touched on it a little bit ago. Matthew Stafford has, like, five oh. picks in his last 51 pass attempts, Yikes. and they have still won. Yeah. Stat and that. Stat, 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 stat that. Stat that. Stat that. Stat that. Holy shit. Stat that. Stat that. Stat that. What is it? The Amazon workspace? Web stat. services. Stat that. Web services. Web services. <laughs> <laughs> That's on me. They're statting that. Stat yeah, yeah. But the stats are saying that he's throwing a lot of picks, uh -huh. and he's not playing his best football. But I think Schrager said, and we know Schrager is an extension of the Los Angeles yeah, Rams right. because mm -hmm. he's actually a co-host of a podcast mm -hmm. called Flying Coach with the coach of the Rams, Sean McVay. Sean McVay makes a lot of decisions for the Rams, both personnel-wise, organizational-wise, and football-wise. So anytime Schrager speaks about the Rams, I'm more inclined to go, okay. Mm -hmm. He said that they were pretty pumped that they actually won that game in which Stafford threw three picks against the Vikings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that means, hey, we won a game when Matthew Stafford played his worst. This is not good. The football from Matthew Stafford, this is bad football against Matthew Stafford. We were still able to win a game in the NFL in a season in which anybody has been able to beat anybody. It's an absurd thing. It's a real thing. Everybody's getting paid out there. Everybody out there is better football uh, players and a better football team than your favorite college football team or any other team you think is good. You can get got any single day. They were able to win without Matthew Stafford playing football. Actually, Matthew Stafford being a detriment to him field position-wise with his turnovers. Then here we go against Ravens and Tyler Huntley. Huntley held the ballpark. Held oh, the ballpark. Yeah. As soon as I heard he was in, actually, I said, oh, I'm on the Ravens, actually. Mm -hmm. That was one of my better picks of the weekend. I actually felt very good about it, especially with how the game was going. But you watch Stafford, he throws a couple picks early. I mean, it's like, how you doing? Keep him moving. But then when he had to make a play, he made some plays. They were still able to get a win, though, when they weren't supposed to. I assume that type of thing is how the Rams will be able to sleep at night knowing their most important football is coming ahead. Yeah, I mean, you throw – those picks against inferior teams. You do that in the playoffs. I mean, there's no fucking chance. That he's going to have to clean it up. Dude. Tom Brady threw three picks in that game again yeah, against, against the NFC Championship. Packers. Well, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. Does anything fucking matter? Okay. Well, I was watching the Colts play the Raiders. <laughs> sure. Okay. It's a good ball club. Raiders are a good ball club. Coach Richie. How's your family? Huh? Versace? His family's good. He might get that fucking team into the playoffs mm -hmm. somehow, and yeah. they would have to hire the Basaccia. You would have to. They would have to at least keep him around, Basaccia. So how's the family? Good. We're in Vegas for the next 10 years, it seems like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, with that being said, does anything matter? I don't know anymore. 
I'm watching Hard Knocks. Mm-hmm. I'm watching the Colts. Great culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Special. They love. Everybody loves everybody. ELE. Here's a ring. Boom. Everybody yeah. love everybody. They have nothing but a tight knit group. Then you hear them talk. What's most important around here? Good culture. culture. Need a good culture. Good culture. Need a good culture. Need everybody being here. They've been building this for years and years and years. They have seven Pro Bowlers. Yeah. They have an MVP candidate. They got the defensive player of the year sitting on the defensive side mm-hmm. in Darius Leonard, who would probably get it any other year if there wasn't for some insane stats for what he's been able to play. DeForest Buckner, everything like that. They're playing Derek Carr and Hunter fucking Renfro, a new head coach, uh, interim head coach, in a team that seems as if has a culture in which it was burning down. The IRS was investing them. Uh-huh. There was things happening, exposés happening in the middle of the season. And maybe that brought them together. Maybe that bunker mentality was actually something that helped their culture and changed them into the Basaccia era of this tight group that has been able to go into the Colts' house in the middle of a playoff push for the Indianapolis Colts. Big deal. Here we go. Massive game. This team lost in the playoffs last year to the Buffalo Bills. We ain't doing that again. We're paying a quarterback like $30 million this year. We're paying that same quarterback $28 million next year. Like okay, time. we're all... <laughs> We're, he's, I mean, he's going to have to be. <laughs> he better be. Nobody's ever paid or underpaid. You're paid exactly what people want to pay you. That's right. Never, ever forget it. True. But you would think all that would lead to winning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good team. In a playoff game, basically. In a yeah. playoff atmosphere here in Indianapolis. Place was bananas down there, Lucas Oil. Yeah. This fan base has really bought in to this new Jonathan Taylor era. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I wouldn't say the Carson Wentz era because he doesn't even get introduced last when the offense gets introduced. Jonathan Taylor gets introduced last. And T.Y. Hilton, I think, is second to last or whatever because he's the longest tenured or whatever. So this is the Jonathan Taylor era. And this fan base has bought in completely. And now it's time to go on a run. And we're losing to the fucking Raiders, dude. Can't have what it. What are we doing? Can't have it. And Raiders don't even have Waller. Yeah. Best player. Was even playing. They don't pay taxes. They don't call Waller. Nope. Uh-huh. Colts. Colts. I mean, Carson did have that incredible throw into triple coverage. That right. Yeah, T.Y. caught. T.Y. got. So yeah, I think he was, was actually cool. throwing to T.Y. Oh, that's even really? worse. I think he was, yeah. If you look at his eye. And now, granted, that was like a 55, 56-yard ball on the oh. run. Because T.Y., you know, he is a... Uh, an improv artist. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's why he and Andrew Luck were so good. Andrew extend the play. T.Y. go make a play for him. Here you go. I think he was trying to go in there. And Carson knew four hands, one ball. Who's going to catch it? Somebody. That's why he throws it in double coverage all the time. Yeah. No, no, nobody. Oh. No, nobody is what I'm saying. Oh. That's why when those two guys go to get it and they're yeah. fighting for each other for the pick, okay, week 17, who knows what incentives are. Oh. I need a ball. Whenever they're fighting for it, there's no chance they're going to catch it. Four balls. Four hands, one ball, dude. If there was four balls, maybe they'll be able to all catch one. True. They can't. Carson knows that, calculates that. Jonathan Taylor got over 100 first time ever in the history of this particular Colts team where Jonathan Taylor rushed for 100, and we don't win. Okay, uh. So they did feed Jonathan Taylor. But there was moments of penalties where we had to rely upon Carson Wentz and some other decisions. And there was one particular play that a lot of people are pointing at where, well, if he completes pass to T.Y. Hilton, 10 yards, T.Y. is probably down the sideline, and it's a whole 11-point game, fourth quarter. How you doing? Keep moving. We probably win that game. Yeah, game's over. It's hard to deal with Mariota and that fiery attitude he has. Yeah, That's true. Juiced up. He, he basically won the game. Mariota was available this past offseason. I don't know how Mariota Mariota ended up in the, uh, Las Vegas for a price uh, gadge. Yeah. He stuck around there. I thought he would have got signed somewhere else. He comes in and makes some big time plays for them. And Hunter Renfro is unfucking tackleable. Mm-hmm. Very good. good hey, the only way he tackles him if you accidentally touch him whenever he's already fucking done. <laughs> Dude's unbelievable. Derek Carr's slinging a rock all over the place. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Carson, too, it could be worse. You could be paying him $35 million, you know? True. You're only paying him 27 28 Maybe in the offseason yeah. they say, like, hey, Carson, you fucking stink, okay? You're going to make $3 uh, million dollars next year. You're going to like it. And then we're going to continue to build this team around JT. Because like you said, I mean, there's just I, – I stopped watching that game after Darius Leonard had an interception. I think it was late in the third quarter. The Colts were up 17-13 or whatever. I was like, oh, okay, they're just going to give it to JT, grind the clock out, and win this game. And They won't. No. Will and behold, they did not. Because Carson's a fucking bobcat guy. I tried to I tried to say it from the beginning, and you know no one wanted to listen. But. He was. He posted one selfie. He's never active on social media. Posted a selfie. He's sitting in a goddamn bobcat. Uh-huh. Your immediate thought was, "God makes bad this guys." Not a winner. Loser mentality. Not a winner. COVID Carl with the turtleneck and jacket looks sweet though. Yeah, his post game fit was fire, top notch. Yeah. And by the way, you're gonna miss throws. People miss throws, but then when you watch Aaron perform, it's like, oh my god. 
if we had just completed one ball, we'd probably beat the Raiders today. We're in a much different position. We're hanging out, going in a playoff, saying, what, where are we at? Who are we playing? Who wants some? Yeah. Now we're probably going to Cincinnati is where everybody's and, saying. Well, hey, by the way, Colts still a team that can get hot. Sure. Maybe this team was a game that would wake them up. Maybe they needed this going into the playoffs. Don't you worry about the Colts. Don't you worry. Their culture yeah. is built for things like this. You Even though during the game, I was like, what the fuck is the culture for? We're playing against a team. That you they- still got to go down and beat a feisty Jacksonville team yeah. next oh, week. Yeah. You got a lot of fight. They stink. One <laughs> kid's only <laughs> thing. Let's a go, Jack. lot of uh, mocking, a lot of jokey behavior toward a certain culture that maybe that all just energy encapsulated in one man and Coach Richie, and he came back and gave it right back to you. He went through that against one of his own. <laughs> He's seen my 23 and me. That's true. Our two is on the other side, dude. How's your family? The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Overreaction Monday, January 3rd, 2022. Happy New Year. Hour two begins right now. Yeah. Can't thank you for joining us. Talks the table at Ty Schmidt, the number one seed, <laughs> the home field advantage through all the playoffs of the NFC Green Bay Packer shareholder at Boston Connor, diehard mass hole, COVID survivor, yeah. and Patriot fan. Congrats. Congrats. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks. Add to the resume. Hopefully the Colts will take the blueprint of what Bill did to the Jacksonville Jaguars well, and just do the absolute same thing. Impossible because Bill will never pay a quarterback $27 million when he's, you know, throwing picks and losing games. <laughs> Jeez. All right. You know There's what I no mean? reason for that. I mean, there is no real. reason. You know what I mean? There's no reason for that. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Also I'm sorry. here, one half of the hammer, Dan Cowboys, uh, Pittsburgh Steeler fan who, you know, the allergies were a little, oh, yeah. a little wild earlier this morning as oh. all the reminiscing was going on because tonight in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in Heinz Field, Big Ben Roethlisberger takes his last ride as a Pittsburgh Steeler in Pittsburgh. Tone Diggs, how are the emotions, cuz? How is the composure, or how have you been able to get through this show without breaking all the way, Don? Uh, As the day goes on, I'm starting to get more of that nervous anxiety excitement type of feeling you know how you know what i'm talking about yeah sure i mean heinz is gonna be fucking electric ben the steelers actually have won 19 straight monday night football games ben is 25 2 and 1 in the regular season against the browns whoa 13 and 0 i believe at home against the browns so like let's cap off this fucking beautiful career at home in heinz against the Browns, who did not make the playoffs, even though they were supposed to win the Super Bowl. I just think that that would be the perfect cap to his career at Heinz. And then, you know what? Icing on the top, knock the Ravens out of the playoffs next week. Oh, oh mama, I did fear for my life from the long arm of the What is Brett Michaels going to do tonight? He's not oh, going to be man. there. Brett Michaels is yeah, making is. an appearance tonight. Yeah, Are you is. kidding yeah. me? He's definitely in there. I come Here down and we like go, those curtains. Big Ben. Here we go. Here we go, Big Ben. Here we go. Brett Michaels ain't going to let Ben take his final ride alone. Uh-huh. <laughs> Joining us now is a man who joins us every Monday through Friday from an attic in Ohio. A college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, Ryder Cup champion, and COVID survivor, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. A.J. What do you think Brett Michaels is doing tonight, A.J.? Well, I I connected about five minutes ago, so I actually was hoping I could just kind of hang out and watch the show as a fan and and see how deep you could go into the Brett Michaels uh, conspiracies for tonight. I'm sorry. I didn't know you had been on this entire time, although Zito probably told me. We were so balls deep in the conversation about Big Ben's last ride in Heinz Field. I think this is a real thing. Don't you think, AJ? I think this is a real thing. I think this is going to be a great Steelers performance tonight. Maybe Ben's a little, you know, gun shy early. Maybe it's a little tight. Maybe it's a little tight. But then once he gets going, there's going to be all the vintage Roethlisberger tonight. We're going to see him, you know, 
you know, scrambling. <laughs> We're going to see him moving. Yeah, yeah. We're going to see him doing everything tonight. I'm excited for it. This is going to be like a, uh, a recap video of a man's career. I assume that is actually going to be the case. Uh, I mean... I, that sounds great. Like if this was a, a movie that we're watching that maybe Kevin James is playing the head coach of the other team, possibly this could happen, but not, uh, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but that's not guaranteed. Like you're acting like this is a 100% guarantee. Ben's going to be making all kind of Ben plays. Yeah. yeah. The Steelers are going to roll. Yeah. Miles Garrett's what, not going to play. Is he just going to take well, a knee? Like what are we going to do? Do you not know Ben? At all? Yeah. Come on. He's unbelievable. He's amazing. I hope no. that happens. I yeah, hope but also, Ben's going Ben to yeah. tonight. Uh -huh. this, is, this is Ben's going to get his shots up tonight. What are you even talking about? There's going to be a lot of shots. Are the rest of the boys ready to rally around him, though? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me, Sources, Tom Dick? Okay. Sources are telling me the boys are fired up and ready to go. Now, on the other side, now that the Browns are out of the playoffs after yesterday, do they are they coming out a little lackadaisical? Or are they also fired up because they don't want Ben's last ride? be all over it. Hey, in your epitaph, you know, you're born here, you die here, then there's that dash in there. Mm -hmm. For every Cleveland Browns player, I'm sure they don't want it to be in there that they fucking were the losers in Big Ben's last game. No, they don't like give a fuck. Yeah, too I don't think any of them. That, that whole Browns team, I think they're just trying to put out good film right now, right? I assume that's what they're all doing right now. Yeah, they, they want to go out there and, and play well and try to win a football game. I don't think they're too worried about, hey, uh, we don't want to be on the team that Ben Roethlisberger beat in his not his last regular season game, but his last home game he played mm -hmm. with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I agree. And it's also Cleveland, Pittsburgh. It's always going to get chippy. Let's just assume uh -huh. that. Let alone when Brett Michaels is out there riding around with a bunch of Huskies. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. And, and he's in the back of one of those snow sleds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, look out for Ben, <laughs> ben Michaels. Ben Roethlisberger handed the ball off to Brett Michaels in the fourth quarter. Ooh. <laughs> get Brett in. Have you ever seen – I mean <laughs> – I had no idea that Brett was. Brett's in his fifties, I think. So, hey, Ben's last game. It's probably the last opportunity Brett Michaels is going to touch a ball in an NFL game. Yeah, I right. think there's a chance Brett mentions that. You say like Brett was going to run out with him at the tunnel. You think Brett taps him right before they run? He's like, "Hey, Ben, try to get me in the fourth. I got some. I still got a few good carries left in me." I got yeah. Chris Angel's football pads on underneath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Fresh yesterday. Legs. Let's talk about yesterday. Um, Aaron Rodgers, that Green Bay Packers squad, put on a clinic. Now the entire NFC has to run and go through Lambeau. This feels, and Ty let off with this, and he's 100% right, this team feels different than last year, certainly different than two years ago when they still made the NFC Championship, and they were nowhere near as together of a group on the same page. This team legitimately feels... Done, like last night watching, it was like, oh, this is a team that's going to go. This feels like a team that's going to go. different. Something's different. Like, they feel different. Like, what... Being led by Aaron and everyone, yeah, seems to be on the same page, but that's what also worries me a little bit. Yeah, it's set up oh. so perfectly for us. Oh, Aaron can rest his toe. We can do all this. Like, they're in a pretty damn good rhythm right now, man. I don't, sometimes I don't like sitting out. Yeah, the last, the thing I thought of was the, a couple of years ago, was the year after they won the Super Bowl, they went 15 and one. Same situation, I think, sat a lot of guys and then had that uh, wild card weekend game off. Guys didn't play two weeks and they were just, you know, it, they had so much momentum and it kind of just got upended because they did get the two weeks off. So that does worry you a little bit. Like they're playing so well right now, but they also have all the, they have three Pro Bowlers that they could potentially get back. Like that certainly doesn't hurt, you know? And Rodgers hasn't been practicing that much because of his toe. So I'm kind of trying to like talk myself out of that being a worry, but it's, I mean, I think that's real. AJ, you just, you're a guy that is noted hate bye week though, too. You didn't like the getting out of the schedule, the routine for a week, especially if you're in a rhythm or a flow. I, do you think the bye week coming for the wild card weekend? Do you think that is a detriment to teams in your eyes? This has been a conversation piece for a long time, especially because a lot of teams get hot and they go, and you can potentially get buzzsawed if you're waiting on the other side. The team that I was on that went all the way to the Super Bowl, we were off that first week. We came back. We won. We moved. We get, we, it worked out accordingly, and we rested the last two games of the season. Then we were off. Then we, you know, and I'm not saying we as because I was there, I guess, but I'm talking about how everybody else performed, not myself. But it was, it did feel like it wasn't a big deal. But that is at least a conversation that has had every single year, it feels like. I mean, it has to be. If you have been rolling for this long and then all of a sudden you have like this extended period without a game. But the good thing with Green Bay, though, like it's actually going to help them. It's going to help Aaron's toe. It's going to help all the rest of the guys that are banged up. Maybe some of the guys that are have been out, they can get back in the lineup. So, when you have Aaron, no, it's not as a big a worry, but I'm saying if there was something to worry about, that's all I'm thinking. Like, hey, these guys look really, really good right now, especially 
offense, defense, like how Aaron's rolling just looks – it looks so natural and fun and easy. I hope they come out and they they you know they hit the ground running whenever they do get back on the field. Now the Vikings stink, right? Okay, and you knew yeah. that they weren't going to be able to really score last night, probably. Yeah, so sorry, Sean Mannion does not deserve the amount of burials he's got, but it looked like a <laughs> performance last night by Aaron. Mm-hmm. The throws, there was these back shoulder throws that were just absurd. The Lazard catches, it just felt like they were literally doing. Whatever they wanted, however they wanted. Obviously, it starts slow. They get a couple of third downs that they don't convert late after long drives. But then once they got, it was 20-0 as we're going into half. Nobody's thinking, oh, this team is not doing well, even though it seems like they're not doing it all. It just feels like they are in quite a rhythm. You would just hope somehow that wouldn't happen. But there are a bunch of veteran-led guys. I guess that isn't something you should even think about. And I saw a couple of people say, like, the biggest or one of the biggest differences is, like, A.J. Dillon was on the team last year, but he didn't really play in the playoffs. Like, you can see late in games when it's cold like that. Like, he's getting seven yards of carry. Like, he's never going down on first contact. Like, he he's the kind of guy, like, you can you can put teams away with him. And hey, he's hey. catching on the backfield, too. Hey, it's a little thunder lightning, huh? Yeah. Hey, mm. A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, don't get caught in the storm. You know what I mean? Because one's coming, pow! One's coming, ha ha! You know what I mean? And it, it is, who would want to tackle A.J. Dillon in Lambeau oh, oh. throughout the rest of the run here? It's only going to get colder in Wisconsin, even though Bia Bia, 82-year-old lady, has been right. here since every game since 1957 or <laughs> oh, something yeah, like right. that, says, uh, yeah, you just got to stand. That's the only thing. You got to get louder or whatever. She lives her best life out there, it looks like. She was just chilling. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> fucking chilling. Thank I'm, you, B. No caption needed, <laughs> I said. Let me just post this thing. No caption needed at all. This is fucking Bia, dude. She handles business at Lambeau. You come watch a game at Lambeau Field. You come thank Bia. She built the fucking place. Thank oh, you, yeah. Bia. Thank you, Bia. Bia, Bia. She's awesome. <laughs> but ain't nobody going to want to tackle A.J. Dillon, you know? And Aaron Rodgers has such an advantage thrown up there. You would think, unlike what happened with Tampa last year in the NFC Championship, this does lend quite an advantage going forward home field at some places yes i guess it could be but lambo being its own thing without cold and the reaction and it's out in the middle of nowhere i mean it's it's real home field advantage although nfl records this year and last year um interesting stats last year was the first year since the super bowl era or something like that where the home record was under 500. Yeah, for, is, uh, since 1968 that home teams had a losing record. COVID, obviously. Yeah, right. COVID happens. 2021, 113, 110, and 1. Is this right? This was on Sunday Night Football, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just assume home teams win a lot more than they do. Yeah, thought. me too. Apparently not. <laughs> Stat that. Yeah, what, what is that? that? Stat that. This was on Sunday Night Football last night. I, I know. Why, I'm saying, why is this? Have they? Does anyone have any theories? 2020 is COVID, right? Yeah. 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 So this one didn't matter. I guess traveling is something that you have to think about, but COVID was such an inconvenience for everything. Travel just added on there. 2021, only three games ahead. I didn't expect that. I thought that'd be much different. Is travel too. just so much better than what it used to be back in the, like... Oh, yeah. AJ, you guys used to get on trains and shit, and then, yeah, that's you right. know what I mean, have to travel through there. Yeah, we'd ride bikes sometimes to short oh, games. Yeah. yeah. How, well, you guys do that to practice still. I know, a little throwback <laughs> over here in Lambeau, but I didn't expect that, but I think in Lambeau, real thing. Yeah. Especially with Aaron there, where he's orchestrating the entire place. Congrats to the Packers, too. Yeah, hey. Speaking of traveling, and then this will lead into a big story, did you see that Sean Murphy bunting and... Uh, I forget who else. One other player. They had, they were battling with COVID all week for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So they had assigned them a private plane to fly up because they were testing out of the protocol or they had the five-day protocol to fly up during the game. They get to the FBO, probably the same one that we used to go to. Very nice. Yeah. They get to the FBO, um, which is basically the private plane place, uh, airport, to fly out. Pilot has COVID when he gets there. So or, or one of the pilots, uh, when he or she gets there, one of the pilots had COVID. So they had to replace Took two hours to get a replacement pilot. So they were flying up to Teterboro from Tampa on a private plane, hoping to land and go right onto the field, basically, with how the time ended up being. Teterboro is right where their landing is right next to MetLife Stadium, Mm -hmm. so it was a pretty perfect setup there. Does anybody know, did they make the game? Because nobody knows anything about that game other than Antonio Brown (laughs) left. Antonio Brown left. That that Jets team almost got one of the biggest wins in the history of the fucking Jets, knocking off Tom Brady, who had... 
dunked on them their entire existence basically the last 20 years. As you're going into the playoff time of year, Super Bowl champions, Bob Sala, Zach Wilson, trying to hang their hat on something going into the offseason. It was going to be yesterday. Hey, we took the Super Bowl champions and we fucking beat them. Now, they'll say we took them to the deep end. We got to fix some things to get this whole win. And Tom is able to get a dub. And that team, you know, what, they're a reality TV show at this point. Yeah. What is up with the Buccaneers? There is no way this should be happening in a team that's going to win a Super Bowl. I, I just don't see how this much shit can inevitably lead to success in the end in a league that is success is defined by the thinnest of margins, AJ. Yeah, that game yesterday was weird. What do you think with the um, Zach Wilson, him, the sneak sneaking on fourth and two? What would you have done? What's that, pal? When, at the end, when Zito Wilson was went, telling me, Sean Murphy bunting two tackles, fresh off the plane, there we go. right onto the field. Oh, Sean. Fucking proud of him. There you go. Let's go, Sean. Oh, what I was saying was uh, the uh, when Zach Wilson goes for it, fourth and two, a little over two minutes, no timeouts left for Tampa. When he oh, went for it, didn't get it. I knew Tom. I was like, field. all right, Tom has no timeouts, but he made it look so easy how they went down and scored. Well, and that's exactly why they Zach wanted to go for it, right? That's why they was Bob and them wanted to go for it is because what was inevitably going to happen right there, if you don't. Yeah. Yep. Right, but was QB sneak? Is that the right call on fourth and two? Oh Jesus! Probably not. I'm not getting yeah, into definitely that. Definitely not. I'm not. Yeah. Hey, did they get long, it? Did they get they it? Got it. Hey, that's one of the things. Hey, if they get it, you're a genius. Hey, we just took them down. Yeah. Did they get it? No. no. Fucking terrible play call. That's dude. worse. Figure it out. Be better. Let's talk about Antonio Brown now. Okay, mm -hmm. AJ. I talked to Ian Rappaport earlier. He has sources in Antonio Brown's camp. He said that this morning on Good Morning Football, he he talked about. The injury and his ankle and all this stuff they're reporting inside, which is interesting to think about it because he just had 11 and 100 and some. And I think the drive before, a couple drives before, he has this incredible stop route basically where he just leaves somebody in the dust, which is what Antonio Brown does, which is why we have gotten to this point where he's gotten so many opportunities to change his life. And it appears as if this last one was a great success story. My sources have told me that ever since the fake Vax card suspension thing, something had gone astray between the Bucks and Antonio Brown. It was evident. It was obvious. He goes for 11-110 last week. Then there's some shit with the media afterwards. And then now we're hearing that he actually did not want to go onto the field. B.A. and them wanted him on the field. He did not want to. Refused to go back into the game. Then there were some conversations that happened. Boom, all hell breaks loose to the video that we saw from Milla at mm -hmm. MMM Illa from the angle he had where Mike Evans is trying to stop him. Antonio Brown says, nah, dog, takes his pads off, fucking hawks him, takes his shirt off, see you both clubs, get out of here. John, hey, how we doing, crowd? How we doing, crowd? Oh. Looked healthy then. That's what a lot of people are judging upon because we don't know if he was hurt or if he wasn't hurt. Pumped the crowd up. They're going crazy. Not because it's a third down, but because they're watching something that has never happened before in anybody's <laughs> lives in the NFL. And they're going to peace out, smile. <laughs> I'm out of here. See you later. So when that all happens, AJ, just your thoughts on the whole situation. And I, I don't think any of us will ever know publicly what 100% happened in there. But I do know the outcome is something we will fucking talk about forever. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a, we're pretty confident that this wasn't just something that popped up all of a sudden this game. Like it, this, this was building up for whatever reason. And I know what you said before. I, I mean, that does – that seems to make sense. Like if he – once he came back from being hurt in the suspension – if he felt like he was being slighted by them, he has an issue with BA in the front office, whoever it may be. Yeah, I can see how this happens. And when, that, when I saw this happen on the TV, it was actually on mute. When it happened, I'm like, oh, oh, AB's just running across the field with his shirt off. Oh, get, oh okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, they're still in the field. And I was like, oh, I wasn't like shocked. I wasn't, I didn't lose my mind. I'm like, man, that sucks. Like, I felt bad for him and what's going on. I wanted to learn why and how yes. this happened. But man, what a. Trying to explain that to my kids, too, exactly what he was doing. Yeah. That was a great moment for me trying to be a good parent. Well, I'll tell you what, Axel. It appears as if something went wrong for Antonio Brown here. And <laughs> yeah. He is jogging off. They asked me, like, the good fault. They're like, well, has anything like this happened before? And I was like, no, but he's had issues with other teams. You know, like, I, we got to – we don't know exactly what's going on, so we got a feel for the guy. Players have punched each other on the same team. Coaches mm -hmm. have done mm -hmm. that. I've seen, we've never seen not this. Not the Giants. Not this. No, well, no, that's because no they way. don't have a clown show organization. That's, that's right. right. Threw for negative 10 yards. Guys are calling to get back. They're right. doing push-ups and Rex, full Rex, pads. I saw it today, and Rex said, this guy is tough to like. That's what Rex said. Classic. But let's get back to the Antonio Brown situation. Wrap it up here. You, you have to laugh. 
immediately upon it happening. You know, unless you're his close family and friends, I don't have a personal relationship with him. I feel like he and I chatted before every game. We got along. I feel like that's the case, but he's not like one of my friends or family. So as it's happening, it's not an immediate, oh, no, 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 which there are guys where that would happen where I would immediately. So I did laugh immediately, like everybody else. Holy shit. What is this? But then you immediately have to think about the other side of the coin where it's like, man, we're watching this guy fuck it all up again. You know, he's fucking it all up again. Even if he is distraught or distressed or pissed off, you can do it in a much different fashion than telling everybody to go fuck yourself. And not just everybody at Tampa. He's telling the entire NFL to go fuck themselves, too, because nobody can hire him now. He's, a, he's unhirable. He's unemployable right now. And that is yeah. just it's a it's a shame to think about in that fashion. But on the flip side, it's like you're an adult, dude. <laughs> fucking figure it out. you got to figure yourself out. Figure out your situation with your team. If you feel slighted, go talk to him. You know, yeah. hey, fuck off. Man to man. Fuck off. What is this about? Why is that? Why don't you have that conversation? Now, we don't know the ins and outs or all of it. I'm sure I could ask some people in here if that happened or not. We don't know if they tried to settle this behind the scenes before we saw this entire blow up. I guess that'll be a, a report that Ian Rappaport will probably put out immediately following an appearance on this show. But goddamn, week 17 in the playoff push. This is January football. This is January football for the reigning Super Bowl team. They still get a win somehow, but God, wow, that's insane. That can't be happening. And even if AB files a grievance with the NFL, like Rab she kind of alluded to, like he just got suspended by the NFL. They legitimately, I feel like, will basically turn the other way. Like, okay, AB, if you want to file a grievance because you threw your pads and made your team kind of look terrible, sure, have fun, dude. We're obviously just going to deny it. They're not going to back whatever he is uh, alleging that the Tampa Bay Bucks staff might have done either. Yeah, and BA's already coming out and saying – yeah. He didn't say anything about his ankle. I legitimately think he doesn't care. He keeps making these comments, and he said them before, and now he's starting to make them again. I think one was on his Instagram post about being more than a football player and not being defined by football. And that's fine, and we know that about people. We know there's life outside and after football. But, man, you got these chances, chance after chance. Platform. A hell of a platform to utilize yep. for yeah, whatever built. the super gremlin wants to do. Was built from Start rap. football. Dropped a heater yesterday. Yeah, yeah from pit to the palace, dude. Yeah, Him and Danny, or Danny boy uh, hustle hard. Yeah. How did Tomlin do it? Yeah, see, and is this the way it's always been? Is this come after the hit that happened with Vontez Perfect? A lot of people pointed to. You know, all, all the, there's so much that plays into it. One of the greatest football players of all time. One of the greatest football players He's of all awesome. time. And a huge loss to the Bucks offense. Like, yeah. He is a very yeah. productive dude that Tom Brady has a great like rapport with on the field. Especially with Godwin gone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he lost Godwin. Godwin being gone is uh is no anyways, let's move along. We we uh we talked about that. We talked about the Packers. Let's talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, AJ. Now I think you bet against them. You picked the Chiefs. I did pick the Bengals, you know, because that is Did you really? That yes. Yes. Oh. I did. What was our, what, what is our records? Uh, we were tied, I think, 8-6-1. and one. Dirty uh, puked in his car this morning on his way to work, so he reported his symptoms mm -hmm. and went back home. And, yep. and Dirty, Smart. hey, we miss you, Dirty. Thank, Thank you, you for self-reporting. Thank you, Dirty. Thank you, Dirty. Uh, we hope he's back soon. We don't know if it's COVID, by the way. We have no idea if it's COVID. No, no. He, he uh, hope he's okay, Dirty. Like, we, puking, puking's not a big side effect from COVID, is it? Could be. No, it I mean, I, you I don't know COVID, dude. Was for a bit. Yeah, right. yeah. What's that? That's, That's right. Puked when he had COVID. Oh yeah, oh, but okay. he was also blacked out drunk when he. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 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 Boozed up. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah it was he too couldn't taste, so he just chugged. So we don't know if it was the COVID or the booze, but he did definitely have COVID and puke at the same time. So, right. Oh, the florona maybe. Oh, oh shit! Could don't be. do that. Yet. Don't but it's not an indie. I that is not the hey, Florona. I'm just saying, How it's possible. My, 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 my Florona. <laughs> it's the flu and the Rona, and they come together to ruin all our lives. But my Florona, it is something that maybe got dirty, sick, and then he's puking in his car, and he's hot, and he's going, my, my, my Florona. But Dirty's not here, so I didn't know we had that graphic there for us. We were both 8, 6, and 1. I, I hope he feels pick, better. I, we hope he does, too. T's and P's. Hope he survives. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, Florona, by the way. Flu, Corona. Mm -hmm. My, my, my Florona. Bengals, 34-31. Big time win. Joe and Jamar Chase. Okay. 
unconscious yeah. yesterday. Un it was awesome to watch. It was like Aaron and Devontae. Now Aaron and Devontae have years and years and years of pent up, you know, chemistry and uh, situations in which they've been before where they'll check plays where nobody else knows it without even signaling it, just kind of looking at each other because they've been there, done that. But watching Joe and Jamar, it is so much fun. And if you're a Bengals fan, you got to be so pumped. The Bengals are AFC North champs, even though they don't have an indoor facility or a full wow. scouting yeah, department. Yeah. And this is the perfect situation. Like for this, for that win to win the AFC North, how they did it against the Ravens, setting records. Jamar Chase, how great he is. Joe Burrow. I got worried for a second about his knee, but yeah, then all of a sudden the dude's in the locker room smoking cigars, dancing. Like, I feel pretty good about uh, our program if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, the program's running strong over there, and that program seems to have a lot of LSU Tigers down yeah. there. Uh huh. Coach O joined the scouting department up there. Really? Yeah. Oh, that'd be smart. Sure. And Coach O up there, recruit for uh, Bengals? He's, He's got recruiter. a good eye for talent. What's that? He's got a good eye for talent. <laughs> What's that, AJ? Where, where is Coach O going to go? <laughs> Well, Governor of Louisiana. Yeah, well, for real. Yeah, I think Coach O's eating bunghole on a beach in Justin, Florida <laughs> really? right now. Yeah, I don't think he's no worried way. about his next coach and stuff. That's awesome. Eating <laughs> bunghole. <laughs> oh, he's taking he's over. He's living his best life. Ranch. All right, let's move Jesus. along here. Uh, <laughs> we don't know if any of these are true. They could be. Holy shit. All these things Possible. could yeah. be true. Possible. Maybe. We're not sure. We don't even know what percentage to put he on. He deserves some time off, some R&R. <laughs> he does. Bunny ranch. He does. But if you could put a percentage on, on them, what would you say, maybe? Does he have the Lamar Odom suite? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, he has like a whole suite or a whole wing for himself. Yeah, a guy yeah. spent 500 grand in like an hour or yeah. something. Yeah. He's the only one who has a key to that. They True. won't let anyone in that. <laughs> Him and Air Force Amy. By Come the way, I <laughs> <laughs> miss you, Air Force Amy. Man. All right, let's get back to the football. <laughs> Coach O is football. <laughs> that place existed. That place existed, was promoted, was uh -huh. very oh, famous. Yeah. Had a show. Big time. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> Wait, it still exists, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think so. The place? The 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 Bunny ranches ranch. right yeah the no just the show died. the whole thing's the show went down no, right? the leader died it's yeah. still the show there, died yeah. but the ranch Dennis Hoff did yeah, die Dennis Hoff very dead rest in peace ranch is still going but I think the ranch is still kicking oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> that industry still, is still bumping, yeah. yeah all right let's move along Doing very well <laughs> how did we <laughs> I'll check the rates Get I that? wonder who's running it. how Coach O we came back around so there was a sport we don't know if Coach O's running the Bunny Ranch no we don't probably help with the Raiders while he's out there. Might be that. All right. Fuck, we won't talk about the Raiders <laughs> yet either. Let's talk about the Kyler uh, Murray-led Cardinals. They go into Dallas. Kyler Murray now 8-0 in Jerry World. Okay, as a Texas uh, kid, high school state champion through college playing there and in the NFL, 8-0 as a player. Whenever he goes back to his home state in the largest stadium in there, he puts on an absolute show. I love whenever Kyler gets rolling, not only running but throwing just the entire offense. It looks as if he's a confident person. I don't know if it's because of Texas, if because it was uh, – the Cowboys are doing because of his relationship with Ertz now seems to be growing in beautiful fashion. You know, a tight end's great for any mobile quarterback because a lot of uh, tight ends get a lot more freedom within offenses to kind of just look out for the quarterback and be like kind of an exit for him. I have no idea why, but I'm happy the Cardinals seem to found it. I, I honestly am very happy for them because losing D Hop seemed to be a massive shot, uh, a lot bigger than any of us could have expected. They look like a different team against that Cowboys squad, AJ, than they had the past couple weeks. Yeah, they did, and, and what the week before this, where people were crowning the Cowboys champs, saying like they're unstoppable, basically. So I think the Cardinals, yeah, Cardinals, Cowboys, both they are, they can be very dangerous. I just don't know. Like, are we just gonna have to wait and see which team shows up when you get to the playoffs? I think so. You literally, this is a live bet situation. You got one of these. Yep. <laughs> I don't. You, you're sending me that one. Remember? No, no, no. Oh yeah, did you? No, you didn't earn it tonight. You no. could. Yeah. Tonight, I got Steelers tonight. Okay, cool. I got Browns. Are you serious? What's the line? On Big Ben's last yeah. fucking night. Yeah. Oh, What's the line? Are you serious, dude? He's an Ohio guy. He had to Is do it three? It. It's two and a half. Steelers, two and a half. Steelers are two you and a half. You got Steelers minus what? Three and a half? Two. Two and, two and a half. half. Well, you because we're eight, six, and one, you know, you could get yourself one of these. Yeah. That's right. You know what I mean? Well, been a few weeks goal. it's been living on this side of the house. Uh-huh. Just want to let you know that, pal. <laughs> All right. Tonight, Ben Roethlisberger probably puts up five hundred. Yeah, 60 passes. Let's hope. Oh. Wow. Yeah, you keep saying, like, we can build this up like it's a movie. You don't think Ben Roethlisberger is going to I truly hope it does. I, for Ben's sake, for the Steelers, for Diggs, I hope that's how it turns Thank out. Thank you, AJ. 
You think get, oh, Nick too? I don't. I think Nick it was. Open you can't for forget well. this could potentially be Baker Mayfield's last game in Pittsburgh too because he fucking oh, stinks God. and the Browns might be. Done. All right, joining Whoa. us now. We don't That's know. He's real. injured. The guy's beat up. He's got a torn labrum and a broken humerus. Yeah. yeah. And he's uh, uh, Van Pelt, AVP, formerly of the Packers, says. It's like he's handcuffed by that thing. Mm -hmm, he can't yeah. even really move or throw. So he uh, threw Baker four picks against the Packers. He, he was able to throw the ball not to his team on that particular day, but I mean, there's a lot of decisions being made. Whatever the case, Ben by a million tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially with Brett Michaels doing mm -hmm. what Brett Michaels is going to end up doing. That place is going to be upside down. Joining us now is Billy a guy. Gardell. Oh, oh I hope Gardell. Billy Gardell is there. Tailgating. Oh. Grilling dogs. Running through the. The cones? Yeah. yeah. All the boys are I love good. that guy. Holy shit. Man, you think, uh, what's that guy's name? Pompliano? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Pompiani? No. Pompiani. Joe Pompliano. No. Pompiani. Who's that big guy? Uh, the guy that was in that, uh, speaking of uh, stripper movies. Oh, Joe Manganiello. Joe, Joe, Joe Manganiello. Joe Manganiello. Big sleaze. He'll be there for sure. Yeah. Sure. Michael Keaton's going to be there. Oh. <laughs> really? Bane, yeah. Wiz. Yeah. Wow. Wiz will be there. Wiz Khalifa. Oh. Kiesel's going to ride an ox through the fucking tunnel Ooh. on the field. Yeah, Brian's got no shot, pal. So what I'm saying is you got no chance at this either. Joining us now <laughs> is a man who makes great picks, big brain, played in the NFL for nine years. He was a corner, safety, and nickel. Knows all things of the back end and defense as a whole. Host the Man to Man podcast, ladies and gentlemen, Darius Butler. Hey, Yo, what's up, fellas? Hey, how are you, man? I don't want to dive too much into tonight's game because we've given it a lot of coverage <laughs> and it's the Steelers, Browns, and Nick. Neither team making the playoffs. No, so. Mike. <laughs> really? Jags yeah, just have good. to beat the Colts, and that could happen. That's it. Maybe. I mean, with this Colts team, which we'll dive into here in a little bit. But Big Jeez. Ben ain't losing tonight, D. But right, no chance. Big Ben goes out with an L. I don't know. I like the Browns. No. Oh, I like the Browns. Come on, dude. They almost. I mean, they almost beat the Packers if Baker didn't stink. But uh, Baker was all right. I think they handed the ball off to Chubb and Johnson 40 times tonight. They get the win. Well, they ain't going to be able to hold, hand the ball off 40 times. They ain't going to have the ball enough because Ben Roethlisberger is going to throw no less than 70 checkdowns. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, He's Seven. calling every play. He's running around. He's doing his thing. Uh, we're split on it. You were on AJ's side there thinking the Browns are going to win. Let's go to yesterday. A couple big storylines, obviously. Green Bay Packers have home field advantage through the playoffs. Antonio Brown leaves the field. What do you want to start with? What do you want to? end with uh, I mean I'm sure you guys just like everybody else been talking talking a bunch about the AB situation you know obviously hope he's good off the field but uh you know you got to take accountability get your shit together who knows what happened always always three sides to a story mm. I'm actually kind of jealous um you know I, my friends are retired and some you know you retired you went on a, a national comedy tour your last year before you retired Andrew Luck retired after his third preseason game for the season. Vontae, he retired at halftime. <laughs> AB just said, you know, fuck you. I need to go back and, and, and retire the right <laughs> way, man. <laughs> Shit. I, you're saying he didn't take Is this a formal retirement, you think, out of him? He he knows he's never going to get yeah. a job again? You think? Yeah. yeah I mean, you, I mean I, we were all probably watching a bunch of the games at the same time. I saw it paying back to the Bucks jets game. Obviously, people were paying attention to it because the Jets were about to upset him. And then you just see A.B., you know, walking off with, you know, with his shirt off. I thought it was a pregame shot, maybe. And then you see what actually happened. I couldn't, you know, like A.J. said, I wasn't completely shocked. But just like, wow, this is this is a real picture. Like, this dude is doing jumping jacks in the back of the end zone with, like, the <laughs> offense and the defense on the field. So, yeah, I, I, I think that's a, a, a form of retirement right there. <laughs> <laughs> D, but what about what it's overshadowed really the game and what happened? I know Tampa Bay came back, they won. They that was amazing last drive from Tom. Are you worried about the Bucks, especially now they lose AB's presence on the field, but also just what the team is right now? Shit, yeah. yeah I mean, you got to be worried about him. You know, you got you got you got uh, Brady. Obviously, you know he's the goat, but you know uh, you still got Mike Evans there. But Godwin's out, and now AB's out. You thought he was going to be kind of the saving grace uh, when it comes to pass catchers, but. You know, I don't think, you know, Fournette's still banged up. Uh, I'm worried about him, especially knowing that they'll have to go to Lambeau and get a win up there. Um, they did it last year, but, you know, how the, how the Packers are playing this year, man, I don't, I don't, I don't see anybody going up to Lambeau beating them. So uh, I think we'll see the Packers out there in L.A. There can't be this much shit happening going into the final week of the season. Too much. I, I, yeah, it just, I, it, for whatever, they might win a game, who knows? Maybe they'll win a game, but I don't think that is a team that's built to win a Super Bowl. you got to be 
you got to be a unit going into the Super Bowl. I think what teams have a chance to go on a run? You like the Eagles? You like this Eagles squad because they, they're coming together at the right time? How about the Niners? Niners might go ahead and sneak in the back door. Patriots, they're going to be in the playoffs. Who knows how this thing ends with a couple of division games to figure out who wins the AFC East. Who's a team you think that could is, is like prime to go on a run? I mean, you still got obviously Packers Chiefs would, would still be. Yeah, both but I'm my saying favorites. like like uh, like a team that isn't obviously at the top there. Uh, I mean, you want to say Bengals? Maybe, you know, the Bengals with Burrow, what they're doing, even the defense, they don't get a bunch of hype, but the defense is making plays. Uh, Burrow, that Burrow Chase connection is is ridiculous, and you still got two other dynamic pass catchers outside of them. Um, the Chargers, that's not a team you want to face. But on the AFC side, I'll probably say the Bengals. The Bills still got Josh Allen's. Uh, that AFC still kind of wide open outside of the Chiefs. And then uh, on the NFC side, love the Packers. But um, Cowboys, man, you love that defense, but it's like the offense. Can they be consistent? Can they run the ball consistently? Can they be on the same page uh, in the pass game consistently? Uh, and they haven't shown that. The Cardinals, they found a way to get a win yesterday. It was ugly, but they won. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a bunch of faith in a lot of guys. It's Titans, I I left the damn one seed out in the AFC. You getting Derrick Henry back? Obviously, they can um, you know go on a run and stay hot and win it. So uh, this would be a fun playoffs, fun fun playoffs. Coach, uh, Coach Vrabel has done an incredible job there in Tennessee. I don't know how they are in the position they are in, Crazy. but after seeing the video of after their win yesterday in the locker room, it makes a lot of sense. There ain't nobody on that team thinking about quitting. You know, uh -uh. there ain't nobody on that team thinking about getting out of that locker room. Everybody seems mm -hmm. to be all in, which is why a cliche motto of every team is all in, because that's what it's going to take to go on a run. There's a couple teams I think we can tell are not going to be able to do that. Go ahead, Todd. Debo, what about the Rams? They've quietly won, I think, like five games in a row, but Stafford has turned the ball over a bunch over these last couple games. Do you think they're starting to hit their stride? Or are they ultimately just going to be one of these teams that probably fizzles out the first weekend of the playoffs? I mean, they got they got everything you want in, in a team. Obviously, you know, good coach, good play caller, uh, five star players up and down the roster on both sides of the ball. But like you said, Stafford, man, it comes down to if he can take care of the ball or not. You know, they got a, a, a nail biting win yesterday, but uh, he's thrown four pick sixes this year. He had, you know, it was a stretch where fifty one pass, he threw five picks. So you got to be able to take care of the ball at this point in the season. That's what worries me, um, you know, most about them. But like I said. Five star players up in Devon Miller made a huge play yesterday. That's kind of why you brought him in there. Um, Odell, he's still scoring touchdown. Cooper Cup is having one of the best years um, of all time at the wide receiver position. Uh, Jalen Ramsey. So you got players up and down that roster and a good coaching staff. So I think they can uh, for sure make a run. But I mean, a huge question mark with Stafford uh, at this point in the year. Can he can he continue to take care of the ball? And it has been looking that way for for a few weeks now. Yeah, I remember BA. You remember BA saying, "Hey, this is a five star game." All right, our five stars have to beat their five stars. The rest yeah. of you just don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, he would, then he would come in one week and he was like, hey, our five stars kind of counteract their five star. This is going to be a rest of you guys fucking game here. This is what we're going to need here. That is real depending upon how rosters are constructed, you know, depending yep. upon how it is. It feels like the L.A. Rams have gone all in, but if you can't, Get the pieces together, which is closely tied to the quarterback. I mean, it don't mean jack shit. I hope Stafford figures it out. I don't know why this is happening. I thought Stafford was going to have immense amount of uh, uh, success out mm. there in that offense. I thought he was going to ball out. He did. He has. Will he when it really matters? Let's go to the AFC side, a team similar to the Rams. Kansas City Chiefs, I, hear, I didn't hear you mention them in the AFC. I think you literally listed off everybody else in the AFC except for the Kansas City Chiefs. Why is that? You're out on the Chiefs? You think they stink? You think no. Jackson Mahomes, you think Jackson oh, Mahomes has done too much because they lose, they lose to Cincy and you're out on them completely? No, nah, absolutely not. You know, you told me you told me go away from the guys at the top. I still got them. I know uh, okay. the Titans are the one seed, but okay. you know that's still I think the, the the best team going into it on the AFC side with Mahomes. Defense has been playing well. Obviously, they got picked on yesterday. They didn't adjust. You know, you got to adjust. And, and in the playoffs, I don't see them allowing a guy like Jamar Chase to continue to get one on one matchups uh, up the sideline and it go off for two fifty plus on you. Uh, but I'm still betting with the Chiefs. That's their first loss in November, December, January in 27 games. So I'm still rocking with the Chiefs. That's That would be the betting favorite going on the AFC side going into the playoffs. Uh, but a team like the Titans, man, especially if, if Henry comes back healthy with fresh legs Ooh! at this point in the season, man, that's, that's, that's a scary team. And you'll have to go down to Nashville. 
um, to get to the Super Bowl if they uh, beat the uh, Texans next week. If you can run, you can win anywhere. So let's talk about it. How come the Colts can't beat the Raiders at home? Oh, man. Carl. d you and me, close affiliation to the Colts. It's where we met each other. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yep. where uh, where we spent years together. I think still where I live. I think you still have a, immense mm-hmm. respect for the program there. In, AB, uh, AB was on the anvil yesterday. That's why he left the Ant- game? Antoine Bethea. Antoine oh. Bethea. Oh. Was he really? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was. It was. It was. It was How hard do to we make. lose? They, that, they honestly, from the jump, they Carl just Lentz. they looked like yeah. they wanted it more, you know. And then um, this was ways. every time I've come on here, we talked about the Colts, <laughs> and I know you've been on the Colts to the Super Bowl train. I want to be on it too, but I, I worry about uh, about Wentz, man. Can he make those plays? Can he be dynamic for a month when we need him to? Uh, yeah. Obviously, JT he ran for over 100 yesterday again. First time we lost. When he's done that, but um, we didn't have a plan. Once again, just like Jamar Chase killed the Chiefs all day, Hunter Renfro killed us. We gotta have a plan for a guy like that coming into a Week 17 uh, ball game. It just it just didn't look good all around. Offense behind the sticks all all game. Uh, just a terrible performance. Late an egg, but huge win on Christmas. Huge. So that now we just have to go and beat the Jags if we still get the playoffs. Yeah, the Colts might need that. You know, and the Raiders might make the playoffs too. Hey, don't look now. You don't yeah. want to see Marcus Mariota, Derek Carr. In the Raiders, especially if Waller gets back in there. But Carson, that throw to T.Y., I mean, it's if that <laughs> – it's a game changer, D. But it's a game changer. But hey, that's gonna happen. Sometimes people are gonna miss throws. That's that's just gonna happen. Then you watch Aaron at night, and he's yeah. just ha 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 ha. Yeah. ha, ha. It's like, oh my god, that would have been awesome. Anyways, it's, they'll get hot. They'll get it's, hot. It's tough, man. It's, when you watch, when you watch Wentz, man, and this is my honest, this is my honest take. <laughs> whoa, 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 when whoa, I watch, whoa. When I watch Carl Wentz. And you know, you watch the TV copy, you see the quarterback drop back, and you don't know what the hell is on the other side of that throw. When he drops back and throws the ball, it's, I can feel the complete opposite than when I watch Aaron Rodgers drop back and throw the ball. Like, I know 12 is stepping into some good shit. I don't know what's – when that camera pans, I don't know what's going to be. And that's my honest feeling with two. Uh, I mean, he's been around. He's made plays. We still got JT. So we still got a chance, but – Woo. When that zoom Damn. out happens, when the zoom out happens, yeah, and you have see, a clue. how about those? <laughs> hey, four hands, one ball. Carson knew the, the both those guys couldn't catch it. You know what I mean? Too many hands, not enough balls. Carson's gonna play the bank off of them, smart. right? To Ty, it's smart football. And we talked about this earlier. You know, Carson had only thrown a certain amount of picks in some time, and it was a record for him or for something like hey, least amount of picks in the franchise or something. I forget what it was. There was a time where he was throwing nine picks a game and they were being dropped. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there was there was a time there for like a good three weeks straight yeah. where he was pegging dudes mm-hmm. right in between the numbers that were not on our team. Nope. And those things were bouncing to the ground. I was like, holy shit, we're getting lucky there. Hey. Those well, stats will get you. Hey, but if he can stat that, dude. Stat, stat that. that. Can you stat that, though? Can you stat that about the stats? What he's saying about stats getting you? Can you stat that? You stats can stat, you? That. Stat, stat, that. stat that. Stat that. Stat that, dude. Stat, 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 that. stat that. Go ahead, Tun. D, but uh, you've been on the other side of the ball when a team has three stud wide receivers like A. B. and Juju and Marty Bryant and a good wide and a good quarterback. What? How do you defend a similar situation in the Bengals? Man, that's tough because they got a, they got a fire running back too. I mean, it, I don't know. You got to take away one. You know, you got to take away one as much as possible. So Chase would be the one with the Bengals, and then you got to try to you got to hope and pray your other guys hold up. On Higgins and Boyd, but um, you know, uh, Burrow, he's he does a good job of making sure everybody's at play. And then you got a guy like Mixon who can catch it out of the backfield, who can run it. So you don't want to give them light bo- box counts all game. It's tough, man. That's that's the the, the problem they, they pose to every defense. And if if Burrow can stop, you know, taking sacks at a high rate or cut back a little bit on the turnovers, I mean, this this team can obviously beat anybody. They just beat the top seed yesterday, and they can go on a run. They're young. Uh, young coach as well, who I think should be in contention for that coach of the year, uh, you know, award as well. Him, Vrabel, and probably Sirianni. Uh, but it, it, it's a tough. That's a tough uh, trio right there to stop. What about Lafleur? What about Lafleur? Yeah, I mean, Lafleur. I mean, what, what, what were our expectations for Green Bay and Lafleur and Aaron Rodgers coming into this season? I mean, I, I expect them to win twelve games. You know, so they're they're, they're pretty much you know on par. It's what. Or What's that? Expectations. They outperform yeah, your high expectations. I mean, what do, what do we expect from the Eagles? Yeah. Or, you know, the Titans. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. So, the Bengals. Yeah, well, the I, you know, I think you're 100% right. Vra- what Vrabel has done 
is stupid. And I know it's not just Vrabes, it's his entire staff and it's the front office and everything. They've had like 57 players. That was that three was weeks ago. Saints. No, that was the Saints. What, they the, had like 90 players on their roster this entire season. <laughs> I think it's 57 <laughs> starters. Yeah. The, the, wow. But, yeah, that's, that's, but I the, hate we're the, giving fucking Titans this much love. And me too. Credit, did you see that video? Sorry. Did you see that video afterwards in the locker room where he said, hey, I'll see you Wednesday. And then he told somebody to break it up. And then you see Taylor LeJuan, who got buried by Vrabes on Twitter yeah. just two days before that, <laughs> grab him and say, no, you fucking break us down or whatever. And then but the entire team starts pushing the head coach back <laughs> into the middle. And he's probably, I assume, I don't know him that well, AJ, he's probably fucking given <laughs> a couple of these. That play, they seem... They are tight as shit. So whenever you here, let's run this video. This is it's, it's a little long, but it's uh, it's worth it. It's called Coach Vrabes in the Tennessee Titans after a win. You, you, you thought we were all kidding when we said we were just getting started. Diner. We were just getting started. Something <laughs> what happened? I don't know what happened. Fill me in on the news, but I do know what happened out there. Is the most physical team went out. No question. No, no. They can say whatever they want around this league about we don't do this and we don't do that. The most physical team won that. Yeah, so, Fuck right? it. And they just turned the football over, and they just kept giving it to us. And we kept taking it from us. Okay? Beat the so, shit out of our Dolphins. First division, uh, back-to-back division title since 1960. Hey, congrats. Hey, believe in this family. Okay, believe in it, man. Don't be selfish. Okay, put the team first. That's all that matters. Okay, be somebody that does whatever they can do to help the team. Okay, and I appreciate you guys. I appreciate what you do. Okay, I'm proud to be your coach. I tell you that every week. You ought to be proud to be on this football team. Okay, guys care about each other. Okay, we know how to win. We know how to win. We'll keep winning. We're just getting started. Okay, I'll see you Wednesday. You fucking break it up. <laughs> Look at that locker room. Yeah, hey. Look at that locker room, D-Butt. I mean, in uh, AJ, you know Vrabel a lot better than me or D-Butt do, but that locker, that's what, I mean, that is what you're looking for, you know? That is like a Super Bowl thing. I mean, that's, a, that's an electric locker room. We obviously been in, in a bunch of locker rooms after big wins. That looks like a locker room after, you know, a big playoff win or something, man. He's a dude that played, you know, all sides of the ball, knows how to get through the guys. Um <laughs> I'm sure guys are knocking at his door every day saying they want to be there next year like Joe Judge. Uh, but <laughs> shout, shout, shout out to Vrabel, man. I mean, he's, he's done a, a tremendous job all year. Obviously, complete buy-in. You watch him play. doesn't matter who's on the field. Everybody's, you know, running like their hair is on fire, man. You love, you love to see it, honestly. As a real, you know, football guy, football fan, you love to see it. It's awesome to see him get physical. You know, when guys get, especially meatheads, get excited and they get pumped, yeah. what do you do? They start jacking each other. And I, I promise you, Vrabel is in the middle of that mosh pit just – throwing elbows, like just trying to knock people out probably, like in excitement. So I think that was a beautiful representation of what he's built there. But, Deepa, I want to go back quick to the Eagles, Sirianni, what they've done. I think it is kind of flying under the radar what they have done, how they've kind of turned their year around. What, like, are they that good? Are, like, are the Eagles a legit contender? Can they win a playoff game or two? I think they could definitely win a playoff game. I mean, they're physical. And just like Pat said earlier, if you can run the ball, you can win. They, they, I've, they've been running the ball down people's throat. Throats, um, you know, it's been a question mark around Hurts, at least if you listen to the media, you know, all year. But I think Hurts continues to get better. I think the team believes in him. Uh, Sirianni, you know, he's been catching a lot of shit since his opening press conference. Obviously, you got him in the studio. But uh, they're 72 <laughs> since that old plant growing through the uh, ground presser. But, I mean, they're, they're believing in each other, man. And, and they're playing defense, too. Got some playmakers on the defense side of the ball as well. So, I mean, this, 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 Eagles, deep, this Eagles team, you know, they, nobody – I didn't expect them to do – to be worth the shit uh, this season at least. And uh, Sirianni got those boys rolling, man. So, I think they could definitely – they're a tough out for anybody. They could definitely win a playoff game for sure. Coach Sirianni, why is nobody giving you any respect? Uh, I, it's a good question. I don't know. Maybe because, like I said, I did make myself kind of look like a doofus early in the season. But, hey, who's laughing now? Who's laughing? I'm the best fucking coach in the league. Everyone knows it. We're going to continue, keep continue to win the 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 sprouts the, and the roots are going to continue. 
continue to grow and it's just uh, it's about being you know dogs dog mentality we are physical we are mean we are feisty we're going to continue to win football games uh, thanks coach go ahead Connor. yeah D but uh, Rap Sheet is currently in a source war or a source off if you will regarding the status of Jimmy G did you get to see any of Trey Lance yesterday and do you think he you know has the legs to take that Niners team deep into the playoffs hey they're still hunting for a playoff spot uh-huh. right now Niners still in this thing Still fighting. Um, you know, I think there's a reason we, we haven't been seeing him all year. Uh, he did. He went out there and handled business yesterday, won and covered. Shout out to Trey. Uh, went out there and got a win, man. Um, I don't think he's he's ready to be that guy at this point in the season. Uh, it's just, I mean, you come in and you start playing, you get meaningful reps, and you're playing against guys, especially going into the playoffs, who've been doing it at a high level all year. It's just tough to come out and, and beat those guys. But he has athletic ability. Um, obviously, that's why he went three. And uh, Jimmy G being down gave him his opportunity. Um, I don't think with Trey Lance at the helm, this 49ers team can make a run. I think they get oh. Jimmy G back in there. They definitely, uh, definitely can, though. Ian Rapport in the source off said that he doesn't think Jimmy can play. Somebody else says they think Jimmy can play. Jimmy wants to play. So I assume the other people are getting their information from Jimmy's people. Ian's getting his information. Yeah, that's a thumb. That's tough. From the nine. Jimmy's getting upset. Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy yeah. probably Jimmy saying, doesn't hey, like that. Rip the bone off. I can still go in the playoffs here and make another run at this thing. You guys traded the entire future of our franchise to get another quarterback, and I'm still fucking the bison here. <laughs> Thank you so much, D Bot, for joining us. I love our conversations every Monday. For sure, me too, man. Appreciate y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, download the Man to Man podcast. One of the hosts alongside Antoine Bethea is Darius Butler. Thank you. All right, hour two is wrapping up here. AJ on Sirius XM uh, here in about 10 seconds. Hour three is going to be crazy. Oh, Um, hell yeah. It always is. Uh huh. Brock Lesnar, WWE champion. Why? Football. Why? Why? NFL. Why? Why? Just, that's how it ended. That's how it went to commercials. That's just bleh, puking into the microphone. We have not taken a break, I don't think, in an no. hour and 52 minutes. No. So I'm going to go to the bathroom. I believe uh, the rest of the boys probably yes. are as yep. well. Mm-hmm. This is an awesome overreaction Monday. A lot of motherfuckers watching because there's a lot to talk about. There's also a lot of overreactions to get to from around the Twitter, which we appreciate everybody entering, and phone calls on the 5 Hour Energy phone line at 1-833-4-McAfee. The Super Boost did not hit yesterday because the Raiders came in and stole... A victory from the Indianapolis Colts. Damn you, Raiders. But I do like that the Raiders win those type of games all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is a game that the Raiders will win, too. And immediately after it happened, after Carlson kicked a 30-some yarder in, and it was, you know, over, and I realized, oh, the Super Boost isn't going to hit, and oh, what the fuck are the Colts? That's, those were happening at the same exact yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Then I thought, this is what the Raiders do. The Raiders have the ability to beat anybody. That's mm-hmm. right. And with Bisaccia at the helm, maybe this is just uh, not as bad of a loss as I'm making it out to be right now currently where I'm thinking, oh, we're all dead. And then automatically Googling, how much money are we paying Carson Wentz next year? Oh, $28 million. Oh, my God. This oh. is at least – and then I slowed myself down. I was like, the Raiders deserve more, more respect. Yeah. Yeah. The Raiders deserve more respect than what I'm giving them. You know what I mean, AJ? Yep. That's why you got the double gobble hands right now for, for Derek Carr. Is that what, who it's for? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gobble ghoul hands. The way you're that? saying things. Very Jesus. <laughs> what, sorry, what is it? Yeah. What's that? What's How's that? your family hands? Yeah, How's your yeah. family? Yeah. Out of respect, since I am not Italian, I'm, I'm sure I'm more Italian than you are. Whoa. I try to stay away from Oh, that. you're sure of it, huh? Oh. You ever spit into a tube and tell you, hey, yeah, I have, of... actually. I just got to look it up again. I got to go check it out. Oh, well, see, that's how oh. I know you're not Italian. Usually you... when you're point zero zero one of some, like, something, I'm like, oh, this is a big deal. I usually don't think that. Point one. It's well, 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 let's not get into point zero zero zero. Yeah, yeah. Come, on. come on. Come on. That was not the fucking time, but I do know that I was point zero one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> See that pinky ring? 0. 0.02. What? <laughs> See those two chains? 0. 0.03. What? See this watch? 0. 0.10. What? <laughs> Quite a run. A Quite least, a jump. That's a whole percent of that. That's right. How's your family? Well, how's your family? It's going to be better when Big Ben rides off into the sunset tonight after a big game. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you, Seven. On Monday Night Football, we're, we're back uh, in about five minutes probably to chit-chat about everything happening in the world, your phone calls, overreactions, and more breakdown of what's going on around the best league on earth, the NFL. How about 
How about the Patriots really doing what the Patriots did to Jacksonville? Yeah. Was that a get-back game for Mac Jones, his confidence, Bill mm-hmm. Belichick, and the entire Patriots organization? Big-time get-right game. Not even Mac. The defense, everybody's playing well. Had like four or three picks or something like that. And that's why Bill and Mac on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, it's such a joke, man. Yeah. <laughs> they suck, dude. <laughs> Remember, they were calling you Jack Moans last week. Yes. Now he's yeah. laughing, huh? You're Mac Jones, dude. <laughs> In the playoffs. Okay, Gumpy pointed out this morning, the Jags have gotten quite worse after Urban has left. Gump, enough. Well, <laughs> let's not forget the Jags did beat the Bills. That's, that's you say they jumped the gun. Was there. Urban was holding that team together. He was the They beat the that Bills. All right, that's certainly an angle, not... No. That is an angle. I don't know if I've seen that one out there all over the place, but you know what, Gump, that's... It's the, an interesting angle. The opinions of those who speak on this show do not necessarily reflect that of their peers or their employer. Yeah. With that being said, maybe the Jags, maybe the Jags were a little bit better when that guy who owns a couple chop houses in the dance house. And now yeah. the Raiders have been winning dance since house. since Urban has moved out with Coach O to co-own the Bunny Ridge. Yeah. And Urban won on two separate continents. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> he lost in one chop house, but he won. That's right. Two continents. All right, we're insane. back in about six minutes. We'll see you then. You're the best. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Coach Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Oh, man, Pat, it's an honor to be on with you, man. Thanks for having me. You're a legend. Thank you for putting me through my workout and having the scouts actually come watch me kick at West Virginia. I don't think I've ever fully thanked you for that moment, Coach. No, man, I, I, I've drank the, the McAfee Kool-Aid for a long time. Uh, <laughs> Let's get right into it. The locker room culture changed completely when I was in the league, from when I was a rookie to when I was done, and I retired after the 2016 season. Now it's even more different, I would assume, from when you came into Pittsburgh and everything like that. The dancing on the logo, the TikTok, everything like that that you guys have had to experience. What is your messaging in there? How do you adapt and let players be themselves without, you know, doing too much? Because that is a fine balance that you've been able to do, I think, in an incredible job with throughout your entire time in Pittsburgh. I think for me, more than anything, I try to stay connected. You know, um, just getting a sense of where these guys are coming from, what's in vogue for their generation, what captures their attention, how do they learn, how do they communicate, how do they interact with each other formally and informally. And I think being a parent kind of helps me. You know, my boys are 19 and 20, so it's not much difference between them and some of the younger guys that I deal with here. And so for me, it's just about gaining an understanding and working to stay connected. You know, that's my general attitude, man. It's adapt or die for me. And, and I want to—I don't want to be one of them old crusty guys, man. Just that just refuses to adapt. Although I am one of those old crusty guys now. Yeah, you are old as shit now. You know what I mean? I mean, you've been around a long time. I remember back in the day, whenever you showed up, there was a lot more, you know, to the camera. There was a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of that. Now you're just old ass man now, huh? You know how it is. Years in this business will scar you, man. It'll settle you down. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> one of my favorite moments uh, with you is. Uh, when you would tell me every um, warm up, uh, I'm gonna get you back to Pittsburgh when you're old and cheap. Uh, what, what does yes. that mean? <laughs> what, what did that mean? And uh, should that have been taken as a smack in the mouth, like I, uh, whenever you said that to me? No, man, it was a tip of the cap, man. There's okay. certain guys Good. around this league that I'm really interested in, but I know I cannot afford. And- <laughs> And, and you were one of them, so I was going to wait for you to physically deteriorate a little bit <laughs> until you came back into my wheelhouse. The Yenzers are going to go bananas in Hinesfield this weekend. First time it could be filled up in a long time. I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to... Oh, mama, I'm in the of my life. I'm the oh, 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 oh. Is that your alarm clock? Yeah, just say yes, by the way. Yeah. It's my ringtone. It's my alarm <laughs> clock. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you, Coach T. Last question before we let you go. Uh, why'd you let Troy Paul Mala do what he fucking did to me? Why'd you let... I know you've heard of this. Why, why? <laughs> well, that's a short side of the field. That's bad football. You guys coaching unsound football over there in Pittsburgh? How did that happen? We know you and love you as a man. But on Sundays in the fall, man, you're the nameless gray faces that we die. Die, All right, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, never had a losing season, absolute legend, two-time Super Bowl champion, Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Thank you, coach. Yeah! What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, i never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there 
We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. And, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. You don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did you start uh, you know, self-cheersing? When did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting out, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. They'll say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Joseph Montana, Italian-American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. It, was a, it, was a, it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yeah. He was like, put the baby down. And they said, no. And he said, ah. And they said, no, I'm taking your granddaughter. He said, ah. And they said, I'm taking it. And he goes, you asked for it. Sketchers up, Sketchers down. <laughs> yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs. Yep. And the baby. <laughs> Yeah. Caught the baby, <laughs> caught the granddaughter after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm -hmm. passed out. It was like one of those, boom, and they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs. At yeah. first. You know how <laughs> like that, how people surf almost down the stairs? He did that and caught his granddaughter like this. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Hour three on this overreaction Monday, January 3rd, 2022. Happy New Year. Let's go now. Yeah. Shout to the Toxic Table all the way back in its entirety at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, who beat COVID. That boy. Hey, congrats, See Connor. You COVID. Any moments of worry there, especially whenever you and I were talking on the phone? You had no voice. You sounded terrible, more sick than anybody in the history of anything. I wasn't worried for one second, Pat. I was, I was worried. Me no. and my wife, whenever I was FaceTiming with you at the house, we actually had a moment of silence for the potential health that you had lost because of how unhealthy you sounded. No, not at all. I wasn't worried at all. That's going to happen when you smoke 80 packs of cigarettes a week. Real quick. At Tone Diggs here as well. I One know. half of the Hammer Dad Cowboys, a gambling show that goes live every single day after this show ends, about 15 minutes, at youtube.com forward slash Hammer Dad. That's D A H N. And the college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, AJ Hawk is here. Um, so we're very lucky that to this point, you know, to this point we're at right now, no NFL player has died from COVID, right? No. Correct. Okay, that's awesome. We should celebrate that, right? Yeah. Okay. NFL. So, stop that. Stop that. So the reason why, so like this Omicron, you know, this Omicron one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, where are we going with this? Well, I'm just wondering. Like Sean Mannion was playing Sunday Night Football Week 17. Yeah. You know, like Sean Mannion. Now Kirk Cousins self-reported and everything like that, and we hope Kirk Cousins survives. But the more we learn about this Omicron right now, unless and we don't know what's going on with Dirty, unless it's the uh, Florona mix there. I right, guess yeah. you have to separate the two. Uh, we don't know anything. The, the playoffs very much still open for a lot of teams. There's a lot to play with uh, for as we go into Week 18 here. But there's also a lot we have no idea about. I think Chris Collinsworth said it last night. He said predicting this season 
it, whoever's doing it is absurd. And the sports books have been winning, by the way. The, the sports books have been winning because it's incredibly hard and difficult to predict who's going to play each week. But if that Kirk Cousins situation is going to continue to happen throughout the playoffs, we really have no idea who could go on a run right now. And I think that is why it is so absolutely glorious. Is it crazy to think? I mean, maybe like you obviously wouldn't be 100%, but. Like, guys have been self-reporting. If a quarterback gets it on, like, a Thursday, this, I mean. There's I, no way. I, now, listen. In the playoffs. Hey, they better. Hey. They, they yeah. damn well they, better. Hey, they better. I'll tell you what. Hey, they, is it, but, hey, when the playoffs come out, though, aren't don't you think right now they're already doing this where you're looking to see who has already been infected and who's uh-huh. gone on the list now to see who could come back again? So I did the math there uh, for a lot of players. There's a lot of players that are now enjoying the ride throughout, not even getting tested. They just got to hopefully not get symptoms and tell people they got symptoms. And to Ty's point, I mean, you're telling me championship weekend, somebody yeah. wakes up. Brady. <laughs> I don't know. People, you know, the flu game. People talk about the flu game yeah. for Michael Jordan. It's like stored and celebrated. He could have infected all of his teammates. True. Hey, they're all pass- <laughs> Look yeah. at his finger passing the ball. There's no conversation about everybody on that court could have got sick. It was like, nah, this is what this fucking guy did. This is what this oh, dude yeah. did. In the- he got oh, yeah. sick. He wasn't hung over. It wasn't because of some pizza. Nope. Nope. It was none of that. He, was, he had the flu, oh, and he went out there and played. Mm-hmm. And it was... You, you don't think a player who, let's, let's take the superstars out, but going into just the rest of the roster, championship weekend, if they have the Omicron variant that is only the sniff, you think anybody is reporting that? No yeah, way. Yeah, it's much different for them than Cousins, who saw the weather report, saw the five degrees, saw how he's done against Green Bay, saw how he do- knows how he does in prime time. He wanted to report symptoms. No, he, you he, can't say that, he, Kirk Kirk Street, you fucking, <laughs> you, you ta- asshole. What are you talking, Kirk Cousins? No, yeah, well, you're <laughs> saying, well, you say, you say he doesn't love football. Come you're on. saying he didn't want to play football uh, on Sunday night? I, all I'm saying is in the playoffs, it might be a little different. I think you're right. By the way, Herb Street, hilarious situation he got into. All, because what he meant was. Why did he apologize? He put an apology yeah. tweet out. So I think he wanted to, he was getting I mean he was getting cooked by everybody so I oh, yeah. still I mean that's yeah I mean he had an opinion yeah I, I don't know no but his opinion I think where in in my eyes okay this is not Kirk this is in my eyes whenever you generalize something as this is how you have to act if this is how you feel you're talking about other people's feelings as opposed to your own like if Herb Street would have said doesn't love football in the manner that I do right like in the in the manner that some of us do it's not a conversation because he's talking about himself anytime you're projecting other people's feelings out there I think that's always going to be something so I appreciate him following up with like hey the full conversation is actually this because so, I think a lot of people were not getting that and I think Herb Street was like well I didn't mean that first because they kind of clipped it there was a follow-up conversation that happened live in it so I think that is why Kirk potentially put it out there it was like hey come on like this isn't real because he was I think he does care yeah. but that's a fascinating conversation, especially after the Corral incident that yeah. happens, mm-hmm. because all anybody is going to do is point to that situation where I think what Herb Shea was trying to say, which is, by the way, how I feel as well. I don't feel like they don't love football, but that last game, I don't know. It, it has changed immensely, and I think you can get hurt doing whatever, however. I, I, I am a person that believes you can get hurt doing whatever. If you've already secured your draft stock, it's a bunch of money, your future. I understand how you would sit out and say, okay, I already got this. Even though you can get hurt training and lifting, and uh, any of the all-star games you're going to There's a higher chance you'll get hurt in a football game, obviously. Bingo. Bingo, which I 100% understand business-wise. But I don't – if it has to be tough for these guys if they do love their teammates and love the game to sit there and watch. I've never asked that question. Like watching Kenny Pickett watch that game. I I assume Kenny Pickett was not exactly thrilled about his Mm -hmm. smart business decision while that game was happening. Loves ball. Which is (laughs) – yeah, but that's the the meatheads out there can say, well, he actually chose not to play in the biggest game in program history, basically in the last twenty years, which was a mass one after the ACC championship. Loves which is, money more than ball. Well, that's the thing is, but he's setting up his future. It's such a it's such an interesting. It's weird. It's a different time. It's it really is. a different time, and it's really popped up over like the last what four or five years, maybe now where it's just. It's a lot. It's just normal for guys to start sitting out. Well, and that's why that's what I think Herb Street was trying to say, like. Hey, this is much different than whenever I was. He was before me. You were before me. But even when I was there, there was I don't think there was many people like, no, nah, I'm not gonna play in this. Who gives a fuck bowl? Because this is actually one last trip with my. You know, like you know, what you need to do what you should. Do. The only way, it's not a foolproof, uh, foolproof plan. But what you could do, go in there. If you're one of these studs, hey, yeah, I'm gonna go in and play. Not not the quarterback position. Somewhere else. 
preferably defense, offense too maybe. Go in there, get make a few plays early in the first quarter. Hey, I'm feeling good, feeling good. I may got scared, I got hit, like I might get chopped in the knees. Boom, targeting penal, penalty, ejection. You're out of the game. You still fought for your brothers. You still Smart. hopefully won oh. the game. You're Smart. out of here early. Smart. <laughs> so this is what AJ Hawks did. It happened to Bosa. It happened. Uh, it happened. He didn't do it on purpose to Joey Bosa back in the day when he got booted, maybe in the first half of his of the bowl game. And I was like, oh, how how happy is his agent? I don't know if it was Tom Condon or whoever. Like, these guys got to be very excited. He made a few plays. He's ejected. He's healthy. I think they went on and won the game. And I think Herb Street was alluding to that as well. He, when he put it, the phones, who's like, who's the people that are instructing these guys not to play and showing them the stats of this is what you could happen. And, and granted, those people, by the way, they might not have the best interest personally in the player's heart, but you'd assume they have the best interest in their pocket's heart, right, at all times, business people. So this is why they're laying out their case. And remember, team three of Russell Wilson's camp, they spoke out at different times from different portions mm-hmm. of the team on what would they feel is in the best interest of number three. That's happening with a lot of college guys that are going into the draft. There's a lot of people who think they have the best interest or the right ideas. So it's quite conflicting, especially when you have an injury like Corral's that only compounds that conversation even more. And it's like, well, there's probably some guys out there in the NFL who are scouting who are also like, I like that this guy loves his team. Like, I like that this guy wanted to play for his team. Now, I am not in the if you everybody's not a first round pick that's opting out also that's exactly you know and uh we just come from hey we're old dude we're old dude that's what yeah i, I remember there's a kid I, I played with where i think he was like football, a fourth, or fifth, though, dude, he was a fourth or fifth round pick and he left early he told me i was like oh wow you left early did you think you're gonna get drafted higher he's like no that's, that's about where i thought i was gonna go and I was like, <laughs> wow you must really not have liked your college we saw a guy <laughs> yeah you must have hated your time there yeah you must have hated your team I saw a guy, not at West Virginia, but uh, I think I met him at the Senior Bowl or whatever. Left early, undrafted, never played. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> How's that even happen? Because is that those are the same agents and people, business people that, and not all, by the way, can't generalize and can't broad brush this thing, which is, I think, what happened with Herbie as well. Because you kind of, anytime you broad brush, then all of a sudden you're taken away from a lot of people that love the game, to, you know, everything like that. But... I assume a lot of the business people are, oh, you, you make a team, we'll get you in there. It doesn't matter when you get drafted, you go there. And then when they don't get drafted and they're done, what happens? Oh, that person just moves and reps somebody else. You never hear from that person again. It's like, well, there's a whole thing. Now, those are two very different situations. We're not talking about that. But that whole sitting out of the bowl game because it doesn't matter is fascinating to me because from a business sense, it makes sense. But inside that law, I don't know, man. I just think that's like the thing about college sports is like the pageant. Like when does – when do we see the first guy sit out of a playoff game when their team is in the top four in the college weekend. football playoffs? It happened this weekend? No, I saw that that question this week. Well, weekend. then people were like, well, when do they start sitting out regular season games then start sitting out entire seasons? Well, guys like, did it during COVID, but that was during – like Jamar Chase did, but that was because of COVID. Like, Well, Dez, too. Didn't, he, Dez, didn't Dez Bryant miss a year or something like that? Hey, you know what could help this, though, Somebody, Pat, with maybe the big not teams? Dez crap? No. If, they, if they move it to eight or 12 teams in the playoff – I would say less of those studs will sit out if they're in the playoffs. Well, uh, hopefully that'll be able to help. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, you know, nobody will get hurt because there's more games, yep, obviously, because the future is secured. But you can get hurt doing anything in foosball. But games are definitely much more violent and dangerous. It is vastly different than what it used to be. But that's because stats and the amount of money that could be made and change entire trajectories of lives, communities, and careers. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot to dive into there. I mean, even the studs for Ohio State who sat out saw that dude Jackson go off for like 325 and two t- or three touchdowns or something. They probably are thinking, man, if we were playing out there, could you imagine? They might have raised their draft. Is that not style. up your draft? Yeah, that's what I'm like. Uh, all yeah, right. if you go out and play well, of course it'll it'll raise it. But if you're kind of set and they, you know where you're going to go, then I'm sure they have plenty of people in their ear. Even their coaches, like, hey, like I want you to make the best decision for you. Like, we would love to have you on this team, but I understand, like, if you're doing this for you and your family and your future. I've never been in that position. You were a top five pick. I wasn't in that position though. Like, well, I never. Well, you were wow, actually. Yeah. You actually were, and I think we actually heard you earlier say exactly what you would have done if it was 2021, because you have to put on for Ohio. You're mm-hmm. AJ Hawk. Right. You love ball. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna play, but I'm also gonna take this massive head. 
and I'm gonna find somebody else's head, and I'm gonna get out of this game. I'm mm-hmm. gonna save myself. If you were, if I was really worried about getting hurt, yeah, that would probably be my my <laughs> way to try to get hurt. Try to kill else. somebody else. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's I would want the game to be in hand, though. I want to make a few tackles. And hopefully, we're winning. We, I know we're gonna win. Okay, let's just throw this thing at somebody. Let's secure number five overall. This thing. Let's just, <laughs> just describe his head. This, I'm already number five overall. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt anyone else. But I just just enough to get a targeting penalty. See you. Nice. Break a guy's So it's jaw. like it's like hockey. You you uh, you know not like that. <laughs> but you're like hockey. You're like Chara, where you actually oh, a please. slot receiver. You go up. Please allow me this. Head <laughs> <down>. <laughs> yeah. And please. these days you don't have to do much to get a targeting call. So it's not yeah, bad. Exactly. Idea, yeah, they'll send you out if you even put that head close to the shoulder. It'll probably happen naturally anyway for most guys. <laughs> well, for you definitely with the way you tackled. But it is it's an insane situation down there that's only going to continue, especially as NIL <laughs> evolves. But we're in an evolving time, a changing time. And I think Kirk Herbstreit was taking a lot of heat because he's made money off of college football, and we've gotten to know Kirk. Kirk's a cool dude, does. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Kirk's, yeah. Very, very Kirk's cool. a diehard like, football purist, yeah. though. Like, he loves the history, the tradition, everything about college football. Like, no, 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 but he makes it. money. He makes money off of covering it. He does make money. Should he? I guess if he was pro bono, if he wasn't making any money, would, would this be okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Because he's. A lot of those, yeah, those nonprofits don't make money, do they? Well, <laughs> there uh, seems to be a lot of people employed at a lot of them. But whatever he was talking about, um, anytime he talks about for love of the game, he can immediately get thrown in his face. Sir. Sir. Sir, you make millions of dollars and the people you talk about get paid nothing. Until now. I think actually Kirk Herbstreit should be pumped about the NIL thing because now he can't just get thrown. That guy, what, he... He didn't sleep for like three days covering, <laughs> covering yeah. college yeah, football. Yeah, he was going on two hours of sleep. Miami, and then he's 6 a.m. in Pasadena. It's for like, no oh, reason, yeah. by the way. For no reason. Inside he, the empty stadium. There just, is no yeah. reason for Herb He's got a game be, Saturday, right, before the Monday yeah, National Championship wild. in the well, NFL game? Yeah, but his ento- entire season is like – like I think Herb Street, if, you know, if I would – I'm not going to go on a rant pro Herb Street because he put himself in this when he generalized. He knows that. He's a professional. He's the top of a mountain. He's a guy. But that guy is committed to college football. Like, that guy loves fucking ball, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just because he gets paid to cover it, I guess you can throw that in his face. But he also gets paid to cover it because of how much he loves it and how good he is at it. It's just whenever you say stuff like that, especially in the world we're in, I guess you're setting yourself up for it. But I honestly believe that he just meant – that, you know, this is not anything I would ever do, which it, the conversation kind of turned He's paid to, to give us opinion, man. Like, he's he's not a hot take guy, but he, he's paid to give his opinion and how he views games going on and when he's on game day, like, what he thinks should and would happen, and that's what he's doing. So, hey, it generated some talk, didn't it? Well, they were talking about Herbstreit on the internet. It was not good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I let, him, I let him know ESPN's that. ESPN's not mad about that. I let him know that I've experienced those waters before, you mm-hmm. know, and it's not great, you know, when you're taking real chop. Just every time yeah. you, every time you update the thing, oh, there's more about how stupid you are, and then you, oh, oh this guy's geez. the worst human alive, oh, and then boom, boom, boom. It just, it does become tough. But Kirk Herbstreit's a big boy; he understands, yeah, he can yeah. handle it. He gets it. It is a different time, though, much different time in the game. It's because there's a lot of money on the line, and we know a lot more than we've ever known before. Let's bounce around the NFL a little bit, shall we, AJ Hawk? Yeah, let's see it. There was, I mean, there were some uh-huh. fun games to watch yesterday, man. Go on, big time. All over the place. I mean, first off, the, the Jets Bucks game, I thought, I was like, all right, wow, well, okay, this is a weird win for the Jets. They're going to use a lot of momentum from this going into the offseason, all this stuff, whatever. But uh, for a second, there were, uh, okay, good. So you picked the Lions there, didn't you? Yeah, I did pick okay. the Lions. Did you think they were really going to win that game? Well, you, you, 10 and 5. I eight, thought they yeah. were going to cover. What was it? It was mm, like seven. 10 and 5. Huh? 10 to 5 against the spread, right? I Tommy? thought they were going to cover because yeah. Russell Wilson said, I fucking hate this city. I hate this team. Right. I mean, he uh-huh. came out and said, Get me the fuck out of here. It's my last game here. Thank God. Everybody says it's loud. Yeah. My ears ring every single time we get done playing in here. Teams have to experience it once a year. They go, Oh, it's going to be bad to go up there to the Pacific Northwest and hear how loud that crowd is. Your ears were hurt for two, three days afterwards. Russell Wilson's like, Thank God I don't have to do this every single home game. That's basically what he said. Then we talked to Rappaport earlier and we said, Hey, what's the deal with Russell in Seattle? And he said, It feels different than it did last year. Last year, Chicago made an actual run at Russell. Pete Carroll, who has final say, said, Nah, not going to happen. It feels different this year. So Pete's on board. Russell's saying, get me out of here. I thought there was no chance that the boys would rally, and they did. They beat Mm -hmm. the fuck out of the Lions. (laughs) Killed them. I mean, they they did. They handled it, which leads me even more. Who cares? Does culture even matter? Right. What matters? (laughs) 
I don't know. I have no idea. Like all that matters is what team shows up that day to play. We don't. It doesn't matter what your week of practice looked like. Doesn't matter if your coach thinks it was good or bad. It's just what happens on game days, and that's how it's always been. But now I just think there's so much inconsistency with it. Maybe just every team is. They're so evenly matched that I don't know. Well, this is it, just going to continue to happen. It's not just who shows up. It's like who finishes the game for you, you know, because yeah. some of your, some star players are just quitting on teams in the middle yeah, of games, yeah. and they're still winning. Yeah, that's Those right. Those teams are still winning somehow. Nothing makes any sense. Go that's ahead, right. The quarterback. If you got a quarterback, quarterback. The team's going to – that's <laughs> yeah. what matters. Yeah. You're saying Tim Boyle's not as good as Russell Tim Russell. Boyle was throwing a medicine ball yesterday. I mean, he Whoa. made some plays. They came out of halftime in his first throw, first play, pick. <laughs> Game over. I mean, they did not stand a chance. I liked him, Boyle, but shit, he is in the uh, Sheen, Mary, Manny, and whatever the hell that guy's name is category Sheen as far as Mannion? ball throwers. What? She, uh, she what? Sheen Mannion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Talking about last night's quarterback. Yeah, that guy. You, think Tim, you think Tim Boyle's throwing 90, though, off the mound? Uh, no. Tim Boyle's a big well, body, and plus he is, he is, you he know, was two a and 20 in college. Anyways, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with all these quarterbacks we've never heard of playing quarterback <laughs> uh-huh. in, in January football. That, that hopefully, now Ian Rapport alluded to maybe this thing being around for next season. Mm-hmm. What was that all about? Yeah. What thing? Crab sheet's just spinning what do you mean? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? Oh, oh, COVID? On. Yeah. yeah. Another variant. Right, nothing Nothing would shock me or surprise me, no. There's exactly. no way. Okay. Well, you've said no way for two straight years now. <laughs> well, I, there After is. you've proclaimed that you beat, hey, we beat COVID as a universe. You've said that, what, 15 times maybe over the last nine months? There's been a couple times where it did appear as if we beat that son of a bitch COVID finally. Stores were opening. States were opening. Travel was happening. Right. People were starting to live. And then, boom, another wave. Well, I typically don't bring him up, but Fatch is coming oh, around. He's back. On, you know, is us he? beating it? Yeah. Well, and then also Dr. Drew came in last the week. The New York mayor's awesome, too, if you saw his little comment. <laughs> I didn't. I have, no, I have not seen that. But I do know that Dr. Drew, yes. actual doctor, eight different degrees, last week said at some point we've got to have a little bit of courage here. And I thought, okay, as a doctor saying that, that's not just Dr. Drew's idea right Mm. doctors are all about seeing and studying and doing their thing and maybe dr drew's a little bit different because he does get shit on a lot oh he's still getting shit on in my mentions from his conversation with me five days ago Mm -hmm. i I mean it it can't be easy to be dr drew but that's why he's got nine degrees he takes care of everybody's shit it's yep but whenever he says at some point we got to stand up to this thing in my head i immediately think wait a minute Maybe we did have some celebrations a little bit early. Maybe we saw some other things start to happen and think to ourselves, oh, we're back, baby. Maybe we took some chances in screaming at the top of our lungs that we defeated this son of a bitch COVID. But whenever Dr. Drew said, hey, this is the weakest fucking variant. At some point, it's going to take some people to stand up. Fouch is saying, hey, it ain't about, you know, people having it. It's about... Mm -hmm. What's happening to the people that are having it? It's like, whoa, 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 Fouch, 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 Fouch. We hadn't heard that. We hadn't heard that in a long time, and I haven't kept up enough with the Fouch. Since when did he, you say that? Just, just recently. L- yeah, just last week, I believe he said something okay. about if people are in the hospital because, because of, of COVID. Because of COVID, with COVID, or because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was the first time he's ever said something along those lines. It was like, whoa, okay, hold on. So you hear Dr. Drew say something, then you hear Fouch come with it. Now, he's a terrible pitcher guy can't throw a baseball for fuck but that's because he's just been doing uh you know so much doctoring his entire life him coming and saying that thing it's like whoa 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 did we beat covid are we are we on the other side of this thing aj that's my thoughts and then ian rapport comes in and goes hopefully we don't have to deal with covid next season i'm (laughs) like next season this guy what are we even talking about that's nine ten months away i thought we were already i thought we already beat this thing yeah it's the cycle. Once, I mean, I think we'll deal with it for the rest of uh, when it's cold here, and then everyone's going to kind of forget about it come, you know, May or whatever. It starts getting warm out. People aren't really getting the sniffles anymore, and if they are, allergies, allergies, my allergies are killing me. And then, you know, it starts to get cold again, and we're back in it. So hopefully, hopefully we are, you know, right at the end of this thing. Look for potential COVID cases to be high in Pittsburgh. Mm. Yep. Because what he said about allergies is happening, I assume, all across Pittsburgh. They're watching all these recap videos of Roethlisberger's career. Yeah. Everybody sniffling and crying, oh, shit, give me a COVID case. I think Dawn's got it. They're taking the test. They're positive, locking down in quarantine. Anytime there's a chance of a lot of tears and sniffles, you got to wonder if they're going to go take a test and find out that they got the Omicron. I assume Pittsburgh is going to have record numbers over the next five, six hours. Yeah, um, I'd be surprised. 
if the whole city didn't have it, if things don't go our way tonight, you know? Oh, man. We're just going to go in our houses for five days, try to forget about what happened and then maybe never come out again. Oh, mama, I'm in fear from my life because of Omnicron. Got the sniffles and a fever in my head and Ben Roethlisberger's damn near dead. A uh, hilarious part of last week with Dr. Drew, by the way, was when he was like, thank you for showing my degrees. People <laughs> never actually talk about me being a doctor. Yeah, I get shit on a lot is how he started <laughs> yeah. the conversation. I'm like, all right, Doc. Well, let's go ahead and get through it. Um, their game tonight is obviously something to chat about as we wrap up week 17 of the NFL season in the last week. But today's a great day because it's overreaction day. Today is a day where we send out a bird call on Twitter. We say, hey, listen, I want to hear it from everybody. There is an excuse for you to lose your mind and be irrational about your NFL team. All you got to use is hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but it's time for Overreaction Monday here on the show at S U J I O O zero. Sujiho. Sujiho. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was that? Sujiho. Bengals oh. fan. PMS. Bengals logo on his hoodie. Yeah. yeah, yeah on frog. On the fly on Kermit. Yeah. Hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but the Bengals have the brightest future out of any team in the NFL. The Lombardi Trophy is going to be in some sky line. Chili, shout to Su Su Yi Su Ji Ho yep. Su Ji Ho Su Yo Su Yo Su Yo Su Yo Su Yo Su 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 Yo. Anyway, shout out to Bengals fans thinking that that is the case, and there's no reason not to believe that very young team that is unbelievable. AJ, big time win over the Chiefs, which they're going to have to stare down alongside the Bills and the Jonathan Taylor led Colts for like the next ten years. If the Bengals, if this was th- these exact same players were somewhere else on a different team, would t- would people take it more serious and think that hey, we, they, this team is set up to be like the next Chiefs? I think so because teams would go watch them practice because they wouldn't have to withstand ten degree weather to do so. Yep. So I think there'll be a lot more coverage, a lot more media. But that type of stuff, you know, when you're training out in the Arctic underneath a highway and you got no other options. You know, sometimes you got to burn the bridge behind you so you have nowhere to retreat. Cincinnati has no option to get soft. They can only get harder. They can only get more callous. And although other teams have plenty of advantages off the field, this Bengals team don't know what they don't know. They're so young. They were born in the dark of the NFL, which is the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Sue Yi Yo is 100% right. The future looks bright, and I'm excited about it. But if you're in the AFC North, you got to be... Worried. Oh, yeah, I'm not thrilled about it. They'll fuck it up somehow. Why you not say they, that? Not if they keep drafting like they have for the last couple of years. When have they not? I think you're talking about Browns. Well, yeah, the Browns are much worse, but I'm saying like. Well, Browns got a big time chance to ruin Ben Roethlisberger's last trip been, around. I think it's been like 36 years since the Bengals have won a playoff game, so. All right, this could be here. Good luck out there. Good luck out there. Let's go to the next overreaction, shall we? This is from Big Tist. Tyler Everson, 76. Offensive lineman by trade. Yeah. Yep. A little bit older now. Big Tiss don't fuck around, but he's got the kids. That's, That's right. right. Big Tiss says, hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact, but Tampa might be dead. AB said, peace. Godwin and Fournette are out, and the Jets had them dead in the water for 58 minutes of that game. Brady is still Brady, but I think it's going to take a miracle for Tampa to repeat. We agree, Big Tiss. Mm-hmm. We agree. And isn't that kind of sad, AJ, with all that talent? We are talking perfect season before the season. Now it feels like they're just kind of falling apart right here before the biggest time of the year. I mean, it does feel like that, but still, does anyone? No one's truly counting them out. When you have Tom Brady, you have Gronk, you have a defense that can be super disruptive. Like, they can still make a run. Rob Gronkowski asked on the field after the game about the Antonio Brown situation. He said he didn't get to see that. I was too busy running my head into 300 pounders yeah. <laughs> and trying to make plays for this team. You could tell that even Rob, who's just super positive, I like the football guy, it, it sounded like in his answer he was like, fuck that whole situation, basically. Mm-hmm. We're out here trying to win ball games. There are still pieces that are enough to go on a run, but with that much distraction, I don't know how you win the biggest trophy in all of sports. I have no clue how you're able to do that. When the entire thing is to limit distractions, it seems like Tampa only has distractions. They need him, though. Not only distractions, yeah. but they need A.B. Mm-hmm. Like he was, he was a pivotal part of their offense, I feel like, when he's in the lineup. So 
that that part hurts a lot too. Aside from the whole distraction situation. But when you got Tom Brady, you got a chance. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But I mean, when you look at the top of that, you know, NFC with the Packers and even the Rams, like. The Bucks, if they do have to play one of those teams, Jalen Ramsey's probably going to do a pretty good job on Mike Evans. Like, is Gronk and then other backup wide receivers going to get it done against those top, top teams? It's hard to see that happen. And I guess that is how we have to look at it, is who's at the top and who's going to be able to get them. And this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team would have been a team that we would say nobody would be able to get. Like, this team, with all their pieces. Now, key injuries have happened. Who knows who's going to be back, who's not going to be back, because maybe you get Fournette back, I Mm -hmm. guess, for the playoffs and rehab. I don't know if that's been – has that – is that still a conversation? I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Yeah, they said he was done for the regular season, but he should be back by the playoffs with his hamstring. But now it's like there's no way that reality TV show down there in Tampa is able to beat, like, the Packers who are out in the middle of nowhere who everybody seems to love. There's nobody on the Packers thinking about leaving that team. Nobody. No. And although Antonio Brown is the only one that did that, there had to be somebody in there that he talked with that maybe either agreed or was pissed. I assume that isn't the only dr- – I don't know. I think it's definitely possible that obviously there's plenty of guys with issues on the team, like minor issues, but I don't know if there's anyone on the same level as AB. It's like, yeah, man, he's justified for doing that. Okay, well, let's hope that's the case, right? I mean, it, there wasn't a lot of people coming to talk to him while he was getting up to leave. That was that was even there's no stopping him at that point. Like Mike Evans, like he, he, at one point, Mike Evans was like, all right, that's you know, I did all I could do. I, I, mm-hmm. he's, the, the fucking video from Miller is going to show me yeah. Yeah. that I came over here and I tried to talk to nobody else. And Guerrero was over there. I saw Guerrero in one of the videos, had oh. his back, did not turn around. I didn't see any coaches over there trying to pull him back. It was a lot of like, uh, it looked like that was a consultant area almost. They were standing over there. Nobody even looked at him. They didn't even turn around. It was like, something's happening here. But they're all like, they're down out here though. Mm-hmm. And then B.A. said, uh, I want to talk about the players that are on the goddamn mm-hmm. field. Well, and it's just like you look at Tampa Bay last year, like they were peaking at this time, kind of like just uh, loving kind of, ball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they were much healthier. Like mm-hmm. they are, they're much more banged up this year than they were last year. And then, like AJ said, like it's not just like the whole, like they need a B. Like we were talking about, hey, they're kind of just treading water, you know, offensively until a B gets back because he makes them that much more dynamic and that much better. And not, you know, now you don't have that anymore. 11 for 110 or something last week. On Gilmore. And then this week, yeah, and then this week, he ran one route that he got, and it was just, like, wide open. And Tom finds him. You lose that player, your team is automatically going to be worse, I think. But they're probably thinking, at least we got a chance to get that out of the air. We have no – if it built up. We don't know the story, but there's a chance that they're all very thankful, to your point – to maybe get that type of thing out of the locker room. And there's a there's a chance if the Niners lose to the Rams and the Saints beat the Falcons that the Bucks have to play the Saints in the first round, which is not someone they want to play because we saw how that defense does against Tom. Oh, mama, I'm in fear. That's unbelievable. I thought that was going to he, – he, what, he just extended for another year too, Tom? You know, Tom's not going to take this lightly, I assume, in the offseason. No. Right? No. Tom, no. This isn't so, – Tom's not continuing to play – you know, for this type of shit to happen, right? There's no way. No and way. if you watch Man in the Arena, like the team is like his thing. I, the relationships. Yeah, you'd have to wonder, like, what's what happens if the Bucks, if they're one and done in the playoffs, which they have so much talent. Okay, I think I think Gronkowski can beat anybody. Yeah. Them going one and done would be quite a surprise. But there's a lot of shit happening down there right now. If they don't win at all, what's the conversation like for Tom? Oh, I got to come back and get another one. You know, like you have to think about that for a quarterback that's he's 90- coming back no matter what. I think obviously he's 95 years old, but yeah. you have to think about. All that type of shit, especially with Man in the Arena and the conversation about his family and stuff, it's crazy. Well, and because they've been kicking the can down the road with the salary cap, even if it goes up, like, do they have that much, you know, money to spend in free agency this year? Or no, I, I'm not sure, but I assume they don't have too much. You know, they'll figure it out. It's Tom Brady, right? It's Tom Brady. They'll figure it out. I don't know. Yeah. That was the thought with New England. He always makes everyone better too, though. I mean, who was the guy who caught the game-winning touchdown yesterday? Cyril Griffin. Yes. Right. Cyril. Cyril. Yeah. Yeah. Cyril. Yeah. Cyril yeah. Griffin. Yeah. I, like I don't think anyone expected yeah. Cyril Griffin to come out and make a play like that. But then, like, look for years. Like he did it with Chris Hogan in New England when he first burst on. Hey, team. he's we still like, free agent. He was not drafted to lacrosse. That's right. Yeah. And he we were like, who's this guy? Team. He ain't beating us. He ain't beating the Steelers. And then he shreds them. And then uh, when Edelman came on the scene, like, oh, who's this guy? He's too little. He ain't beating us. And then he yeah, shredded he everybody. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's still available. A couple free agents you mentioned oh. there as we lose out on Antonio Brown oh. is Julian Edelman who said wow. I ain't never playing football because my knees are so bad uh-huh. staring at a future 
you know, me, Gronk, Tom, the boys, maybe another Super Bowl run. I only got to go for about five, six weeks here. He's in phenomenal shape. He looks good in every picture I yeah. see him post. Maybe. I mean, the Foxborough for everything would definitely be ruined if he did that. But even if it is Edelman, like, are the, any of these guys were mentioned on AB's level? Like, AB is No, absurdly. what are you talking about? And Godwin's in his There's last... There's no free agents currently. Exactly. Yeah. And Godwin's, uh, they franchise tagged him. So are they going to bring him back? What or? about Larry Fitzgerald? Larry Fitz, yeah. maybe? They do a podcast together, allegedly. Steer the ship. Kind of Allegedly. brace the waters as they're you know getting really bad right now. Bring in Larry. Yeah. Fitz will do that. Yeah. Can, can AB be signed by somebody for a playoff run? <laughs> uh, he's not no longer a Buccaneer. I think Green your Bay. word is what your bond. Packers went after him. Could you imagine if the Green Bay Packers were like, "All right, Aaron, come on into our very good culture. All right, we think you can run a couple great routes for us in between us throwing to Devontae and Lazard and Aaron Jones makes fantastic and AJ Dillon. We think you can make three to four catches for us a game." Just please try not to burn down the entire place. Mm -hmm. Is that what <laughs> they would? It. Is that what they would have to do? No, they don't. They don't need him right now. He is so good at football. He is. I know that mm -hmm. people that talk about him never. I don't think they lead off with that enough, because that sets this. That sets the stage for everything else. Hey, all this other shit. You be who you can afford to be is a life thing, but it's also a football thing, and you should. You should take that to life. By the way, be who you can afford to be. It's not fair. Hate it. Hate that that's a reality, but that is real life. In the NFL, it is. When Antonio Brown went back to Tampa, all the Antonio Brown haters said, fuck this guy, he's going to ruin it. They win a Super Bowl, he seems to be a model citizen, and then here are those people who predicted that years ago and have hated him all. Are telling, I told you, we all told you, we're the smartest people of all time. I just hope that he changed, and it seems as if that did not happen. Nope. Golly, he got or maybe he did change. And it was just going to tell a story somewhere. Like well, it'll probably be on his own Netflix. IG stories or something. Maybe it'll be in his next album. Yeah. Ooh. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, who was did he know the driver, the guy with him oh, in the video? You're talking yeah. about Danny Boy H Hustle Hart? Yeah, come on. That's his boy, right? Yeah. Oh, Danny's connected. Yeah. yeah. Danny, well, Brooklyn that's guy. The first thing I thought, does he go in and shower there in the in the locker room and just get his gear on and go? And then who cleans his locker out back in Tampa? His car's probably at the airport, like all this stuff. Yeah, who's Talked getting all his stuff? Is he just leaving it all? He's in our house down there in Tampa. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're, we're like, is he moving out? Is he just staying in New York forever? Yeah, just maybe never going back. He just lives in New York now. He lives in a studio. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in a booth. Mm hmm. Whatever yeah. the case. This ain't going to end here. I assume there's going to be more that unfolds from the event. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we? Uh, Matt Pritzel, Bucks in six. Oh, this guy loves Milwaukee. Congratulations, Pritzel. Hey, Giannis out there, ball and Greek freak. I'm huh? putting people in pretzels. Matt Pritzel. Uh, hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact. But Aaron and Devontae is the most unfair duo we've seen since Peyton and Marvin. This is a good question for you, AJ Hawk. Is there anything a defense can do whenever Aaron and Devontae can do whatever they want at any point? That back shoulder 7-Eleven, dude. It's always open. Whenever he wants to throw it, it's available. And they were talking early, and I think they did a couple examples that weren't necessarily the best examples of Devontae being late with his hands, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of veteran wide receivers do because corners read your eyes. They try to read your hand. That's how they're trying to figure it out. So as you get older, you learn these tricks, and Devontae is not only uh, faster and quicker and knows where the ball is going. He also has all these OG tricks with Aaron Rodgers. That thing's on any time. Is there anything anybody can do against that to stop that and just hope, I guess? No, when they're playing, when they're on and they have that connection, no, there's not a whole lot you can do. And they, they started to talk about it last night in the game when Devontae's at number two out there and they throw this little quick yeah. little, little out to him that's an, an RPO type deal where, hey, your linebacker walks out there and covers him up. I'm going to hand the ball off because you're light, you have a light box. Your linebacker tries to come back in, boom, we know I'm hitting it. I'm getting at least five yards most likely. Could also break this thing for a touchdown. Like second and medium, third and medium. Like, what do you do? Like, I don't really know. I was I was watching that last night. I'm like, okay, how would I? Like, what would I do to try to combat them? Like, these guys are just so good. I think they had eight in a shell at one point. We were watching, and he did like a check down to AJ or Aaron, mm -hmm. I think. And that's like six, seven yards if the first person makes a, a good tackle because yep. they're letting you do that. It's almost – There's that, no cover zone. A lot of zones have a no cover zone. Like from from the line of scrimmage, it's five yards out. Like there's a five-yard no cover zone where you don't ever jump a, jump across or if you're sitting in a zone because then they're going to hit you behind you. So a lot of times you're giving up that pass, that little five-yard area, and you're hoping you can rally and make the tackle before the first down. Yeah, because we'll take that. Hey, we'll take that as opposed to whatever's over the head. And on the defensive side of the ball, they talked about them uh, – 
playing basically like a basketball zone defense. And that's why it took them a little bit to get better mm -hmm. because they started learning the nuances, I think, of that. Is that how every defense is, every zone-style defense is, where they basically it, they have a zone, they have their own area, you can cover it however the hell you want. And I think that's why Razul has had so much success because he has his area and he knows exactly how he wants to bait or he wants to cover it. And then as soon as he, he passes people off, they're like in sync with each other. I would assume synergy is a big deal. Is that why early it stunk and then now it's kind of catching on and is that just one play call basically it's not one play call but it's like zone match they'll call it like yeah i have a zone like hook curl whatever curl flat whatever but then once a receiver comes into your zone you match them like it's man but then they can mess with you they can say you jump him and he runs from the curl flat over or he runs from the hook curl to the curl flat you need to drop him and sink behind because you know a route's coming behind you and then yeah just passing the crossers off and knowing not getting stuck on a dude like all of that, it only comes from reps. You can do it in practice all day, whatever. It, all, it You need to see it in a game. You need to get beat in a game a few times to know how each guy around you plays and how each guy like communicates. And I think we're seeing right now, like these guys are starting to put it together for sure. And that because, and it's so cliche, but it feels real. They're all like on a string, it feels mm -hmm. like. And you're pre-snap. You're pre-snap talking. Like when your defense is good like that and you're playing a zone, like your pre-snap talk with everybody it's like a it's a thing of beauty to to think about when it happens because you see the formation, you see the final formation they're getting to, and you all start instantly calling out the route combinations and what's coming. And then hey, good things happen. And then the quarterback on the other side, Mannion, hears you doing that. And it's like oh. absolutely, it's got to be tough too when a defense is humming like that and they got a beat on you. Yeah, it can't be easy. Hey, he's coming right at you. He's coming right here. Yeah. Hey, he's got the two coming out here. Hey, we. we we lock, we check, if, uh, and Manny just sitting there like, God oh, shit. damn. Uh, and then you go, uh, the kill, kill, kill. And then all of a sudden you start watching. All right, he's gone out there. He's gone, oh, fuck. It, it's, it was beautiful to watch that Packers defense. Now, granted, no offense to Manny once again, but that defense the last few weeks has been dominant. They've oh, yeah. been mm -hmm. like dominant, dominant. And you just got to hope, obviously, no key pieces. You have to bring in anybody else that maybe isn't on the exact same page. But that's the thing about whenever you find it and you think to yourself, what defense could win a championship? It's a defense that's all on the same exact page. You just got to hope that special teams. Man. So you just got to hope that special yeah, teams. Yeah, I know. Well, but it was, you know, Crosby made all his field goals last night. I mean, even that the operation early, they, they got new lucky. New snapper, by the way. Yeah, ex which, what Another the fuck new? are we, I mean, like. Why uh, did you get a new snapper? Yeah. Was it just COVID? Was it COVID? I, I don't think so. They cut a guy just midseason. Then Stephen Wardle, welcome to, welcome to the big club. No, now. this is. This, I know, there's a new one again. So, so this is the third snapper so of the year? Maybe he did have COVID. I don't know. But By the way, if he didn't have COVID, I'm surprised he got past his first couple weeks. <laughs> For them to cut him now would be very interesting. Thing. So I assume he had to get COVID or get hurt or something like that. First snap, though, Bojo uh, punches that thing down, traps it, brings it up. Mason Crosby and um, Collinsworth kind of talked about it a little bit. He talked about how Mason is able to slow down or whatever. Very true. Valid. My biggest thing is that Mason, throughout the entire season of very poor operations and even into a couple years ago, Mason had absolute faith that Bojo was going to get that ball down. He didn't stop. He didn't do anything. He continued all the way through. He was only seeing that ball up and down, because if you think with how quick he is, for a half a second, and he makes the kick, that's incredible faith in each other. You know, like that's, that is Mason Crosby saying, I trust you with getting this thing done, as opposed to pulling up, fire, 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 which could happen. That is a big deal. If I was a Packers fan, I'd be like, okay, at least they're at the point where they are very much trusting each other. But with that snapper thing, you got to figure that the fuck out. I mean, what are we doing? Throw the fucking seed, dude. Is it really third snapper? If they're in their third snapper, I think that's, I mean, that tells you a lot about the operation. Yeah, it's tough. It, whenever they said that new snapper, I was like, oh, shit, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. This is going to happen again because it seems like it has been happening to Mason Crosby. He doesn't deserve it at all. And it seems like they have in terms of just like field position the last couple weeks kind of got that corrected. It doesn't feel like, you know, the offense is starting on the six yard line every single time. That can and lose you a game. For sure. And and that and, and really, that's all they need from the special teams is like you need a guy back there who can call for a fair, a fair catch and field the punt. And it seems like they got a guy who's done that for a couple years in the league now like really at this point as long as they don't turn the ball over on special teams or have some egregious mistakes like the offense and the defense with the way they're playing should be able to pick them up bojo had a miss yeah it was very loud in the, mm -hmm. in the entire covid foot the, well entire yeah, covid covid yeah. might yeah. have been something we'll keep an eye on that i guess there's covid fingies now too really Whoa. oh no covid right. fingies oh no aj 
Who? Well, oh, no, they don't no. look like that. They turn blue. They become big, I guess. Oh, no. Yeah. Really? That sounds terrible. Yeah, finger I've never 19. heard of that. Finger 19, dude. Mm -hmm. Damn. It was on local news. I seen it. T's and P's. I mean, local news didn't try to scare the fuck out of you at all. <laughs> what did it look like? Did somebody show you? Show you? Yeah, it looked like diabetes fingers. Oh, just okay. like big purple. Sure. Okay. Oh. Sausages. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, thick ones. Oh, yeah. Did they it, cut it off? It said, you heard of COVID, but have you heard of COVID fingies? Mm. And the picture was just these, <laughs> what appeared to be Halloween fingers, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I'll send you the article. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll send you an article. Get I, don't even, the lookout. I don't even know how we got to that. <laughs> oh, Bojo. Yeah, Bojo. 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 Yeah, he had a miss. And everybody's like, oh, this guy stinks. But then he hit Just it. don't lose it. Special teams just don't lose it. Yeah. Through. That's wow. all you got to do. Like, your offensive defense is good enough. Special teams just don't lose the game. Yeah, unless you're stuck, go ahead and win that thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can also win. You don't need to. Packers don't need the special teams to win them a game. Agreed. Agreed completely. Which is a good thing. They're a good team. Like, they don't need anything crazy to happen for them to win. How about last week when I said, oh, nobody even asked if I wanted to come punt. That's weird. Hmm. Uh, should I feel offended by that? And I stand up. Oh, uh, <laughs> I should not. I, I, I thought about Bojo kicking in five-degree weather. Or I whatever. mean, Brutal. last night wouldn't have been a bad night to go. I don't have to play, though. Why? You only punted what? Only punted once, I think. What, maybe again later? But, you know, shit, you kind of just... What's it like? Is it just like kicking a cinder block? So the thing is, and that's a great question, Nick. Thank you for the journalism. Um, you know, so this thing has a uh, an air thing inside of it, obviously. Bladder? Bladder, there it is. And whenever your, your needle is going into the bladder, then there's the outside. And the outside is tied together through these laces part here. So when it's really cold, the outside becomes rock hard. The inside, you know, still pumped up as much as it is, but harder to indent. When you're kicking or punting something, you're trying to indent the ball and then explode it off of your, off of your foot. Uh, leg speed, power, way, there's so many different ways to try to indent the football. More you indent it, the further it's gonna go. That's all you're trying to do is make that bladder small and then explosion off of your foot. So whenever the ball is freezing, it's almost like an uh, ice cream cone that has a, uh, a chocolate uh, outside that is like rock hard yeah. and then the ice cream soft like on the shell. inside. So you got to like knock through the, the chocolate and then there's like soft ice cream. So whenever you kick a football, the outside is so fucking hard that whenever you do finally get through it, it's almost like at a different time than normal in your swing. So whenever you would normally be hitting it, it'd be wrapping and then going. When it's really cold, it takes a little bit. So it's a little bit, it's just, uh, it's harder to get it to travel as far because of the indentation of the ball to make it explode. I believe personally that's just from personal experience of oh this hurts my foot a lot fucking more yeah. and it's not going as far this is how i feel science might not add up with that but that's what it feels like as you're kicking the ball i mean it definitely makes sense i guess when you explain it like that so By i way, mean it when those conditions too though if i'm if i'm the special teams coach i Yes, I want you to have a successful punt. I want you to bomb that thing. But most important, like, I want you just to catch it and get it off. When yeah. it's freezing cold like that and it's usually windy too, like, just have a clean operation. Just get, just get the ball back to them. Yeah. yeah. With that being said, don't give them a low ball that they can return to the house. There's a lot that goes into it. Bojo's doing his best. Right out of bounds. Just kick that sucker right out of bounds. Yeah, that's easy. And then get 39 yards, and then all of a sudden your field position Point. can't change it. At all. Can't change. If you're in bad field position, though, 39 yard punt isn't going to change field position. Then after the game, oh, why, why do we have such bad? Well, because you told me to kick the ball out of bounds for 40 fucking yards. If you would have let me go ahead and maybe do this. There's a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into it, AJ. Jeez Louise. There is. There is a lot that goes in. I still, okay, then did bomb a 60-yarder out of bounds. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> right. easy. That's the goal every single time. Just like what everybody says, you're, it's what you do. You're paid to make field goals. You're paid to kick it, right? You have one job, dude. <laughs> you have right. one job. You should never miss. In a 15-year career, you should never miss a kick. Hey, Jason Hansen never did, did he? That's right. Nope. Not one. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to a break. We're back on the other side with phone calls from the 5 RNG phone line. Big thanks to everybody that tweeted us. Mm -hmm. Hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact. But uh -huh. We'll be back in four minutes with some phone calls on the 5 RNG phone line, wrapping up this beautiful overreaction Monday, January 3rd, 2022. You're all the best. I hate a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you, is, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any, you, you had to have heard. There's some massive names, 
politicians. I mean, your name has been spoke by a lot of people. There, are you just, because you're like, a, hey, love will cure this thing. How are you not going to hold a grudge everybody? And do you know that you're probably never going to win an MVP again? That's probably never going to happen, right? I think that's, that's a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Legit though, like that. There's a lot of people that vote for that that I think are not faint. Like, do you? How do you isolate that? How do you stay away from that? Because you're talking about everybody on Earth talking about you. That's not getting you down at all. I don't. That's incredible mental toughness, if that's the case. Well, you know what? I think first, if you find your identi identity in yourself, and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others, mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people you can get it from yourself and that's not being selfish that's just learning how to uh in a healthy way love yourself and respect yourself um and believe in yourself and it definitely was tested you know by some of the comments that i that i heard and so i'm human i mean you know stuff can can definitely hurt your feelings but uh look i shared an opinion that is polarizing i get it and I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I, you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways. But so many people, um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I've tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control and there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't and, and, and hate you for things you said, or might not even understand what you said or know what you said. It might just, you know, a headline and that's fine. Um, I, I believe that people are entitled to their opinion. And even if it's an opinion that's unfavorable of me, but I'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh, moving forward. And I'm excited about uh, getting back on the field as soon as possible. Hey, do you know uh, if offense or defense is getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all? Like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? I think it is offense, and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. I hope they show that on, on, on the network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. First hour. We talk. Sports and rock. Yeah. What? With AJ Hawk. Yeah. This is not a mock. Yeah. Of a song that's rock. Yeah. Sports talk. Sports talk and rock with AJ Hawk. Yeah. Mock. Yeah. Hell yeah. AJ Sports and talking on the rock. Yeah. The bone. Yeah. Go on home with AJ. He should have. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Overreaction Monday, January 3rd. Let's get some phone calls on the 5 Hour Energy phone line, shall we, AJ? Yeah, let's do it. Go to 5hourenergy.com, use promo code McAfee to receive 10% off your order of any of the 15 flavors that are absolutely delightful that get you from A to B. B being energized for at least five hours. Hell yeah. You know, cherry's always been good. The berry's always been good. Oh, right? yeah. Watermelon. Watermelon. Why? Oh, yeah, tropical oh, berry, yeah. too. Why? Did that get What's the original flavor? Like the first one that came out? It tastes like poop. Yeah. That, that's I why like I, it. I like the original, isn't it? What is it now? I, I think you can still get the poop flavored one, but there's uh, 14 other flavors that's yeah. good. Good well, the flavor. The poop one's all right. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I used to have to drink the original because I loved what the 500 Energy did for me energy wise. I didn't feel like I had a crash. They said, hey, listen, we got the right idea with the right recipe, with the right energy. We just got to change this flavor a little bit because the aftertaste, everybody's saying they can't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So they went to the lab, same type of energy and recipe and no crash and everything like that. 
great flavors, great aftertaste. And that's what we're here to tell you about. You don't need to taste the poop tasting one that was the experimental one that did a great job. There's actually 14 other flavors that are delightful and also will get you there. Shout out to Five Hour Energy Evolve. Shout out. Thank, Thank you, Five Hour. They are delicious. They are absolutely delicious. Uh, let's go to Omar in New Jersey. Omar, what's going on? You see AB anywhere around there? How about Danny Boy Hustle Hard? Hey, yo, this is so sick. How we doing? Hey, not as good as you, Omar. You you sound like you're living your best life, dude. Yeah, it's my birthday today, so I'm really happy. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, Elmore. Thank you, Elmore. Thank you, Elmore. No, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about the uh, Zach Wilson. He's improving every week, it seems like. I just wanted to get your guys' take on it. Omar, yesterday. Omar, Omar, Great. Omar. Happy birthday. We can't fucking talk about that. They lost again. Mm -hmm. All right? Happy birthday. Happy Zach birthday. does look good. Him play. and Bob have a hug. You know, yeah. they had a lead over the yeah. champs. There's a lot to be proud of over there. Not as much as the Giants organization. They got a lot more to be proud of. That's right. That ain't no clown show organization, all right? There's guys calling. They want to come back. Now, they did do push-ups and pads, and they've lost sure. every game and yep. everything like that. But Joe Judge says the process is vital, and we're in the middle of that whole thing right now, AJ. So if you're a Jets fan, you should be a little bit worried that there ain't no clown show uh, sharing the stadium. But you aren't a clown show either, AJ. You're not. Was was Joe Judge taking a shot at Ron Rivera when he said we're not? We don't have guys fighting on the sidelines. I believe, yeah, in mm -hmm. everything else that potentially hey, we ain't got guys fucking quitting in the middle of games. <laughs> All right, we ain't got guys throwing punches Is at he, each other. Where's he from? Who, Joe? Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. He's, okay. Yeah. I I I felt that. Yeah, you could tell Philly. Yeah. In his, like in in his accent, how his tone it felt. I'm like, okay, it's a Philly guy. Well, he ain't saying clown show. Yeah, yeah. saying that fucking clown show. <laughs> it's from Delco, dude. Got him play around. He's been having so many Delisandros his entire oh, life. Oh yeah, long time. I wonder if he hates being a head coach at this point. I got to get up here, do this entire song and dance, let people know why we don't stink when we only have negative ten yards passing. I don't know. Today. Guys are calling to get back to the Giants, though. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's like the people that tweet about their eight-year-old kids saying they're doing something. Oh right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> My eight-year-old son say he won't let me listen to the Pat McAfee show anymore because misinformation comes from the program. Well, fuck your eight-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hell yeah. To hell with you as well. <laughs> AJ, Overreaction Monday's wrapping up here on Sirius. Anything to say to the listeners? No, I think Mad Dog's going to have a great Overreaction Monday, though. I agree. His show will be better than ours. See you tomorrow. Hey, Pat. Yeah, AJ. Can you hear me? Uh, Is this just between us? Do people ever come up to you, though, and point to their like, their eight-year-old shoe and be like, look at that, size 14, kid's only eight years old. <laughs> that happens in Ohio. Like, oh, what the kid, fuck? Your eight-year-old has bigger feet than me. I don't know why you want your kid to have big old, dumb, heavy feet that can't move. Like, Whoa. why would you brag six, about seven. that? A lot of people brag about it. That kid's going to be six, seven, six, eight. Not, yeah. Don't Is worry he, about Oh, his growth plate hasn't closed. Doctors told me. Yeah, don't don't worry about the lack of function with those big-ass fucking clod hoppers on your ankles. No. <laughs> Think about what the growth could become. You know, that's why they're saying that. They, yeah. You know, look well, at Well, then these. all of a sudden, so, hey, don't go down there and try to say, oh, really? This shoe, you wear size 14, you go down there, and there's 14 inches of space where the kid's foot doesn't take up the shoe because they... Pete, for some reason, dads especially love to put their kids in shoes that are way too big so they can talk about how big their kids' shoes are. Well, and also you got shoes for the next three, four years. That's right. Yeah. You know, I understand got, that. Yeah, bro, believe me, my, my eight-year-old, he's wearing shoes right now that look way too big. Because I'm like, God, I'm like, all right, well, you got to wear these suckers for three years now, bud. I, I did not know this was the thing that happened among – you got to remember, I'm not around a lot of kids, you know, because fuck them. But, like, I do know that you are around a lot of children. Is that something that happens on a regular basis? Because I assume it's just like when you, look at, you look at a puppy. When you look at a puppy and you see oh, big old paws. paws, you're like, oh, yep. shit. Look at the paws on this dog. Mm -hmm. So that's what people talk about their kids like, too? Oh, look at the yeah, shoes. Yeah, but it would be like – this is the, it's not equi it's not the equivalent though. Yeah, you can look at a puppy. I, we like German shepherds. They have big old paws. Like this dude's gonna be big, but let's say you strapped on four little booties on that dog that were fifteen sizes too big, and then you say, "Hey, look at this guy's paws." That's <laughs> hey, what it, that's what they're doing. Hey AJ, look at the size of my kid's feet. Imagine what I'm packing. Okay, yeah, well, that's, everybody might... wants their kid to grow up to be Pete Davidson. You know, yeah, exactly. Well, or. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Come on. Well, they point. might be trying to alpha you, and I'm not sure how Pete ties into this with his dick. I no, guess. they think it's. They think I'm be. I'm going to be impressed. Like this kid's going to be huge when I know the shoes are six sizes too big. I did not know that was an epidemic of around Ohio. That kids were wearing shoes that were too big just so that their parents can say that they're wearing bigger shoes. That sounds to be completely against all common sense. But hey, Ohio and ah. humans as, as a whole. That's right. And humans as a whole. My um. You know, I think I grew at a natural rate. You know, I was never like the biggest guy in the class. Now, granted, I was young for my class. There were some kids, though, that peaked in, what, seventh grade. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. They were yeah. awesome Didn't in seventh grade. Mustache. They got mustaches killing dudes in seventh grade. Hey, they had so much confidence, too, played yeah. sports or whatever. Uh -huh. And then, lo and behold, about a year and a half later, oh, are you the same size still? Oh. Interesting. Oh, you little yeah. fucking bitch all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh, that's tough. You still got the same confidence you had in seventh grade. That should die down soon, shouldn't it? Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. that's a th Hey, one or two of those guys, like in sixth, seventh grade, they could wreck your whole team. And then fast forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody caught up. Yeah. We're taller than you now, you little punk ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I usually felt bad for him once they got in high school. Nah, nah, don't feel bad for him. They had their time. Yeah, they had yeah their I don't time. think you felt bad for anybody. This guy had piranhas and was headhunting Kirk Herbstreit. Yeah. That's right. You didn't <laughs> feel bad for anybody. You just spoke how you thought people were supposed to speak there. Way to go. Hey, way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. You're so nice, dude. You're such a good guy. Some of those dudes that grew fast and had a mustache in seventh grade, they were good dudes. They weren't arrogant and cocky. So Phil, Phil had a mustache and a beard in like fourth or fifth grade. But he, he grew, though, like alongside of us. Really? Yeah, it wasn't like he, he didn't have a full beard and was bigger than everybody and then stayed the same size. He, he was bigger than us, and then he still continued to grow, but it wasn't like a... Uh, Exponential. Yeah, it wasn't like you just... I remember got, the first time I saw Diggs in high school. I thought he was a narc. Yeah, he did look like a 50-year-old. These <laughs> Italians, you know what I mean? Some of these Italians. Like Channing Tatum? <laughs> yeah, well... I have, I have pictures that prove 21 Jump Street or whatever? Oh, oh yeah. I thought you looked good I in high school. I thought didn't look old. I can tell you that. Beard. I didn't have a beard. He had a good beard and an excellent mustache. What's this all about? He's confused. In high school? Else. There's some other Italian. What? You know, it's Vanilla Fuego, dude. <laughs> all right. What's that about? No, it's going to be my rap name. I'm releasing a rap song within the next two months. Let's go. So, yeah, no, we'll do it in the off season. We'll do it in the off season. Vanilla Fuego, dude. <laughs> okay. Well, you want to you be on? You wanna, you wanna, is AB featuring on it? Maybe. Oh, yeah, he could. The Dame Dollar. Dude. Just yeah. got back from the NY. Met my boy, Danny Boy. What's Danny Boy doing right now? Box. He's probably getting canceled. Box if uh, we Danny had to fly. guess. Right around I'll now. tell you what, we looked into Danny Boy a little bit last night. Do drivers get canceled? Hey, run this clip here real quick on Danny Boy. Do we have this clip or just a screenshot? Oh, viral out here. is nothing short but viral. Okay. Hey, Bizzle, talk to him, Cheech. Come on, baby. Man, listen, this is going to make my Netflix You know what time it is. So he says Netflix, Netflix series. series. Yeah. Very yep. clearly yeah. there. Wow. On my phone last night while I was listening to that, I couldn't hear it as much. Now that we got it into a thing, wow. run that back one more again. Go viral out here. It's nothing short but viral. Hey, Bizzle, talk to him, Cheech. Come on, baby. Man, listen, this is going to make my Netflix You know what time it is. Oh, go higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah go higher. Yeah. Hey, Danny Boy, we appreciate you, dude. Boy, Danny How Boy. Can he drive when he's that high, though? What do you do? What look you at Danny. Look at Danny Boy's eyes. As that. somebody who gets blamed as being high all the time, okay, maybe that's just how his eyes sit. You ever think? Uh, does anybody ever think about that with me when they see me? I always get, oh, look at this guy in this photo. He's fucking don't, blazed don't, out of his mind. Yeah, it's like, not. no, actually, I'm, I, what, that's how my eyes look. What are we even? You're not a professional driver. This guy, for a living, is picking up people and putting you know, their lives in his hands, and he can barely open his eyes in that video. Well, from what the Pompliano <laughs> said, yeah. Pompliano said it's not about his eyes, it's about his feel. That's yeah, right. well, he can't even see red lights is what the Pomplianos were saying. That does actually get you there half the time, uh -huh. though. Yeah, he said knock out 50% of the time in Manhattan traffic. That's uh -huh. amazing. We've been in so much New York traffic. Could you imagine we had Danny Boy? Oh, we would have vomited dude. all oh, over wow. the city. I don't know, though, because it sounds like he's not stopping and starting. Yeah. Once he gets he's going, going hey, yeah. you, it's up to you to get out of Danny Boy Hustle Hearts way. <laughs> Do you think Danny was watching on his phone while he was driving around the city and he saw AB taking yeah. his shit pads off? He's like, I got a beeline to the yes. stadium. Yep. Met life. Cheeks needs me. He might have Cheeks even tried, got the heads up from AB, like, hey, Cheeks I'm going to put on a show quarter. today. I'm going to be outside of the stadium. Yeah. <laughs>
full bag. Mm-hmm. Is he, yeah. yeah, is he still in New York? Like, honestly, or did he go? He's in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Went yes. directly to the studio. I'm telling left. you, when Lev was with the was... Jets, this was Lev's driver. Lev set this entire thing up. Lev said he uh, he commented on AB's oh, thing and said he loves him. Yeah, yeah. Still a goat. Yeah. yeah. Lev says he. Sorry, I told you to do this. Well, listen, if you need a ride around New York, I think you are going to opt for the guy that takes 50% of the time as everybody else. Oh. I, I get sick every car ride in New York. Oh, every so single nice. one. Never. Because I don't do a lot of Ubering. Yeah. I do a lot of my own driving. I even get like rental cars everywhere I go, basically. I like to, because I think I do get so car sick mm-hmm. in other people. New York. By the time we get to wherever I'm supposed to go speak into a microphone for, for two hours or whatever, I am feeling worse than I've ever felt in my entire life. About to puke. Have to chug three, four waters, which makes me then have to, what, piss. Mm -hmm. Then I'm coming back down to earth. It's always an entire scene over there. Danny Boy's the answer, I think. I think Danny Boy is the answer, and that's what AB uh, found out yesterday. Well, you look at his clientele. I mean, he is... Everybody. Mano. Saquon, Sterling Shepard, OBJ when he was really? a giant, oh, Antonio yeah. Brown. Does he post videos with all of them? Oh yeah, yeah. he posts a lot. Tell him cheeks. Yeah, he used the word cheeks, which I appreciate. That's a cheeks good. or cheech. So interesting. He says cheeks. I guess that's how he spells it out. Like, hey, what up, cheeks? And I don't know if that's a Brooklyn thing. I, I think oh. he's from Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn, yeah, or the Bronx. I think so. It's one. Of, he is through and through one of the uh, the boroughs. He says cheeks. I've never heard that before. I feel like I've, I, a lot of cuz, right? New York's a lot of cuz from what I've heard. I never heard cheeks before. Big fan of it. But I did start thinking I'm going to start calling everybody Cheech. I mean, hey, what up, Cheech? I think that's going to yeah. become my thing. Yeah, you should. Why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. People blame me for being high all the time anyways. What? What? Maybe, maybe I am. I what? Know. Probably not. What? These are how my eyes always are. What? I got allergies. What? I laugh a lot. What? 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 I seem to be disinterested in this particular conversation that you're having with me right now. What? It's not because I'm high. <laughs> what? It's because you stink. What? what? What's up, Cheech? What? what? But then we, uh, Urban Dictionary, Cheech, yeah. not good. No. Nah. 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 It's called a stupid uh, client. Yeah, like Italian, Cheech is the same thing. Really? Wait, what is it? What's the Urban Dictionary definition? Like an idiot. Basically, yeah. Cheech's clown. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I just assumed so. I've been called Cheech before, and it's just, just because Cheech and Sean. Uh, because I looked high at the time. Uh-huh. Yeah. For instance, what's that band's name? First uh, time I heard it, Kings of Leon. Yeah, Kings uh-huh. of Leon. I was invited to a concert. I did not know which one, and I was like, absolutely. And I was just at my house in Indianapolis, had nothing going on, and I had just maybe taken a trip to the moon or two. And I'm asked, hey, we'll come pick you up. We're going to blah blah blah. You want to go? Absolutely, I'll come along. I hop in the back. All right, I'm going to a concert. This is awesome. Then we just walk right into their uh, green, green room, room or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's the uh, sex is on fire, dudes. Yeah. Fucking, I know. I'm like, holy shit. I'm the, gonna... father, the Father Wills, right? Isn't that their name? Huh? What? Father Will? Their There's last like name? Two yeah. Of, they're, they're related. Yeah. I think it's two brothers and a cousin or something. I, I forget how it is. But as soon as I walk in there, drummer, hilarious human. Hilarious. They, they're big time Oklahoma fan. Hilarious human. I think his name is Nate. Oh, I might have got that wrong. I haven't talked to him in a while. But he literally looks at me while I'm standing in the corner. I did not expect to be where I was, obviously. And he goes, what's up, Cheech? And I'm like... You're right, yeah. <laughs> so then, then, we had a, uh, then we had a full conversation. Then they played, we played ping pong against each other. Ooh. And it turns out when I am in that state of mind, ping pong only gets better. Ping pong only gets better, but they love ping pong. They're great ping pong players. I never heard of it. He called me Cheech, though, and I was like, that's a pretty cool nickname. And then I forgot about it. And then now here I'm back here, and Danny Boy called people Cheeks. And I'm like, I should call people Cheeks. Yeah, that's a good nickname. What's up, Cheech? Hey, but up, quickly, going back to that story, I thought you were going to get to the didn't you make one of those guys fall off the wagon that had been sober for a while? Well, that was after the concert. AJ. That was after the concert. Oh, okay. I thought, yeah, my bad. What? He wasn't off the wagon, but I guess it was close. I mean, well, how the fuck was I supposed to know? You know, what was I supposed to do? We go to a place afterwards. Once again, I shouldn't have been invited, but I was there because the people I was with were invited. So I'm just riding along, have this entire place rented out. I go downstairs. Holy shit, this is awesome. How are we doing? Keep it moving. So my move at that particular time was... I'll buy shot for everybody in here. I'd right. like say thank you to everybody. Let's have a good night here. Let's embrace each other. Boom, boom, boom. That caused the whole, I didn't know at the time, but, you know, I mean, that's how it ended up in an article, actually. Wow. There was one night in Indianapolis when there was a chance of blah, blah, blah. They still survived. Got yeah. along. They said no. They Their de- discipline was tested. I didn't know that. I ended up taking like eight shots, okay, because there was sure. a lot mm-hmm. left. I mean, that ain't. How come I'm not heralded as the hero in that entire thing? Yeah, that's not your responsibility. You could never know. 
you kidding me? Oh, rock stars. I thought we were doing this. Yeah. Well, this hey, is your life. Hey. This is my first rock star party, yeah. dude. They were so cool. <laughs> they were so cool. They really were. Like, they were a cool group. Still of doing it. Still There's an cool. awesome documentary on those guys I saw. Really? It's it's not. Uh, they were definitely drinking hard in the documentary, but they go home to where they're from. It's really cool <laughs> to see. I think that is where that maybe I did see that doc, and that was why I did a yeah. Yep. Here we go, huh? Are you in the doc? <laughs> I think people would have let us know by now. <laughs> maybe yeah. No, it was post doc. Okay. I just assume we're all getting fucked up. We're at a bar. Yeah. It's a bunch yeah. of rock stars. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Indiana. But they were very nice. Incredible group, still incredibly talented. I don't know what they got going on now, but sex is still on fire. Yeah, they're making. Yeah. You know, there's some breaking news. It sounds like my ears popping in my right side. You no, no, it was just a uh, video. I was trying to like. Uh, it came in our group chat. They be talking to uh, about Big Ben and stuff like. I don't know if you wanted to watch. Live, it. like current. Uh, it was a cameo, I believe. Nick watched it. It's a it's a cameo. It's from relatively recent, let's, as of today, at least. All right, let's get into this because this will get into our last conversation. I know you sad about Ben Roethlisberger retiring, but it's not over for Ben yet. I know everyone's wondering, is it his last game in Pittsburgh tonight? And would it end like this? But it may not end like this. I know Ben, he's a competitor. He loved to play football. One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And I just don't see him hanging it up. So, Patrick, you and all other Steelers fans who are looking to think Big Ben is playing his last game in Huntsville. I wouldn't tip my hat on that yet. I wouldn't bet on that yet because Big Ben has a lot of football yet left. And he didn't say that his career was over. He didn't say that it was his last game in Huntsville. It looks hard. So we can't speculate and recollate upon okay. him not playing anymore. So let's be positive. Let's cheer him on. Let's wish for one of his best games tonight. And let's keep Ben is booming. Patrick. I know you're a huge Steelers fan, and you love Pittsburgh, and you love football. So let's keep Ben Ben in our warm prayers and hopes and wish him luck tonight. Boom, man. It's cold. Thank you, AB. Was that for me? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you ordered yeah. a cameo for I didn't. Zito, did you Hey, for real. Z, try to order one. I'll pay for it. Yeah, me too. Did All you right. just order one? Was that for us? Did you order that, or was that another Patrick? That was another Patrick. Okay, well, shout out to that, Patrick. <laughs> uh, and shout How to much did he get for it? What is Cameo's going rate for AB? What is AB's going Cameo rate? We'll have to figure that out, find that out. But it's nice to hear, huh? Mm -hmm. He still loves Big Ben because there was a little conversation at the end of that whole thing. He was, uh, Is he in Danny Boy Hustlehard's car there? It looked, <laughs> might have been. <laughs> it looked like it. We would like to ask about that. That doesn't look like uh, Tampa. No, that's New York. No, yeah. I know. He's in the concrete jungle. How much? I 300. I we'll take Steelers, 10 of us. I thought the Steelers were going to potentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can AB play tonight? <laughs> For the Steelers, one last time. See, Good. this is what AB's got to do. He's back baby face again in Pittsburgh. Yeah. It's easy yep. as that. Suit him up. Don't tip your hat yet to it. Well, let's not recollect. <laughs> did he but, call him Rothberger? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's, that's what he called him. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you were talking about Big Better. There was some other Rothberger on the team that <laughs> didn't say that it was his last <laughs> Third string tight ends. I like that he's putting in work, though. I mean, he's doing cameos right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For 300 <laughs> do you, bucks, do you? too. Oh, what you say? <laughs> like, do you really? You like it? You think that's a good idea? I respect that he's doing it. He, listen, he had the biggest platform on earth yesterday. Went viral 10 times over. Uh -huh. Now yeah. he's releasing an album or a song and doing cameos. I mean, this is right out of a playbook of like, you know, uh, like a TMZ famous person type playbook here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this is the time Scandal. to strike. You know? This is, he's out there. He's very Social. relevant right now. He has, he has time to really capitalize now. So you get on that. Uh, how do we give it a week? Have give it a week or two. We'll see. You know, part two of Tiana Trump smooching his tootsie roll. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make its way onto you know the circuit, and people will be doing the same thing. Is this guy crazy? Is he gone now? And just, he knows what he's doing. I think AB knows everything. He's. I think he's got this all figured out. Then you out. see Brooks. Brooks Kepka. His tweet. He said, "What I I expect AB to fight one of the Paul brothers within the next year." Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, AB probably wins that fight too. By the way, we saw his precision on uh -huh. that. It looks good. Uh, oh yeah. You saw that precision at training camp. Now yeah. this would be a great fight. I think I would want to watch Jake Paul and Antonio Brown. It has sure. to be MMA though, too, because he's going to the MMA. No, we don't know if that's true because Dana came back and said that's not what I said, idiot. Mm -hmm. That's right. Basically, what Dana yeah. said. Yeah. 
I, I like that Jake Paul and Dana, real beef, actual beef yeah. happening in the world that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. I enjoy. Why don't they just box each other? Dana says he's too old. Isn't Dana a boxer, though? Oh, yeah. yeah he, I mean, he's always on that machine that he sent here. Is that what Jake wants? Jake wants to box Dana? Is that D Jake would like to fight Dana, you think? I think, Jake, I think Dana was number five on Jake's list that he put out. Yeah, when he had that list on that whiteboard next to him. Dana. Dana was on there. If you think you can do it, do it. If you want to pay, you have all the answers. He said, do it. What an answer. What a response from Dana. It's easy. And Jake Paul, by the way, changing the game completely. Every game, by the way, that he plays, he changes, it seems like. And everybody hates him, I guess. He comes on this show. Hey, AJ, he comes on this show. The things people say. Oh, they Pretty positive guess. response from the fans. You know, he does numbers. Everything he does does numbers. And it's everybody just hate watching him. I is that what so. it is? Yeah. People just hate his guts. Yeah, I forgot who said it. Everyone just, want, I think it was Sugar Sean here. Everyone wants to just see him get knocked out. This is out. Floyd Mayweather, right? Floyd Mayweather, same thing. Yeah. For a long time, Floyd Mayweather, everybody just want to see him get knocked out. But Jake, you know, he innovates so much, and I think he is a good businessman. I think he's a mm -hmm. really, really strategic businessman. I'll be excited to see what he does next. He'll turn babyface at some point. But every time he comes on here, boy, the things that are said to me, you know, the whole, as opposed to letting Aaron you know, without being challenged, come on. Those people are come after me as well. The Jake Paul haters, they come in abundance as well. They're like, why do you even let this guy fucking talk on your show? I'm like, yeah, hey, he's well, fighting somebody. That's what he wants, man. He wants you to feel one way or the other about him. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you know. It's, it's how he made somebody feel. That is confusing. It seems a lot is of it? people only feel one way about him. You let, uh, you let the Bugle Boys talk on the show. Well, I wouldn't fucking. Yeah. Are you guys the Bugle Boys? Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, Tony's remember? not, you know. Who said that? Not a bugle boy. What do you mean? Tony's not a bugle you just boy. Yeah. You're, not, you're not a bugle boy. Yeah. The way you used it. Let's used get into the night's game. Jake Paul said he wants to play safety in the NFL as well after this boxing thing. Oh, nice. Good luck. Okay. He said you got to fly around and hit somebody. He said he's willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Check, check. Those are two boxes. There's a couple others, I think. <laughs> but that, that is two boxes. I. Imagine he went to the XFL, though, and just fucking oh, flew around. Awesome. He said he'd bring hella ratings. I agree. The XFL, if he was to kill somebody. The NFL, I don't know. It's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tall task. I hope he does. There's basketball players that made a transition. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Jake Paul, you know, couldn't potentially go in there. Safety. Did Jake play in high school? Yeah. He said he played football his whole life. Okay. He's from Ohio. His brother was a, was a pretty good wrestler in high school. Jake was. Well, I thought Jake was as well, wasn't he? Logan was a good wrestler. Oh, Jake wasn't? I don't know if Jake wrestled or not. I don't I just I saw oh. Logan stuff. Well Jake was on Disney. He was probably making money at yeah. that. Yeah. Bizarre Vark. That was a show he was on. What's it called? Bizarre Vark. Really? I didn't know that was the show. I thought he was on like uh I didn't he ended know. Up leaving it after, you know, remember he had a weird exit from the show. Whatever happened. I did not know any of it. No, I knew yeah. he came from the Disney world. I didn't watch, obviously. Come on. Yeah. I didn't watch Disney. I mean, you're, you're not watching anything good. We know that. Well, what? Other than the wow. Alpinist, that was very good. Thank you for uh, telling me. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like every time I give a recommendation upon the show here, yeah. and I get rave reviews. Am I the new Siskel or Ebert? I don't mm, know. Perhaps. You tell me. Who has time to watch all these shows? Not I. I did not grow up watching any Disney movies or the Disney Channel. That is why I did not know. of All I know of is uh, Jake shutting down Vine. Taking over everything, mm -hmm. making money, changing the game. Now he, he has a mega mansion in Miami and in Puerto Rico and doing his own thing. He'll be just fine, I think. Yeah, I think so. He'll be okay. I think he's going to do good. Um, Hang out with Drake on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And Mike Tyson. Yeah. yeah. He's living. <laughs> By the way, Champagne Poppy, when's he coming on the show? I don't know. Well, hopefully soon. Yeah. yeah. You think he, he won't collab with Vanilla Fuego? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know, Vanilla Fuego? You could definitely get him on the show. The Poppy? Yeah, I think you can. I don't think so. Maybe Tell him you know Ariel. Oh, yeah, he does love Ariel. Mm -hmm. Ariel Hawani's back today, I think. Right now, he's doing the MMA Awards. Really? Right? really? Hey, by the way, Foxy kept Ariel off the year-end recap. Wow. Oh, there was Yikes. a miss. I know I was going to miss someone. Yeah, we did have a full conversation of yep. what's going to happen. Oh, we might miss somebody for the whole thing. Oh, no, we do apologize, no. Ariel. We had not... Had you on in some bit, and he hasn't been doing his show. We didn't even know. Forgot about it. That's on us. Or it's because he buried Foxy. Zito, Foxy, right. and everybody yeah. behind the scenes for the with you. Remember, he said, well, we don't know if it was on his side or on our side. Well, then you're ipso facto saying that it was probably these guys. Yeah. yeah. And then when those guys were editing a video, 
I mean, there's a chance. But I don't think that was the case. I think we honestly just forgot. We love Ariel. Had Ariel on yeah. our biggest show yeah. immediately following that's right. our biggest show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's on me. I'm sure I missed others as well, and I apologize to all of them as well. She put Tomlin on there? Yeah, Tomlin's in okay. there. Tomlin was on there. Drinks the McAfee Kool-Aid. About yeah. Jerry Rice. That, that, was, that wasn't this year. year. That wasn't this year, this dude. Year. This is 2020. Well, last year. Hey, you know what Cole, else about I didn't get Cole on Beasley. there? This is going to surprise you guys. I didn't get us doing a single what uh, thing in the whole video. How do you miss that? I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. Fuck. I thought about it. What? Oh. Fuck. So what? Ariel's all upset that we miss Ariel, but uh, literally one of the backbones of our show isn't yeah. in there. We have no idea, Ariel. We apologize. Yeah. Why? 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 I mean, should we even do it anymore? Foxy's Take the video even... down, Foxy. I mean, do you even want to work? Jesus Christ. Take it down. <laughs> do you want to be here, Foxy? Foxy, you care? <laughs> Good Lord. Well, if we do it right now, it'll be the next year's one, so. Probably I not. doubt it. <laughs> There's no way it makes it to December. I don't no. know this guy well, There's help. no way it makes it to December of uh, this upcoming. It, it's dead forever. Yep. Son of a bitch, Fox. Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't start that thing up for us to do for you not to remember. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. I don't think it's going anywhere. What? 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 <laughs> What's going on any of your videos? Damn it. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, one more phone call. Let's go to uh, Naomi in San Diego. Naomi, what's going on? Hey, Pat and boys. Um, welcome back, Boston Connor. Hi, AJ. Hey. Oh, um, nice. I just um, wanted to say, what about those Chargers yesterday? They looked fantastic. Justin Herbert looked amazing. Do you guys think the Chargers are not looking like the way that they did when they kind of toward the middle of the year when they played Pittsburgh and beat them. What happened there? uh, Played Cincinnati. Is it Naomi, Naomi? It's Naomi. Naomi, quick question. How come they play good and then they don't play good? Then they play good, then they don't play good. What the hell's going on? I saw Staley kick a field goal yesterday, 19 yards, which is not in his MO at all. Did somebody tell him, hey, three points is more than zero points, just like six points is more than three points. What What is your takeaway there, Naomi? I mean, I think that's just, I, sometimes I think that's the nature of football. Right oh. now, I think, you know, we're getting our team back. We had that big COVID nightmare and a couple of injuries, and we're starting to get everybody back, and people are getting in the rhythm. Austin Eckler's in his rhythm. Keenan Allen's in his rhythm. Jesse, Joe Sosa's in his rhythm. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I, Justin Herbert's in his rhythm. What? Right. All right. She had a hell of a run. Yeah. yeah. So... The Chargers play the Raiders for the last spot in the playoffs. It's mm-hmm. classic win and you're in, lose, and go fish. Oh. You know what I mean? Who wants to take another step as a program in the AFC West? Will it be the Chargers or the Raiders? Could be the Chargers. Chargers, it would make sense if the Chargers did. But also, this Raiders team just came into Indianapolis and knocked off an MVP candidate and a squad there. So who knows? What a great matchup to have here in Week 18. Fun fact, if the Colts lose to the Jaguars, the Chargers and Raiders, if they tie, they're both in. So they could just kneel it out the entire game. Ooh. Oh, especially because they're in the same division. They play each other a lot. They know each other. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's both get in. Let's both get in. It's good for the AFC best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let's go ahead and do this thing. Or the Colts aren't going to lose to the Jags, and let's not even think about that. Okay? Enough with the scenarios. That scenario. can't happen, right? Like, there's no chance the Jags beat the Colts. Enough right? with the scenarios, please. Uh, we don't even need to put that in there. No, no, no. No chance that happens. Jonathan Taylor's going to run for 250. There's no way. Yeah, they won't have. Yeah. No chance. If the Colts they do, Colts will the Steelers fun. will be in. Where is the game? It's in, it's in Jackson. 2014. Uh-oh. It's hot down there. What? Oh, oh no. no. Whoa. 2014 what? Last time Colts won in Jacksonville. Oh, oh no. no. I was there. And it's their Super Bowl. Oh, no. You know their oh. Super Bowl was at the Chop House after the Cincy game. <laughs> that was Urban Super Bowl. Two fingers in. We ain't going to lose to the Jags. So all these little dream scenarios are out the fucking window. I oh, thought yeah. I heard Bob Stoops was coming in to coach the last game like he did at Oklahoma. <laughs> How about when he yeah. took his visor off and put it on yeah. Venable's head? Yeah. Yeah. Passing of That's the visor. Awesome. That was sweet. <laughs> that was awesome. Give me your hat. That was really cool. Hey, Venable's is awesome. I don't know if you know much about him. He's awesome. He'll be a good character there. The defense, right? Defensive coach? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of coordinator for a while. He's really good. Getting paid a ton of money to be the DC because he had a lot of head coaching opportunities. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they paid him to keep him around. Now Dabo's like, fuck it, our team stinks. I ain't even got to do a drip anymore. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to travel around the NFL coach. It is crazy how, far, how fast. What they they went ten and three, I believe, Clemson. But it was like, just the fact that they weren't—they're not in the playoffs—is weird to see. 
They well, completely fell off. Well, therein lies the problem. Does it matter if you're not in the playoffs then? And then should all those players not play if they have the future because they're not in the playoff? And then the the carousel and the merry-go-round just, you know, you know what I mean? It's the same thing with Ohio State. Like, they won the Rose Bowl, but no one really cares because they didn't go to the college football playoff. Yeah. Well, the Rose Bowl is better than losing the Rose granddaddy Bowl. Granddaddy of yeah. them all. Yeah. That was a great game. A wise man once said, the sinner stay still while the merry-go-round, the merry-go-round, the merry-go-round. Mm-hmm. And that's life, isn't it? It is. What? <laughs> you heard it. That is life. Think about it. Well, All like the Rose Bowl okay. doesn't matter. Like the Rose Bowl, did it matter? It's the Rose Bowl, so it matters. But it's not yeah. a college football playoff, so it doesn't matter. You know, and then like that's the whole conversation piece now. And it's just a circle of a conversation about who gives a fuck. That guy goes for 300 yeah. and some. Yeah. I mean, that's – I watch that game on, a, on an iPhone, you know, <laughs> via Hulu like this. Probably the best bowl game that's happened in it's years. Yeah. I mean, absolutely amazing. Yeah. With a program, you know, that I have grown fond of, a cult that I have participated in, a team in a state that is represented by four letters, OH. No, I texted you back. I did get one on Saturday night. Nice. nice. Here we go. I got you. It was a good win. There was a lot of great plays in that game. It was yeah. good for the program. It was good for great the program. Fantastic. It was great. I told you, it's a momentum for the program. It's how it works. Take I'm it into on, the offseason. I'm watching on a screen this big. Right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, they're going to win. Oh, the kicker just made a kick and then basically gave a suck it sign to a guy. Mm. I love that program. I thought there. they were going to give him a, a taunting call. Doesn't matter, right? Did the time not expire? Well, no, that's – okay, let me ask you this. Am I, is something wrong? They called timeout with 12 seconds to go, I believe, was... to kick their field goal. And I was like, wait, what are you doing? Don't – why are you what giving down them was a it? chance? What down was it? Second down or something. Okay, so you – you do it. You used to do it. the old school thing on second down. You do it. They didn't have another timeout though. If he bobbled it and went down, they didn't have another timeout. Yeah, but what you're supposed to do is, hey, if it's not a clean operation, you stand up, you throw it at the feet of the tight end. Okay. So then you can get another because the tight end's right in front of you. So if it's not a clean operation, just throw that thing right into the ground. We have another play. We have a little bit more time. That is the old school theory on it. Old school. Now it seems as if that has been kind of pushed along. Like, hey, this go down to three seconds. Go down to four seconds. Let's run this. Hey, clock quickly out. though, what's the rule in college? If I if my knee is down and I bobble the snap and I just throw it at the dude, am I down because my mm. knee is down, or is it a different rule for the? Yeah, whole? I think college it's uh, the same as the NFL when it comes to that particular standpoint because I've seen plays run the option, kickers, uh, holders, yeah. and kickers run the option. You know. Yeah, I it just I thought it was crazy to give the other team a chance. Kick the, they kicked it. I kicked a nice full kickoff to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they had already returned one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, returnable. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I didn't see, see. I didn't. I saw the kick, the wave, and then I had to go call Madcap Drew McIntyre. Right. Oh, good match. You know what I mean? Oh, nice. <laughs> I called 24 minutes of that pay per view, and then that was it. What a that night. was it? Yeah, because Roman tested positive for COVID day of. So Roman Brock ended up getting canceled, and then Brock goes to the fatal four way match for the Raw Championship, makes it a fatal five way match because Brock won a championship match. Mm -hmm. He wasn't happy that Uncle COVID took out Roman Reigns on day one of the 2022 year. Mm -hmm. So all our matches were the first two, and then we're off program the rest of the time. <laughs> we're off program. So did you go home? Well, I had to support the team, I had to watch the show, obviously, and then immediately afterwards went home. But okay. Yeah. We'll jot it down as a night in which I said to myself, yeah, accomplished a lot. You did a lot. This is good. This mm -hmm. is good, everybody. But we're everybody's battling through the COVID world. You know, everybody's battling through the COVID world. You yeah. got to do what you got to do. A little do. disappointing that, you know, McIntyre only delivered one glamour kick, too. You know? I was not very cocky. McIntyre's got a, a bad neck. I didn't know about Yeah, T's and P's. God damn it. Also, maybe it was calculated. Yeah. Too calculated. It's probably because Madcap, so terrible joke teller, but... A fine technician. Yeah, right? and ring technician. Yeah. The New Day Usos match. It's awesome. Top notch. Top notch. Alley Us happened. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. One and done, dude. One D. Shout out to the Dudley boys. A little three D. Shout there. out. And then my night was over, you know, and I was watching bowl games on my phone. Mm hmm. Yeah. Ole Where Miss were you? Baylor. Atlanta. Atlanta, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. In their basketball arena? Yeah. Atlanta has a State Farm Arena. Atlanta has such an interesting thing. They have this underbelly that's a bunch of parking lots. It's actually streets, too. So they send you through, like, the streets that seem to be alleys or basements, and you're driving through parking lots, and then your, your Google is actually telling you, make a left at the next 
gravel pit basically mm -hmm. and then you turn and you're underneath basically where all the highways are it's an interesting city to kind of get through quickly though you can get through pretty efficiently i think yeah and they built that new football stadium and they tried to do like the jerry world patriots place thing or whatever with that other little area with a bunch of uh like restaurants and stuff and different places you can go it's pretty sweet because for the super bowl when we were there i think that's where they put radio row actually what was it the mercedes-benz stadium right yeah yeah that's well, what it is now. they had a walkway over to the mercedes-benz oh, stadium yeah. it was supposed to cost something and it cost like 15 16 the price, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah whatever it was supposed to be and then the mayor got uh like i think fraud charges yeah, against them mm -hmm. <laughs> it's awesome Atlanta's always up because they want to add mm -hmm. lights into it. Right. I stopped. It, it was yeah. like a bunch of things. Like they added windows and then added lights. I stopped at a Waffle House on the way out. Oh, oh, what did you get? Can't go wrong. So I got a bacon, egg, and cheese uh, hash thing, which yeah. added yeah. Uh, added thing in That's there. Right. Then I got a waffle. I got a waffle. That looked delicious. I have to. It was pretty good. I did. You know. Oh yeah. Flight home. I'm skipping on the clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, skipping on the clouds. A lot of storms. You know, we had to fly around the storm to get back home. Skipping on the clouds. Da da da. da. Almost lost, wa uh, lost Waffle House a few times. Oh, Almost lost that waffle from Waffle House a few times. But it was interesting. Pull up, order at a window, sit and wait in your car. Then you go pick it up. Then you go. Oh, that's sweet. Pretty efficient. Took me like seven minutes to get my food. Not bad. There you go. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Atlanta, super, super mask, super. Is it? Yeah. Everybody in the arena, basically. As soon as I walked in there, I was like, oh, my God. Okay, so where are? I, I hadn't been in a, you know, I just. It was super, super duper, man. And it might be because of Omicron and everything that's going on. I'm not sure. Different areas, too. Like I've told you, like actual Columbus, downtown Columbus, yeah, fully masked all the time wherever you go inside. And it's not like that everywhere. Yeah. yeah well, if the they're worried house. about Omicron, they can, you know. <laughs> what? I don't know what the chop house is I mean, doing, I have what belt, their protocols so. are. You don't have a you, I do. I have one of these. Your backside. I you got, got my COVID ring. You ain't got one of these. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. never will. Got one of these. I got Do they sell those little guys? <laughs> Do they sell those like in stores? I don't know. You got to earn them. I don't know. I earned this one. <laughs> From who? How'd you earn it? What's that? I beat you COVID. I beat Mine? COVID. And you're, oh, you've had it for the past four, four weeks. Because yeah. I've had a better record on the against the spread picks. Mm. Oh, nice. We'll we see should, what happens tonight. We should do the entire year scores. Yeah. I feel like Going we're back. probably pretty good. Oh, I had like some two and 10 days. Not That's often, early. though. Yeah, not often. Eight, six, and one's pretty good, AJ. What one did we push? Eagles. Uh, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My Falcons came through finally by half a point. Yeah, they did. Hey, that mm. game against the Bills, that snowfall was beautiful. Watching yeah. Josh just run a fucking power, by the way. Because mm -hmm. everybody talks about them not being able to run. And then when you watch them, they're running best whenever they have their freak athlete quarterback running powers behind everybody. He is... He is tough to bring down. And also, he walked in on one. He wasn't even touched or yeah. whatever the case is. That team, I love that Bills team, man. Yeah, I really do love that Bills team. Singletary, too. The running back mm -hmm. had two touchdowns, like 100 yards. But the only thing was Josh Hodge didn't really throw the ball well. Well, there's one Todd uh, early that either got deflected or something. They almost threw a red zone touchdown on fourth down, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it got tipped up, and the Falcons picked it off, yeah, and they scored yeah. before halftime. And yeah. then they like, what are we doing? It's the fucking Falcons. Let's yeah. we'll just run. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are we even doing here? That's I love when there's a little snowfall on the field, though. Yeah, it's football. A little frosted field. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Overreaction Monday is wrapping up right now. We'll be back tomorrow for Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Uh, we announced all the giveaways last week on the graphic. Uh, if you won, you would have already heard from either Zito or Mitt at this point. Mitt will go through all the hashtag Fandle is fantastic winners from yesterday, picking three graphic bets, uh, three bets off the graphic. Uh, can't wait to find out who won that. It was going to be our biggest one yet because it's 2022. We've given away like four hundred or $500,000 in this. Holy shit. Just to tweet them out. That's crazy. Just to tweet out three picks off of a graphic. That'd Very be, easy to do. I tweet. Jeez. I text Zito Sunday morning, about 8.30 a.m., 9 a.m. Oh, hey, yeah. Zito, these are the bets that I'm thinking putting in there. Let's do this. And I tell you how it's going in, and Zito sends something back. I'm like, oh, Zito, a little creative nice. on this one. Well, happy New Year one. Happy New Year. You like the, the photo thing? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I thought you did really well. That was a good graphic. Baby, Baby Z. Z. No big deal, guys. Thank you, Zito. Baby, Baby Z. Z. Stop. That's nice happening. little clock in there. Yeah, it was a little clock. Mm -hmm. And then I take that one, I go into the IG story, write the hashtag that I'm choosing on top of it, oh, yeah. screenshot that thing, and then send it on out and say, hey, do it. Good luck out there. Be a friend, tell a friend. And Twitter buries us. Yeah, bullshit. What do, you, what do you mean? Not the first time. 
Well, I think Twitter heard about the deal that was just signed between us and FanDuel, and they tried to bury us every fucking chance they get over there. Now, I have a lot of respect for Ask FFF at the... Bring back Jack. Well, I don't know if a lot of people are saying that either. No, no, no. no. And there's plenty of people being silenced on Twitter right now. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, what's your list? Yeah, I'm not even, I'm not even not getting, getting into in. it. Not it's very even. relevant to who we have on tomorrow and his one of right. his doctor friends and all kind of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening. I did see him promote something in his IG story, and then I heard immediately afterwards that that has been deplatformed. You cannot see that anymore. No, you can see it on Spotify still, absolutely. Yeah, Spotify said we don't care how many walkouts, dude. No, not at all. <laughs> Fucking run it. Mm -hmm. Dan Marino, you know, in that uh, commercial where... <laughs> Yeah. Hey, do you want to hear it back before he's out? Uh, fucking send it, Fuck. dude. Yeah. Fucking run it, dude. I don't need to hear shit. Fucking run it. That's what Spotify's doing. Yeah. A lot of people trying to watch it. That's off to What's me. his name? Malone? Mike Malone. Doc. Doc. Doc, Doc Mike Malone. On, not dude. to be confused with the Utah Jazz as head coach. Yes. yes. <laughs> or Carl. Well, different name. That's a mailman. Yeah. True. Stetson Bennett, by the way, another mailman. He didn't get any credit, huh? That nah, guy. he doesn't string bean. What's that all about? He's a good football player. Good football mm -hmm. player. Yeah. Not complaining the NFL, but he's a good college football Correct. player. Got sure. him winning out of here. Guy was yeah. Pumped. Hey, congrats to Georgia and Bama. Here we go. Yes. All roads. Yeah. All roads led to Georgia, Bama. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati put up a good fight. Hey, Cincy, you should be proud of your program. Great season, Cincy. What a season. program. It wasn't really until the fourth quarter that you guys kind of, you know, fully yeah. folded. You, yeah, you answered. You fought back. The offense wasn't able to do much, but not a lot of people were able to do much against that fucking program over there in Alabama. Defense kept getting answers, kept getting the ball back. Here we go. This is a good football game. This is a good program builder. This is it. Then inevitably the 60 to 75 NFL players that are on NFL uh, on Alabama ended up winning. But Cincinnati did not do anybody a disservice that it doesn't come from a Power 5 school. I think they did the complete opposite, especially when you watch Georgia-Michigan play immediately following. I'm very proud of Cincinnati. Very, very proud of that program. I believe the stat was 12 of the last 16 uh, semifinal games have been by 17 or more points. And this is what we talked about. And I fell for the trap again. And we have to remind ourselves to remind ourselves that we reminded us ourselves of this last year. Mm -hmm. Next year. Yeah. We can buy into the hype of the teams that are the underdogs in these playoffs. But every year, it ends up a boat race. They yeah. fucking get killed. Every single year it happens. We bought into Cincinnati because we love Cincinnati. We love Fickle. We love the story. We love the athletes. Inevitably, we should have also seen the athletes on the other side and the team on the other side and the factory of success that they have on the other side and been like, oh, Alabama's probably going to cover this. But instead, we bet me, bet with my heart, and I said, no, since he's going to fucking do it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then Alabama just slowly just turned that thing and yeah. said, hey, since he got one ace. <laughs> We got about 50 of them hanging mm -hmm. in the fucking rafters. And guess what? There's another one coming either this year or next year. Saban took a photo with the entire team. You saw that? And he's just like pissed off at the camera, basically, even though after the game he said, we got to enjoy this. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. And then in the photo he's pissed off just so that he sends a message to all of his players. Hey, this ain't fucking diddly shit, pal. That photo uh, was from the Derrick Henry Alabama team. Oh, no. Yeah, I got, oh, yeah, no. yeah, got, got McCockner. Because yeah. you could actually see Derrick Henry like right over his left shoulder from oh, like 2015. No, I got McCockner. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone was posting. Yeah, was... No, but Saban was actually, after the game, he said, we got to enjoy this, yeah. this moment here. I wonder how long he'll be enjoying it. I assume he was not. As soon as, as, soon as he walked off that field, he's probably like, all right, life's he's fucking miserable. Yeah, that's yeah, with that, yeah, over that great. But he, he, I'm sure he was calling recruits in the locker room already, man. There's no time to rest for these guys. You think Saban's still recruiting? I was thinking about this. Yeah. I he's to definitely people. the closer that comes in for the big time guys. Like, the, hey, we mm. really, this is a guy, coach, we're going to need a house visit from you for this dude. I was wondering that. Because, like, Deion Sanders, he's a great promoter. Uh, we've seen him on helicopters flying to games and stuff like that. But guys are going to want to play for Prime. If Prime gives them a call or somebody at Jackson State gives them a call, they're going to want to do that. Remember, Ike Taylor said, you think if Mike Tomlin, not that Mike Tomlin ever would, but it was a conversation at the time. You think Mike Tomlin goes down to college, he's going to have to be door-to-door -door recruiting like all these other coaches? I don't think so. I, th I think nowadays the recruiting at those high-end places is probably easier. I might be wrong. I might be completely ignorant to this entire thing. But I think there's some programs that probably have – quite an edge in the recruiting angle and I would assume Alabama's one of them like if it gets to Saban he's like you're already in the door probably right 
Yeah, I, I'm sure. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He's not out there like uh, some of the position coaches, but he definitely has to work his ass off still. I'm sure. And social media has changed it too for all of these coaches. Now, now, yes, he has people that help him with all of that, but it's still another thing he has to do. This is hysterical. Yeah. 15 years, nine championship game appearances, six national championships, eight SEC championships. 71 first-team All-Americans, 44 consensus All-Americans, 106 players drafted, 39 first-round draft picks, four Heisman winners, 183 and 24. Every recruiting class has won at least one national championship. That's fucking <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Like your recruits That's itself. Awesome. Hey, you want one of these? <laughs> hey, you want one of these? Come on in to Bama. Yeah. Congratulations. You got a national championship. We want to give you a scholarship. Because I was thinking about, you know, like 10 years from now, I'm going to be 44. What's something that could be cool? And I accidentally thought, like, you know, it would be cool maybe coaching a college program, you know, watching all, like, the amount of fun it would be, us getting to compete, us going in. You know, I would hire, I would delegate, obviously. Okay, we're going to have an offensive thing, defensive thing. I might dabble in the special teams, but day to day, I'm going to be very much a uh, overseer. Hey, how we doing? Let's have a good day. Schedule maker, you know, let's do that. I'm not going to be in the weeds. And then my wife goes, but you always talk about, like, the year-round recruiting, and you never do that. I'm like, well, hopefully at that point we'd just be able to just say, like, congrats, you get to play for our team. You know, like, yeah. that would be the dream and the goal, I guess. But I ended up opting out of that. <laughs> I ended up opting out of that idea shortly afterwards. But I didn't know if recruiting still sucked completely. Yes. Fun. I guarantee you Saban, all the Dabo, all the guys, like, running those programs, they don't think the school recruits itself. Like, they understand, yes, it gets us in. And people want to come here, but I'm sure they're like, hey, we're still fighting with these other two or three schools for all these same guys. More power to them for caring what a 17-year-old thinks. Yeah. You know? that seven, whatever that 17-year-old does has a big impact on that coach's life and their family and everybody else's. Probably well, family. Shane, B Shane Beamer told us his third-string quarterbacks are get, still getting yeah. NIL deals yeah. over there. He's just yeah. kind of got to adapt, I guess. I don't, I don't know if I have enough juice, energy, or care. To be a college coach. And I, but I want to let you know, I did dabble in the thought there for a second. I was like. Hey, James, Laronitis is joining Marcus Freeman's yeah. staff at Notre Dame. They're tight, those two, friends? Like They're like best friends, yeah. Or have you been asked? <laughs> no, I have not. I've not reached out. James Damn. has been trying to. James has been kicking that idea around for a couple uh, years now. What's that all about? For you or for Laurinaitis? For no, James, trying to get back into coaching or trying to get into coaching. So do you feel smack in the mouth whenever Aaron Rodgers says, Devontae Adams, best football player I've ever uh, yeah. suited up with, and uh, Marcus Freeman's like, hey, AJ, I'm going to remove you from the group text here. <laughs> hey, man, you want to come coach with me there? Is that is that something you think about or no? What, that Marcus didn't offer me a job at, at Notre Dame when I have never coached and don't want to coach? Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. do coach. You coach the Clemson Tigers, Tigers yeah. to a yeah. championship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and women's basketball. And you smack the ground whenever yeah. your team yeah. gets into a zone right. D. Yeah, I didn't take any offense to it, but you know what? Maybe I'll rethink that. Maybe Text I will. him, be like, hey, I want to coach the fucking defensive line. <laughs> I, I, <should. laughs> I thought I saw on the internet that Bobby Carpenter is pretty broken up about not getting the Is call. General Bob going up to Notre Dame? He's not. I don't think Bob wants to leave Columbus, so no. I don't think he's upset. No, he's Has Bob gotten into it with anybody lately? Have I missed anything? General Bob doesn't show up in my algorithm anymore. I don't know what the deal is. I don't see him on any platforms anymore. What's that all about? I don't know. You said, what, didn't you say Jack is messing with you? Well, he's burying our Barry. hashtags. Yeah, Jack's so. gone, by the way. Jack's taking pictures yeah. like Tom from MySpace, dude. Mm -hmm. They're out of here. <laughs> they collected their checks. They did their damage. They're off and running. They don't yeah. care. What is Jack doing? He's taking over the world, saving the world? He's probably doing something behind the scenes, mm. I assume. Shaking hands, kissing babies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is he riding on one of those power surfboards like Zuck? Yeah, Maybe. Awesome. With, the, with the sunblock all Mayonnaise over his face. all over his face. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's getting jacked like Bezos. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. Jack was already kind of jacked, though. Hey, by the way, 2022 is the year I'm getting fit. Same. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Whole office. Let's fit office. What are you saying, AJ? I've decided I want to live forever now. It's like yeah. New Year's resolutions. They're awesome. I love the excitement that people start. Oh, well, it's Monday, up. too, by the way, of yeah. the New Year. Perfect. So today yeah. is the day. Today is the day. Yeah. I've already started, man. You oh, should have yeah. seen me this morning doing wall sits. Congrats. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to, you know, I'm, you know, Pat McAfee show fit, maybe. That's right. That's okay. how I'll turn the Instagram into it. It'd be nice if we had a supportive partner. Yeah, it would yeah, be great maybe. if maybe our fitness yeah. guru I am very wouldn't be a no, you're not. fucking you asshole. No, you're not. If you, you want to work out, if you want to have this healthy lifestyle, please 
I I encourage that. Just You're shut the hell up now. about it. We you don't draw me up. Shut the hell up about it. I want to let people know that although you might struggle with commitment and discipline, and you love eating food, and this, last year wasn't your year, this year could be your year. I'm okay being a role model, AJ. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't need you being. No, you're, no, it's you staying on your high horse, trying to say, "Hey, I'm the best." You guys, I know you You're guys all struggle. Horse. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you. I'm going to yeah. give you my wisdom. This is you, AJ. Can you oh, go one legged on there? I'm sorry. Every, no, maybe no. later in the year, <laughs> depending upon how fit I am. But yeah, dude. I mean, I'm the. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, dude. What are you even talking about? I got good core, good abs. Can you moonwalk on there? Well, well, I could probably move the goddamn. There you go. I mean, this is dangerous. Yeah, yeah I can't can't see. You're, you're in control, man. You have great balance. I do believe I'm one of the greatest chairs with mm. wheel standers in the history. You see me at WWE, I'll jump yeah. up and down on those things in cowboy boots, you know? Oh, yeah. Never gets talked about. You just got to make sure you're, you know, know, know the center of the thing pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why hasn't AJ drawn us up a health program? Yeah, because he doesn't give a fuck about us. He thinks we're fat and wants us to remain that way. <laughs> He's an ass I don't problem. have any answers for you. Give I us your no workout program. You. Or are you just eating trembolone sandwiches? Oh, you're on the Roy. <laughs> Was that Gumpy that said that? It's all juiced up again. Congratulations, actually, AJ. On what? 19 years ago today. What happened? National champion. You got yourself go. one of these. Oh. Nice job, AJ. All right. Oh, that means next year, 20th anniversary. Oh, 20th at, at, oh. at Buckeye Stadium. So That's who's right. all there? You, General Bob? Slags. Slags. Urban. Legs wasn't on the team. Tony Craig Cransel. Yeah, Republican, right. right? Congressman, I mean. <laughs> Who? Gonzalez. That's how you like was he part of it. Gonzo wasn't there. Player. Player. I know. He's, he's part of the team. That's what I mean. Why do you keep saying? I said Tony Gonzalez. We need Gonzales. not remember you. Yes. <laughs> him as his politician <laughs> days. I, but I called him Tony Gonzalez, and there's another Tony Gonzalez. The bald congressman to, guy. Bald guy in crosshairs. I never called him bald. Call them Republican Congressman Tony. Hit it inside the park home run yeah. in the congressional yeah. baseball game. Mm-hmm. That is where I. He got cheered on by all parties. That was the first and last time that ever happened for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's oh. probably when they knew. <laughs> he became Craig public Kressel. enemy number one for did, all yeah. parties. That's probably why they started clapping for him. Hey, I'm Anthony Gonzalez. How you doing? I played football. I'm really smart. I want to come in and try to save the world here. Okay, Anthony. I got shake hands, shake hands, shake hands, shake hands. Oh, everybody hates me all of a sudden. Uh, yeah. Well. Hey. Decent. That's politics, Thank right? Yeah. Is Chris Thank Gamble going to be there? Thank you. Oh, Thank Chris you. Gamble. I hope so. He's a wide receiver? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Receiver Drew DB. Carter. He would play like 150 plays a game. What about Ted Ginn? How come Ooh, you wouldn't Bam do that? Bam Childress? Mm. Bam. Yeah, Bam's a stud. How come you wouldn't play 150 plays a game? I don't know. They never really offered to put me a wide out or tight end tailback. Yeah, you think? Back. Do you think you could have played tailback or fullback at a high level in college? Uh, No, probably not. You ran a 4-4, right? I love yeah, playing on the show, but it's, you know, it's a different honest. thing. It's a different thing up there. I watched Maurice Claret do it and see how good he was. He's really good, huh? Yeah. Yep. Very good. He, You and him ever? Huge, huge hard head, too. That's what I'm saying. Did you two? <clears throat> I don't remember many times in practice having to go up against him because that dude was so good. I, I, I've told you on here, like, he's hurting our own dudes running the ball. You don't want to tackle him. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, let's have uh, Maurice go against the four stringers. Mm. All right, we need new bodies up here to fucking die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Can't have him practicing against the ones. He was a freshman too then, right? True, yeah. We came in the same class. But he came in a little early for spring ball. Who's that 17-year-old freshman we saw from uh, Nebraska? Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Can't remember his name. Oh, the running back? Hey, he's, he's, he should be in a men's league. Yeah, yeah. small player. He's, boy. he's ready to go. He's... Yo. The kid doing the kid doing the splits that committed to Nebraska? No. No. No, no, no. He's he he was <laughs> the running back for this year. Who is that? That was I you. Don't know. Oh, line? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like you really caught your attention there. That sounds like no, I'm you... impressed at how flexible this big O lineman is. Will Compton put it out. How about Bradbury, that uh oh. center for the Vikings? Mm-hmm. Oh. That was awesome. Catching a ball down by – does anybody know how hard that – that is so hard. To it's get, freezing cold, too. With He's a big guy. Just getting down there in general, hilarious. Freezing cold, out of nowhere, split decision. 
Give me that. And his immediate thought is, I'm fucking getting a first down. It's the first one of the of the half. Yeah. yeah. Who's the first one of the half? I like that guy. That's one of my new favorite players. Bradbury. I'll never forget him. All right, we're out of here. See you all tomorrow. Can't wait to talk to Aaron about him being an MVP again and having home field advantage through the playoffs. That's huge. Yeah. Nice. What do you think he's going to want to talk about? He played really good football, didn't he? Yes, Ball. he did. Yeah. All right, so I got the Steelers. You got the bronze? Yeah, what is uh, Steelers minus two and a half, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. I'm a little surprised they're favorites. They weren't. For... They, yeah, they were getting points. And then we heard Brett Michaels is going. What? And, what? and then former teammates. And then Kiesel said, I'll be there. And then mm-hmm. Billy Gardell's filming a commercial Gardell. there probably. Bingo. Yep. All Brett. these things started happening. Tony Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Brown caught a cameo. That mm-hmm. might have been, I mean, that has to three? make Ben feel good if he sees the cameo. Right. Absolutely. A lot of reminiscing videos about how great Ben once was and Ben seeing videos of what he used to do, and he's going to give it a go tonight. I mean, look for the show tonight. I love you. Go on, Tom. I'm nervous. Why? I'm nervous. I mean, not on the line. What do you mean, nothing on the line? <laughs> Still has another game after this, too. Yeah. Playoff hopes yeah, are still this alive. Is home at Hines. This is at Hines. Seven's man. last game at Hines. Kick the shit. You would never understand, <laughs> AJ, because whenever you think about that, you know, it's not supposed to hit as hard as it does. And then you start thinking to yourself, man, I remember, I remember watching the Super Bowl in the hockey house down there at the University of Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. middle of Oakland. And then Steelers win that Super Bowl because of Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. And then all of Oakland ends up on fire. People climbing, telephone poles and lights and everything like that. Yeah. That memory that was hilarious and etched in my brain forever is all because of Ben. And those are the things I think a lot of Yinzers have been doing is the celebrations and the, the gabagool that has happened because of Ben Roethlisberger. And tonight, you just have to remember all of those things. It's going to be a big time. We thank you, Ben Knight, I think. Yeah, yeah. not everyone just plays the game for a paycheck. Okay, AJ? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, if Ben doesn't play well tonight, are you still going to have the same enthusiasm? Like, towards what? Towards Ben and his whole career. Yeah, yeah, I will. But it would be nice if he he got his flowers tonight. Well, speaking of flowers, uh, a bomber just flew over. Yeah, a self-bomber. Thought we were going to potentially become a gravel pit there. (laughs) Might be preparing for... Why are they flying over? What was that? That was very... Came from the Rose Bowl, probably. Well, preparing for the National Championship. Maybe doing a test flight. Oh, because... Probably do one on Monday. The Natty, one week from today. That's right. Everybody's coming to Indy. Come on in. Yeah. Sweet. The water is fine. Mm -hmm. Expensive Indy, as they say. What? what? Someone, yeah. Nick sent a tweet to the group today, and that was oh, yeah. the way they described it. it was, Some guy it was wrote an article, and it was the headline was "Get ready for something." Zeke's pulling it up here. The headline is completely misleading for yeah. what the article actually said. No, no he, he did say people were staying in Louisville instead of Indianapolis. Who so, said that? He talks, dude. He talks about how expensive tickets to the game are, and how cold it's going to be. But in the article, it mentions like, "Hey, it's inside." The whole city is connected via walking and yeah. bridges. Uh-huh. The headline says like something like "Get Who's ready, the- get ready, Bama fans, for a, a cold, expensive Indianapolis." Who the fu- Indianapolis? If we were to put our office in any other city, AJC Sports. This is AJ Hall. The Atlanta Journal Constitution, I believe, is that what that is. <laughs> so this guy. I only go by one Constitution. Thanks. Clown. Yeah. yeah. What's that? This person's a fucking clown. Yeah. Sounds like he is. shit. It is going to be chilly, though. This guy said he was going to stay in Louisville and drive all the way up here just because there's more to do there. Oh, God. Jesus, pal. I mean, maybe. What? what are you going to do? Go walk the again, empty horse? I, tra- again, gonna- I don't think he said that. I think that was a quote from someone in the article. But everyone in Indy is very offended by it. Yeah, well, fuck <laughs> this guy. This I mean, about? fuck this guy. Indy's great. Hey, this city is literally built for this type of scene. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Again. This guy didn't write this. You know? If I see this guy, I'm smacking him right in the mouth. Thank you. That guy's from Chicago. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh, too. This city, to call it expensive, is. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting out the most yeah. part of hilarious. The- he's talking about the tickets of the game, guys. No, he's not. Yes, Look, that, put they, that back up. The editors write the headlines. The authors don't write them. Well, I ain't on us. They're well, going to smack him out, too. too. Yeah, we yeah. hate the fucking AJC Sports out there talking shit. This is a great city. Yeah. Very cheap. What's he? They, 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 does he know? <laughs> yeah. U.S. Yeah. I mean, Connor's about to build himself a fucking mega mansion. Yeah. Now. What are we even? What are we even thinking about? Jesus. Well, congrats to whoever wins the super expensive indie bowl. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Joe Pompliano said that Danny Boy hustle hard should, should race in the Indy 500. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. of how That'd good he sweet. drives. Made me think, like, you have no idea about what these rocket ships do out here. But if Danny Boy was to be in the Indy 500, I'd pay attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I would right. pay attention. You have to. Be the head of a garage, maybe. A crew team or something. No. 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 AB Danny's would be driving. crew chief. Well. He's behind the wheel, baby. Cameos are being cut. Races are being won. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Danny Boy hustle hard behind the wheel. <laughs> All right. We're back tomorrow. 15 minutes. Hammer Down will be on. Uh, we'll do a giveaway manana. Oh, yeah. For this being the last week. Yeah, it's messed up. Of the NFL regular season. I'm not happy about it. Yeah, no, it stinks. It sucks. Have you guys in it's flu? We try to live in the moment, very much checkers players, me at least. I haven't even thought. I'm not going to say it. Nope. The Don't off season's it. coming up. Don't it say is. It. We got we got a month and a half. Still. All right. We got draft. We got free agency. We'll be fine. That yeah. fucking stinks. I mean, yeah. we always. That sucks. No. We make the most out of it because we have to because it's the we only. We got spring training coming up. We got all kind of good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you're right. Well, jet passing, hopefully he'll be. No, they don't. They might not have baseball. Oh, yeah, you're right. They might, might not, not have even. Yeah. Jet passing might not even have a job. and might be an insider for anything. Uh -huh. Well, we got, you know, March Madness coming up. And, oh, uh, yeah, college basketball. It matters. Yeah, you know. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> that, I love college basketball. That weekend will be awesome. You know, and then okay, so we got two days. Let's not think about yeah. it. Let's enjoy the moment. Let's enjoy hey, the yeah, yeah, sure, Tuesday yeah. tomorrow. Everybody yeah. Tuesday yeah. tomorrow. We made it to week 18 of the NFL season. Let's celebrate. Woo. Tonight, Big Ben's last ride. We'll talk about that and more. Mignana, we can't thank you enough. Cheers. Hammer. Don. Don is in 15 minutes at youtube.com forward slash hammer. Don. Don. Cheers. Bye.